In Wano country, Zoro's group has assimilated in with the populace. Frankie is working as a carpenter named Franosuke, Usopp is selling toad oil as Usohachi, and Robin is training as a geisha named Orobi to perform before the shogun. As night falls, Zoro, acting as a ronin named Zoro Juru, walks out onto the street. Some distance away, a masked man strikes down another man with his blade. Zoro then comes onto the scene and smells blood on the man, causing him to realize the situation and confront him. He then sees police racing onto the scene to apprehend the slasher who runs away. Zoro tries to point them to him, but to his shock, he is identified as the slasher and arrested. Zoro initially moves to fight back, but then recalls Kinemon's orders to stay to his role. When they had reached Wano, Kinemon warned them that the shogun, Kurozumi Orochi, has the backing of Kaido, so attacking him or his subordinates would draw the emperor's wrath. Thus, they were tasked with laying low among the populace. Later, a magistrate is seen cutting down a straw dummy, but says that a sword needs to draw human blood to become stronger. A tied-up Zoro is then brought before him to face judgment for the crimes he was framed for. The next morning, a messenger proclaims that the street murderer has been caught and sentenced to seppuku, and Usopp is appalled, though ultimately not surprised, to find out it is Zoro. In the magistrate's plaza, Zoro is given the seppuku blade to use on himself. In the meantime, the magistrate examines Shusui, heavily admiring the blade once wielded by the legendary Wano Samurai Ryuma and wondering how Zoro acquired it after it was stolen 23 years ago. The magistrate looks forward to possessing Shusui, but as Zoro picks up the seppuku blade, he smells blood on the magistrate, causing him to identify him as the slasher. Zoro then imbues his blade with Busashaku Haki and unleashes a flying slash that cuts down the magistrate. Apologizing to Kinemon, Zoro proceeds to cut down the magistrate's subordinates as he works to get his swords back. Meanwhile, Luffy is woken up after a crab pinches his nose, and he finds himself washed up on a beach with the Thousand Sunny. Luffy stands in front of the Sunny, trying to figure out what had happened, when he suddenly hears a commotion in the forest caused by two animals fighting, and he shouts as a Komainu is sent tumbling towards him. Right after Zoro's attack on the magistrate, the magistrate's remaining subordinates race to cut him down. Zoro holds them off with the seppuku blade and a stolen sword, and after the ladder gets broken, he makes his way to the magistrate's platform where he reacquires his three swords. With all of them equipped, Zoro unleashes a massive whirlwind attack that overpowers all his enemies and destroys the magistrate's home. In the aftermath, Zoro's wanted poster is put up across the city. Frankie is surprised when he hears the news, and Robin is covertly shocked to see Zoro's poster. Usopp is left aghast seeing it as well which causes a police officer to suspect he knows Zoro. Usopp denies this, and lies that Zoro's actions made him fear for his family's safety, and the policeman assures him that Zoro will be captured. Meanwhile, Zoro drinks sake under a bridge before seeing his wanted poster. On a beach, Luffy tries figuring out how he got here when he hears a commotion in the forest nearby, and a Komainu named Komachio then comes tumbling toward him. Komachio crashes into the Thousand Sunny, which annoys Luffy. A giant baboon then emerges from the forest and unsheathes a sword before charging at Komachio, resulting in a brawl between the two of them. Luffy leaves them be and gazes out at the ocean, recalling what had happened when he and his crew were being pulled into the whirlpool. Sanji had decided to take Nami, Carrot, Chopper, and Brook to land, and Luffy ballooned himself to give Sanji a trampoline. After Sanji took everyone else to the air, Luffy prepared to jump to land as well, only for the octopus that had stowed away to hold him back which caused Luffy to go into the water and wash up here with the Sunny. Luffy does not know whether or not he made it to Wano. Meanwhile, two waiters ride a Madsaurus through the forest near the beach, with one of them carrying a bag containing Otama, a girl whom they kidnapped. Tama tries to claim innocence, but the scout clearly recalls her threatening for the Kozuki family to take revenge on them, which was insolent and illegal speech. They consider selling her to a brothel after they apprehend the intruder spotted on the nearby beach, and they plan with their superior to knock him out and enslave him. As they reach the beach, the first waiter takes aim at Luffy, but the pirate captain notices his presence and dodges the waiter's first shot. As the waiter lines up to fire again, Luffy punches him from afar, knocking him out. The second waiter remains conscious despite being heavily injured and orders the baboon to stop fighting Komachio and attack Luffy. The baboon obliges, but Luffy uses Haoshoku Haki to make it submit. As the dumbfounded waiter tries to attack Luffy himself, Tama escapes and hits him over the head with a staff. The attack only makes him angry and he chases her, but Luffy then punches him into the distance.
Saitama immediately surrenders to Luffy, and when he assures her he will not do anything to her, she uses this moment as a distraction. She then pulls a piece of kibidango off her cheek and offers it to the baboon, but it aggressively scares her away. She runs behind Luffy and throws the kibidango at the baboon, where it lands in its mouth and tames it. Tama introduces herself and Komachio to Luffy, and reveals to him that he is indeed in Wano, in the region of Kuri. Tama explains to Luffy how she was hunted down by the evil men after shopping in town, prompting Komachio to protect her from Hihimaru, into the dense bamboo forest, so the young girl can return home. On the way, Tama tells Luffy that he is strong and kind, and while she detests most pirates, Luffy is the kind of pirate she likes. Luffy asks if she lives in a village, but Tama states that she lives alone with her master and declares her dream of becoming a bewitching ninja. Inside her house, Tama carefully prepares a tall bowl of rice as Luffy admires the modest household. She serves the rice to Luffy, who befittingly scarfs it down. He wastes no time asking for seconds. However, Tama tells Luffy that what he just ate was all she made, as Luffy respectfully buries his disappointment. Suddenly, Tama's own stomach growls violently and she quickly excuses herself. The birds outside scatter as an imposing figure soon. Luffy notices the ruined remains of houses around him. Tama runs up and confronts the man, calling him her master and asking for forgiveness, only to collapse from some sort of ailment. As the two rush to her care, the master explains that she must have drank poisonous river water, polluted by Kaido's factories to curb her hunger. He says Tama remains in this forest because she is waiting for none other than Luffy's brother Ace to return. However, Luffy unceremoniously informs Tama that Ace is dead, causing her to erupt in a tantrum of disbelief before passing out altogether. As Tama rests inside, the man, named Hitetsu, criticizes Luffy's lack of sensitivity. But Luffy insists that it doesn't change the fact that Ace won't come back, and that Tama waits in vain. Hitetsu elaborates on the history of their village, and how it was annihilated roughly a year ago by X Drake and his soldiers. While the flower capital of Wano country prospers, the smaller villages have become wastelands of poverty and starvation, courtesy of Kaido's to find more food for them. With Tama taking an especial shine to him, Ace remained for a number of weeks to aid the village, before finally disembarking. Luffy contemplates his brother having stood on the same land he finds himself in, along with the impact he left on it. The episode concludes with a band of swordsmen led by Basil Hawkins on their way to investigate the incident involving their two watchmen. Hawkins instructs his men not to report it to Kaido. As he stands atop the tree over Hitetsu's house, Luffy remembers Ace dying in his arms on Marineford two years ago. As Hitetsu comes out, Luffy asks him where he can find food, water, and a doctor, saying he wants to take Tama there. Hitetsu says that one could find those things in the nearby town across the wasteland, but warns Luffy that it would be a dangerous journey with the beast pirates roaming around. However, Luffy is undeterred, telling Hitetsu that he is strong. Hitetsu says his foreign clothes are too conspicuous and puts a kimono, obi, and topknot on him. The swordsmith says he cannot leave the town due to undisclosed reasons, but he promises to compensate the cost of the doctor visit later. Luffy then sees a sword with a purple aura sitting on the wall and decides to take it for his journey. As he picks up Tama and prepares to head out, Hitetsu says he cannot just take the sword, revealing that it is Nidai Kitetsu, which was forged by his ancestor Kotetsu, and is one of the great grade Meito. Hitetsu starts explaining the Meito grades, only to see Luffy running off toward the town. He chases after Luffy to continue trying to get Nidai Kitetsu back, revealing that it is cursed. Luffy offers to take the sword on Hitetsu's hip instead, but Hitetsu says that that is also a Meito. Luffy then grabs Hitetsu by the nose and tosses him back. Hitetsu tries shouting at him to come back, but to no avail. Komachio then comes running after Luffy, allowing him and Tama to ride on his back toward the town. Tama then wakes up, but as she looks at Luffy, she immediately remembers him telling her about Ace's death. She cries out and starts hitting Luffy, calling him a liar and saying that there is no way Ace is dead since he made a promise with her to return. When he came to Wano three years ago, she had asked to join his crew and he told her he would come back in the future when she had grown up become an enchanting kunoichi. Tama simply cannot accept that this promise would not come to pass, and Luffy is simply resigned to repeating the truth. They then reach the edge of the bamboo forest, and Luffy is shocked as he sees a massive wasteland dotted with factories and wild animals in front of him. In the flower capital, Zoro remains at large and the public is still left worried, wondering why the police have not been able to capture him yet. Zoro is currently camping out in the wasteland, 
cooking and eating large quantities of meat from several animals that he hunted. Elsewhere in the wasteland, Luffy wants to catch and eat one of the animals, but Tama tells him that their meat is poisoned due to drinking the polluted river water. She reveals that the Shogun and Kaido have a private, unpolluted farm that gives them a wealth of food, and she becomes overwhelmed by hunger as her fever increases. Luffy then sees a woman being chased by two beast pirates in the distance, but Zoro then comes in and quickly takes out the attackers. The woman wishes to repay Zoro, but does not have any sake as he requests. Luffy eventually recognizes Zoro and rushes to embrace him as the two happily reunite. Smelling meat in Zoro's possession, Luffy takes it from him and starts eating it. He reveals the meat is poisoned, and Zoro realizes that that is why he has a stomachache. Zoro then sees Tama laying on Komachio's back and tells Luffy that they need to get going quickly. Suddenly, however, Hawkins and his crew arrive on the scene and confront them. Hawkins recognizes that Luffy has a high chance of being the intruder on Kuri Beach and draws out his sword, saying the only way to survive here is to submit to the strong. Luffy and Zoro pull out their swords, and Zoro says that Kinemon ordered them to lay low, but Luffy says that they will have to apologize to him later. Luffy and Zoro encounters Basil Hawkins, who had become one of Kaido's officers. They begin fighting, with Luffy now armed with a katana. Luffy and Zoro decimate Hawkins' troops. A giant lizard attacks Luffy. Luffy takes the animal lizard and throws it at Hawkins, who impales the animal with a straw sword. Zoro attacks Hawkins with a flying slash, but one of Hawkins' subordinates mysteriously ends up getting slashed instead of him. Hawkins explains his devil fruit power. He has straw dolls hidden inside his body which each represent one of his soldiers. Whenever he is attacked, he simply transfers the damage to one of his dolls, and in turn damaging the person the doll represents while leaving Hawkins unharmed. Hawkins suggests playing a game, summoning a giant straw monster floating above him. Hawkins draws a tarot card from his deck. He ends up drawing the reverse fool card, making his own subordinates fight each other. Kamachio suddenly enters into the battlefield and takes away Zoro and Luffy, running away from the battle, while Luffy fights off the chasing soldiers. However, Hawkins draws his second card, the reverse Hierophant card. This makes Hawkins' straw monster chase after Kamachio, Zoro, and Luffy. Zoro fights off the monster's attacks. He deals hits to the monster, but Hawkins redirects the damage to his subordinates. The monster then starts shooting nails at Zoro, causing minor wounds, then strikes down on Komachio. However, Zoro ends up cutting off the monster's hand. He finishes off the monster with the Nijiri Toro Samoan move, cutting the monster into two before it disintegrates. Although the monster was destroyed, Hawkins is unharmed, redirecting the damage to a subordinate. He draws a third tarot card, choosing the Hierophant card. He predicts that someone will help guide Luffy and Zoro to safety. Luffy and Zoro successfully escape Hawkins, but Tama's fever worsens, and Kamachio approaches a fork in the road. A woman appears, having been hiding in Kamachio's tail the whole time. She explains that she is the one that Zoro previously saved from pirate assailants. She guides Kamachio to Okobori Town, where they could go to her tea house and brew a cure for Tama's condition. At the tea house, one of the waitresses is harassed by Urashima, a professional sumo wrestler. Kamachio arrives, they enter the tea house, and Zoro scares off Urashima. Inside the tea house, Luffy grinds the herbs and Tsuru brews the tea. Unbeknownst to them, Luffy is secretly watched from afar by Beppo and other heart pirates. They go to Law, who is resting in a tent. Meanwhile, in Onigashima, Kaido rests with rage in his eyes. Luffy, Zoro, Tsuru, Kamachio, and Kiku settle into the tea house in the destitute Okobore town to treat Tama's illness. As the child lies in bed, Kiku hands Luffy a crucible of strong medicine. The medicine is very bitter, and Tama puts up some resistance in taking it, but Luffy forces it upon her. Sometime later, Kiku approaches Zoro, who now waits just outside. She offers to nurse Zoro's injuries from his earlier battle. He asserts to the woman that his wounds will heal on their own, but Kiku does not back down, and so Zoro silently complies. Meanwhile, inside the house, Tama wakes from her unconsciousness. Tama evaluates how she is feeling, and affirms everyone that her good health has returned at last. Luffy and the others rejoice, surprised at how quickly the medicine took effect. Despite Suru's warning to never again drink from the polluted river, Tama's unbearable hunger seizes her once more, and she begins dashing off to get a drink. Suru stops Tama in her tracks, scolding her a second time. Zoro thanks Kiku as she finishes bandaging him up, and she reflects her gratitude to Zoro for driving off Urashima. Back inside the tea house, Tsuru serves Tama a bowl of sweet red bean soup, 
but Tama refuses to accept it, for she is unable to pay for the food, let alone the medical treatment. Tsuru claims that payment is out of the question, but Tama still protests out consideration for Tsuru and Kiku's well-being, as food is scarce in Okobore. After politely and repeatedly urging Tama to eat, Tsuru loses her temper and frightens Tama into accepting the meal, threatening to toss the soup into the dusty street otherwise. Outside, Luffy and Zoro sit beside Tama as the girl reluctantly gazes into the bowl of soup. Luffy reminds Tama that it is, after all, her birthday, and encourages her to dig in. The two pirates, along with Suru, watch Tama take her first sip. As tears drip into the bowl and a giddy smile spreads across her face, Tama is elated, pronouncing how delicious the food is, and that this day has been the greatest of her life. Suru is driven to tears herself, but Luffy mulls over Hitetsu's words about how impoverished Tama has been all this time. Luffy remarks how similar the dango in Tama's soup is to her devil fruit ability, but Tama responds that the dango made from her power cannot actually fill a person's stomach. Tama then falls asleep while Luffy, however, they are once again assaulted by Batman's arrows. Luffy strikes back by jumping high and throwing an intensely strong punch, yet Batman withstands the blow and retreats with his mission fulfilled. Kiku suggests that the kidnappers are headed to Bakura Town, which is close by. On account of her katana, Zoro voices his suspicions regarding Kiku's actual identity. Kiku ties up her hair and announces that she is a samurai. Meanwhile, Gazelman contacts his boss, Holetum. He confirms that he's captured the kid that tamed their baboon guard, and Holetum gives the order to deliver Tama to him, claiming that she ought to be of use. In Bakura, a sumo match is commencing in the town square, exciting a large crowd. Urashima, in a nearby bar, is steaming over Zoro, putting a stop to his advances on Kiku earlier. His troubles are overheard by Mouseman, who tells the wrestler that he's got the wrong idea about wooing Kiku. He poses that if Urashima were to use his social influence against the poverty striking woman, destroying all she cares for so that only he remains, leaving her with nowhere else to turn would be much easier than winning her love. They both laugh mischievously over the thought, and Urashima exercises his newfound sense of supremacy by commanding the elderly bar owners to cook their pet raccoon dog for him to eat. Tama is brought to Holetum's dwelling and is pushed before him. Holetum's ferocious lion's head has Tama reeling in fear as Luffy's group closes in on the town's archway. Tama tries to act strong as Holetum's true appearance comes to light. The lion's face is only attached to the real Holetum's waist and has a mind of its own. Holetum starts to pick a fight with the lion who retaliates by striking him in the crotch with great force. Holdem howls in pain, as well as the lion, due to both of them sharing the same body. His subordinates question why they never seem to remember such a weakness. After regaining his senses, Holdem interrogates Tama about how she tamed Hihimaru. Refusing to disclose her ability to the enemy, Tama claims that animals are simply fond of her. Holdem, however, is not fooled, and already knows from his men that her power has something to do with pulling on her cheek. He orders his men to fetch a pair of pinchers and seizes Tama while she shouts out for Luffy once more. As the town guards brace for Luffy's intrusion, Beepo is seen overlooking the valley and is appalled when he identifies Luffy. Resting in a tent, Luffy's presence is reported to law. He is enraged to find out that Luffy is jeopardizing their plan by invading Bakura Town and rallies his crew to intercept them as Tama's cries for help further ignite Luffy's anger. Luffy and Zoro enter Bakura Town, unintentionally making a scene and drawing attention of the townspeople. Luffy knocks out the citizens with his Haoshoku Haki. Kiku explains that the town was once a vibrant castle town, but when Orochi took over, he seized the town for his own subordinates. A sumo wrestler is suddenly thrown into the air and onto Komachio. A sumo match is going on and Urashima was decimating his opponents. Urashima sees Kiku and is happy to see her there, assuming that she wants to marry him. He orders the other sumo wrestlers to take Kiku to him. Luffy and Zoro fight off some of the sumo wrestlers, but the wrestlers get the upper hand, pick up Kiku and take her to Urashima. Luffy and Zoro consider intervening, but remember that she is a samurai and can defend herself. The crowd jeers Kiku for being a low-class teahouse waitress, but Urashima insults the audience, calling them lowly bastards. He leans in to kiss Kiku, but she jumps out of the way, takes out her sword, and cuts off Urashima's topknot. Enraged, Urashima attacks Kiku, but Luffy defends her. They fight fiercely, pushing against each other. Luffy continues his pushing battle with Urashima. Though originally at a standstill, they eventually push each other back and struggle to stay in the arena. They push themselves back up, and Luffy declares an official sumo match. Luffy dodges Urashima's hand slaps, 
then attempts to lift Urashima up and throw him out of the ring. At one point, Urashima throws him out of the ring, but he manages to launch himself back in. Eventually, Urashima resorts to using illegal moves in attempt to defeat him. Hold'em hears about the sumo match. He does not intervene, as he is focusing on torturing Tama. Back at the match, Luffy exclaims that Urashima cannot beat him. Enraged, Urashima uses a slap move, but Luffy knocks him back using a hockey-imbued punch. He then finishes Urashima off using the Gomu Gomu no Gigant Supari move, striking him with an inflated hand and sending him flying out of the ring. Urashima crashes through several buildings before crashing into the house of Holodom, who is attempting to tear off Tama's cheek. Holdem is crushed by the sumo wrestler while Tama is sent flying out of the house. Meanwhile, Law prepares to go out from their hideout and meet with Luffy. However, Law finds that Bipo was suffering from food poisoning from eating the fish from the polluted river. Back at the sumo ring, after defeating the Yokozuna Urashima, Luffy demands to see the boss of Bakura Town to rescue Tama. The crowd sees them as rebels and begin attacking them. Luffy and Zoro fight off the crowd and Kiku also joins in armed with a katana. Luffy learns that the boss of the town was Holetum, but mishears his name as Baldabu. Meanwhile, the children of the poverty-stricken Okabor town continue to face hunger. Tsuru needs to treat another child who drank the polluted river water out of hunger. Some laborers from this town work at Bakura town, where food and clean water are plentiful. One laborer complains about his meager wage but is beaten. Back at Holetum's house, Holetum is crushed by Urashima. Tama attempts to escape, but Holetum's lion grabs her leg. Holetum lifts Urashima's unconscious body and gets up, but fire breaks out in his house. Luffy calls out for Holetum, mistaking his name to be Baldabu. At the town gate, Speed, another beast pirate's officer, appears. Speed, who has eaten a horse smile fruit, is shocked to see the town destroyed and Holdem's house on fire. Holdem finally shows himself to Luffy standing on a pagoda rooftop, with Tama being held in his lion's mouth. Strangely, he accuses Luffy with affiliating himself with a certain Shuten Maru. Luffy is shocked to see a lion embedded in Holetum's stomach. Hawkins approaches Bakura Town to help fight against Luffy. Law and the Heart Pirates spot him. Meanwhile, Luffy prepares to fight Holdem. Conflict continues to unfold in Bakura Town. Holdem bellows away on the rooftops as Kamajiro clutches Tama inside its mouth, while her friends in the street can do nothing but watch. He orders Luffy, Zoro, and Kiku to do stand down, threatening to crush Tama under the lion's jaws. Holdem taunts Luffy and accuses him of coveting Tama's ability for his own purposes. He is certain that the three of them are thieves working under a man called Shuten Maru. But despite Luffy's obliviousness, Holetum is convinced that his theory is correct. Kiku advises Luffy not to antagonize the Shinuchi, as the beast pirates practically hold the entire town hostage. If a revolution were to break out, Jack, who has likely survived the attack from Zunesha in the past, would come to claim his revenge. This knowledge only irritates Luffy more so. With Tama's life at his mercy, Holetum carries on provoking Luffy, while a treasure ship full of food enters the block. Overseen by Speed and her guards, it is the harvest from Paradise Farm. The mountainous stock of food charms Luffy's appetite, but he is soon reminded the young Tama's struggles with starvation, and his rage continues to swell. Luffy appoints Zoro to handle the massive cargo ship, to Kiku's startled confusion, as the two begin loosening the shoulders. Hawkins and his men ride into town, but are halted by a lone sword-wielding man hiding his face behind a basket. The man is secretly Law. Back at the center of town, Holidom authorizes his men to attack Luffy and his allies, once again reminding them that Tama's life is at stake. Regardless, Zoro effortlessly sends a number of his samurai flying. Holdem berates him, intending to follow through on his word, as he gives Kamajiro permission to chew the girl up. Suddenly, Luffy bounces up to reach them, strikes Kamajiro's nose, and grabs hold of Tama, all before the lion is even able to bite down. Holdem is astonished by Luffy's quickness, while Tama delights in her rescue. At the same time, Zoro is plowing through Speed's forces, protecting the golden ship. Preparing to counterattack, Holodom lights up his sword with Kamajiro's fire breath and unfastens the blade into many links, bearing a longer-ranged weapon, similar to a whip. He boasts about his powerful trick mechanism sword and swings it in Luffy's direction. Meanwhile, Kiku is taken hostage by a large pirate. Zoro, caught up in fighting, invites Kiku to drop her delicate facade and put her swordplay to work. Kiku finally concedes, frees herself, and joins Zoro's battle to hijack Speed's treasure ship. On the rooftops, Luffy is weaving around Holdem's giant flaming sword. Upon noticing Tama's wounded cheek from Holodom's persecution, Luffy becomes determined to land the finishing blow. 
He then reels his fist back an excessive distance and lands a smoldering Red Hawk attack on Holodom's gut, knocking him out and off the roof. Tama is dazzled, recognizing the parallels between Luffy and his renowned brother. Luffy defeats Holodom, sending him crashing to the ground, then takes Tama and flees. Zoro, Kiku, and Komachio also flee on Speed's food cart. Speed sends soldiers to chase after them. Luffy gets cornered by angry citizens but easily defeats them. He hops onto Speed's back, mistaking her for a real horse. Although Speed is hostile to Luffy, Tama uses her Devil Fruit ability, creates a mochi, and feeds it to Speed, taming her. Speed immediately begins following Tama's commands, running away and helping them escape. Luffy finds Zoro's cart and hops on, but leaves to deal with the most important thing. Meanwhile, Law confronts Hawkins in the street, disguised with a gladiator helmet. Law declares a battle, and Hawkins immediately recognizes Law based on his room move and hand tattoos. Law attacks Hawkins, but Hawkins redirects the damage to other subordinates. Law fiercely fights against Hawkins. However, Hawkins receives a call saying that Luffy had defeated Holetum and Jack has been notified. Then Zoro's food cart arrives and Law hops on. Law berates Zoro for viciously provoking a fight with Kaido's men. Zoro largely ignores Law berating him for Luffy's actions. Komachio continues carrying the ship of food with Zoro and Law on it. Beast's pirates chase after them. Luffy also steals a giant tub of water meant as a tribute to Orochi, then runs away. Komachio rides the ship of food back to Okobor Town, feeding its starving citizens. However, they are confronted by Rabbit Man, Batman, and Snake Man, who are angry that they are eating their stolen food. However, Luffy arrives and crushes them with the giant tub of water. The citizens cheer, happy to be saved from their starvation. However, Law warns that Luffy's actions are an act of rebellion against Wano Country. Luffy ignores this warning, giving Tama an apple as a thanks for feeding him earlier. Back at Bakura Town, the fire in Holetum's house continues to spread while Holetum remains unconscious. However, the lion wakes up. Also, Hawkins informs his higher-ups about Luffy, Zoro, and Law. The citizens of Okabor Town take the food in the treasure ship, then take the ship apart for building material. Luffy's actions remind Tama of Ace. Ace promised Tama to help ease the country's hunger. Tama says her final goodbyes to Luffy before riding back home on speed. Luffy's group also leaves to climb a mountain and find the ruins of Odin's castle. Kiku gets suspicious of them because they plan to visit Odin's castle. Law explains that at the mountain there is an unbelievable truth. At the top of the mountain there are graves marked for Kanjuro, Raizo, Momonosuke, Kinemon, and Odin. Heading to the ruins of Odin castle atop Komachio, Luffy grows restless and inquisitive after hearing Law, Kiku, and Zoro mention the existence of ghosts residing at the castle. The group notices that they are being chased by a shadowy beast, and Zoro volunteers to fend it off while the rest continue on. Zoro engages the creature, a giant white tiger wielding a sword in its mouth. In the flower capital, the scene shifts to a school classroom in the middle of a lesson. The young students are learning about the strict isolationism of Wano country, as well as the downfall of the Kazuki family. The teacher paints Odin and his samurai as foolish, treacherous men, while showcasing her strange ability to elongate her neck to her students. The children regard Shogun Orochi as a hero who brought peace to Wano. An eavesdropping old man is highly disturbed by the classroom's teachings. In a different location, the city's money manager Kyoshiro is drinking with a friend as he shamelessly belittles Orochi for being a coward. Robin, who happens to be present pre-forming for the two, listens in. Kyoshiro muses about the supposed final words of Odin's wife uttered 20 years ago before snoozing off mid-story. He then resumes, claiming that Odin's wife placed a curse on Orochi, that the nine samurai of the family will return in 20 years' time to kill Orochi and restore the throne. Kyoshiro is driven to laughter, amused that Orochi seems to be frightened by the empty threats of dead men. Luffy and the others arrive at the castle ruins as Zoro's battle in the woods rages on. Kiku isn't able to bear the sight of the destruction and stays idly behind. As Law leads the way, he directs Luffy towards a cluster of nine distinct grave posts. As he inspects them closer, Luffy is taken back to see graves marked for Kinemon and Momonosuke. He remembers how he wasn't able to contact the samurai while nearing the island, and Law confesses that he too hasn't heard from them in some time, but Luffy refuses to assume the worst has happened. Just then, a chilling presence begins lurking towards them. Luffy and Law steal themselves before realizing who it is. It's Kinemon, alive after all, who verifies that he's been having indigestion for days and has been confined to the bathroom all the while. Relieved that Law was only miscommunicating, 
Luffy is glad to see Kinemon again, who is then suddenly embraced by Kiku, indicating that she and Kinemon know each other well. Soon after, Momonosuke enters the scene. He excitedly reunites with Luffy, and informs him that Inuarashi has likewise made it to Wano. The whereabouts of Nami, Chopper, Sanji, Brook, and Carrot are finally shown. After attempting to search for their captain, the group decided to make their way to the castle as per instruction. They've now arrived just in time to reassemble with Luffy and the samurai. They all cheerfully welcome each other back, and Law states that he was the bandit lifting food from Paradise Farm, disclosing that they should have a clean food supply. Kinemon invites Law and the Straw Hat Pirates to take shelter in the castle's remains. There, Kinemon admits to his comrades that he has one last secret yet to tell them, but he fears it would be too unbelievable. Luffy implores Kinemon to tell them everything, and Kinemon proclaims that he, Kiku, Momonosuke, Kanjuro, and Raizo are not from this time period. In reality, they all came from 20 years in the past and have come to present day Wano to fulfill their commitment. Luffy and his friends are rattled after Kinemon informs them that he and his fellow samurai have traveled across time from Wano, two decades in the past. Kinemon enlightens them and begins recounting the history of the kingdom, as well as Momonosuke's father, Kozuki Odin. Many years ago, the flower capital was ruled by Kozuki Sukiyaki. Odin was an unruly ronin, who was banished from the city for his violent inclinations. Free to roam wherever he chose, Odin happened upon at the lawless region of Wano, a valley notorious for its brutality and desecration day in and day out. The young Odin appeared on the scene, cutting down the mass of bandits and other troublemakers swarming the village. He sought to challenge the criminal's boss, Ashura Doji, to a duel. After coming out on top, the horde of bandits then recognized Odin as their new leader. Odin then put his underlings to work, rebuilding the village, farming crops, bridging communities, and bringing new life the region that would become the present-day Bakura town. By Sukiyaki's appointment, Odin became the daimyo of Kuri, despite his disorderly behavior. Meanwhile, Inuarashi is reminiscing about Odin as well, recalling a time when his younger self, along with Nekomamushi, were castaways on the shore of Kuri. Odin rescued Duduo from persecution at hands of the locals and took them under his wing. Inuarashi weeps for his master's outgoing kindness, acclaiming that Odin's heroism was respected by Whitebeard himself and even Goldie Roger. Zoro emerges victorious over his battle with the giant tiger when a nearby fishing pier grabs his attention. As the samurai lament over the memories of their lost master, the Straw Hat pirates are brimming with anger aimed at the beast's pirates and the scheming Orochi. On the night the mutiny had taken place 20 years prior, Odin fought to his last breath before he ultimately fell to his executioners. Kinemon, Kanjuro, Raizo, Kiku, Inwarashi, and Nekomamushi fled from the site of their execution and headed for Odin's castle in order to save Odin's children and his wife, Kazuki Toki. The two minks were tragically apprehended, but the samurai had no time to look back. They approached the scorching castle, slashing through the monstrous assailants. Odin's castle was on the brink of collapse, but the four samurai arrived to find Toki, Momonosuke, and his sister alive, trapped by the fire. To his shock, Toki declined Kinemon's attempt to help her escape. She commanded the four to make off with Momonosuke and leave to the future. Without much time to explain, Toki claimed to possess the powers of the Toki Toki no Mi and that she had the ability to send them forward in time. She had used this power on herself many times before, but decided that she must surrender herself to fate then and there. Though Kinemon did not fully understand, he pledged that he and the other samurai would avenge the Kazuki family and restore justice to the Wano Odin worked tirelessly to forge. Momonosuke cries out for his mother, and without admonition, he and the four samurai appear above the castle's torched remains in abrupt daylight. Witnessing the sight of their own graves and discovering the massive industrialization of the country they once knew, Kinemon and the others came to terms with the fact that they have indeed traveled into the future. They were made unpleasantly aware of the kingdom's sorry state and how Odin's legacy had been slandered with hateful propaganda. Amidst all this regrettable change, however, Kinemon found that there was a collection of citizens who remained loyal to Odin and offered themselves to help defend the Kazuki family's honor. Kinemon continues telling the story of the past. Now that Kaido had taken over Wano country, he decided to recruit allies to fight for them. Raizo, Kanjuro, and Momonosuke escaped the country to Zoo in search of more allies. However, one by one, they accidentally got separated in Zoo, Dress Rosa, and Punk Hazard. 
Kinemon explains that to take down Kaido and Orochi, the Ninja Pirate Mink Samurai Alliance will carry out a raid on Onigashima during the country's fire festival. The Straw Hats who arrived at Wano Country earlier have previously been assigned a task to prepare for the raid. Zoro and Usopp recruit allies by handing out encrypted flyers, Robin disguises as a geisha to learn about Orochi's plans, and Frankie works as a construction worker to find the blueprints for Kaido's mansion. The other Straw Hats are also assigned a task. Brooke will carry food into the capital, Nami will pose as a kunoichi for espionage operations, Sanji will pose as a soba chef to attract allies, and Carrot, Chopper, and Kiku will meet up with Inuarashi. Kinemon uses his devil fruit powers to create costumes for them, and also introduces a new ally, Shinobu, another kunoichi. Kinemon continues telling his plan, as Kinemon continues revealing his plan for the upcoming raid on Onigashima. Sanji notices that Ashura Doji is among the allies Kinemon wants to track down, but is also one of Odin's enemies that were defeated. Kinemon explains that Doji changed his ways and became a servant of the Kazuki family, but recently returned to being a criminal under the name Shuten Maru. He explains that Shuten Maru is one of his strongest potential allies. Meanwhile, Shuten Maru is in the streets of Okobore town, robbing people who just received food from Luffy. However, he is encountered by Jack of the Beast's pirates, and they quickly engage in duel. Shuten Maru manages to critically wound Jack. In Onigashima, Kaido goes on a drunken rant about Luffy, attacking his subordinates and smashing another flask. Eventually, using his devil fruit power, he transforms into a terrifying azure dragon and flies to Kuri. In Okobor town, stormy clouds fill the sky, and the citizens immediately recognize, to their shock, that Kaido has decided to appear in person. Jack and Shuten Maru notice, and so do the Straw Hats, who are hidden away at the Heart Pirate's tent. Kaido commands Jack to lead him to Luffy. A drunken Kaido makes an appearance in Okobori town in his azure dragon form. Law explains to Kinemon that he, along with the Straw Hats, were identified by the Beast Pirates. He explains that Kaido dealt in an underground smile fruit operation led by Do Flamingo. However, because Luffy destroyed the factories in both Punk Hazard and Dressrosa, he ended the smile fruit operation, meaning that Kaido is in mad pursuit of Luffy. Luffy starts running toward the town. Law chases after him while the others stay behind to avoid getting exposed again. However, after seeing the rampage, Kinemon and Kiku also go because Tsuru was residing in that town. At Okobor town, Shuten Maru runs from Kaido. Kaido approaches him and offers to form an alliance with him, but Shuten Maru refuses. Then Hawkins appears and lies to Kaido, telling him that Law and Luffy are at the ruins of Odin's castle. Kaido believes him and leaves to the castle. However, as the Straw Hats were hiding near Odin's castle, they were in direct danger of Kaido's attacks. Kaido unleashes his devastating Bolo Breath move, sending a jet of fire destroying Odin's castle, blasting through the mountain and into many towns. Shocked by Kaido's dragon power, Luffy screams out his name. Kaido's Bolo Breath destroys Odin's castle, leaving the witnesses in shock, including Luffy, Hawkins, and Jack. In anger, Luffy chases after Kaido, who unleashes a drunken rampage on Okobori town. He jumps into the sky and uses his elephant gun move to strike Kaido in the head, causing him to fall to the ground. Kinemon and Kiku, having survived Kaido's attack, get up. To Kinemon's shock, however, he finds a smoldering gap where Odin's castle was. He goes to the town in case Kaido wakes up and rampages again, while Kiku goes to the mountain to find Momonosuke and the other straw hats. Luffy also heads in the same direction, only to find Speed's injured body. Speed explains that she was taking Tama back home but was encountered by Kaido. They were attacked by Kaido's fire breath. Luffy laments Tama's death. Out of anger, he shouts out Kaido's name, making the dragon wake up. They almost immediately engage in fierce battle. Kaido manages to knock Luffy into the ground using his tail, but Luffy gets up. In Tama's memory, he uses the elephant Gatling gun on Kaido, pummeling him with giant hockey-infused fists. Luffy pummels Kaido using his elephant Gatling gun move. Despite this, Kaido is unharmed and he knocks Luffy back with a belch. He then proceeds to attack Luffy with his tail and shoots fireballs, but Luffy evades the attacks and knocks Kaido to the ground using his grizzly magnum move. Kaido is largely unharmed by Luffy's attacks and turns back into his human form. He gets up and is dizzy from intoxication, but Luffy continues to fight, transforming into his Gear 4, Boundman form. He pummels Kaido with the Kong organ gun move, sending him flying and crashing into many buildings. Despite this, Kaido gets up. 
They participate in a final clash, and Kaido ends with victory and defeats Luffy using the Raimi hockey move. Law attempts to rescue Luffy, but is stopped by Hawkins, who launches a sea stone nail into his arm, preventing him from using his devil fruit ability. Hawkins attacks Law with his straw sword, but Law gets the nail out in time and escapes using his shambles move. Kaido stands over Luffy, scoffing at his aspirations to be the Pirate King. After having defeated Luffy, Kaido orders his men to imprison him. However, even while unconscious, Luffy manages to use Haoshoku Haki and knock out the goons. Despite this, Kaido transforms into his dragon form and goes back to Onigashima. After escaping Hawkins, Law ends up in a forest, still injured by the nail. However, Hawkins finds Luffy and arrests him. Meanwhile, Okabori Town has been devastated by Kaido's attack. Tsuru tends to an injured old man, where Kinemon in disguise sees her for the first time in 20 years. He also sees Doji ride by. Kiku finds a giant sinkhole where Odin's castle once was. She finds that the straw hats were inside. Shinobu had used her devil fruit to decay the ground, creating a sinkhole. The straw hats fell in, avoiding Kaido's bolo breath, and Chopper used his guard point to save the others from falling. Meanwhile, Inuarashi finds Tama's unconscious body. She had survived Kaido's attack and was still breathing. Wanted posters of Luffy are released throughout the country, and the Straw Hats are shocked that Luffy would take on Kaido himself. Luffy is taken to Udon, Wano Country's industrial district, to be forced into slavery. One of the particularly dangerous prisoners who is hidden is fed poisonous fish, but the guards are instructed to remove the bones first. However, the guard does not do so. Luffy walks through and glares at the guards. One guard mocks him and attacks him, but the unknown prisoner spits out a sharp fishbone at him, piercing him in the neck. Luffy is sent to his cell and finds Eustace Kid, who also swears revenge on Kaido. They immediately recognize each other. Ending the Wano Country arc's first act. Newspapers reach Kurigana Island, the island where Zoro trained. Dracul Mihawk receives a newspaper from one of the birds. Perona also sees the newspaper and is shocked to see Moria's image on the front page, apparently having carried out a zombie raid. She's happy to hear that Moria is still alive, and decides to leave to see him again. Before she leaves, Mihawk tells her that leaving was the best decision, as a strange topic was brought up at the Levely. Meanwhile, on Fulla Lead, a island dubbed the Pirate Paradise, Blackbeard sits in the shadows near a newspaper depicting Sabo. Then, Moria's army raids the island in search of Absalom. Moria demands to see Teach. One of Blackbeard's captains, Avalo Pizarro, watches. Then Moria spots Absalom to his relief. However, Moria is attacked from behind by an invisible assailant. Moria finds that the attacker, Shiryu, has Absalom's devil fruit ability to become invisible. He then finds that Absalom was really Katarina Devon in disguise. Moria realizes, to his horror, that Absalom has been killed for his devil fruit powers. Just then, Blackbeard uses his devil fruit ability to create a tremor, drawing Moria's attention. He warns Moria through Denden Mushi not to interfere, then tells the citizens to board his ship. Blackbeard then informs Moria of recent news. On the fourth day of the Levely, officers of the Revolutionary Army appeared and clashed against Admirals Fujitora and Ryokugyu in an attempt to free Kuma. In other news, Luffy and other members of the Worst Generation are gathered in Wano country, with Big Mom in mad pursuit of Luffy. Blackbeard then creates another tremor. As the Wano country arc's second act begins, Inuarashi and Doji quickly engage in a sword fight. The battle leads in a standstill. Mid-battle, Inuarashi exclaims that he is here to fulfill Odin's dream of taking over the country again. Suddenly, the battle is interrupted by Kinemon's fire slash. Doji immediately walks away from the battle. He explains that he is refusing to join the plan because Kinemon abandoned the country for 20 years. Back at Hitetsu's house, Tama's injuries are treated by Chopper and a few mink doctors. She explains that she fainted from fear upon seeing Kaidu, but was otherwise unharmed aside from a few minor scratches. Chopper explains to her shock that Luffy had been captured and sent to Udin's excavation camp. In Udin, Luffy is sentenced to hard labor, where he must carry large blocks of stone. He receives one kibidango for every five blocks he hauls. However, Eustace Kid runs past, knocking the dango out of Luffy's hand and trampling over it. Kid, who works extremely fast, gets an enormous pile of dumplings to eat. In the flower capital, while the newsboy informs the people about various criminals, Several of Kinemon's allies, including Usopp, a heart pirate, and Bipo, hand out flyers to recruit allies. Many of these allies mysteriously find the paper in their hands, calling it the work of a ghost. Some recruits are hesitant while some are willing to join. Meanwhile, Nami and Shinobu spy on Orochi's mansion. 
Shinobu uses her devil fruit powers to decay holes into the attic, where they spy on Orochi's men from above. However, they are caught and barely escape with Shinobu panicking. In Onigashima, the other two all-stars of the Beast Pirates, King and Queen, reprimand Jack for not bringing in enough offerings from Kuri. They also furiously bicker with each other. Nami and Shinobu are caught spying on Orochi's men in the attic. The soldiers pierce through the ceiling with spears, which causes Shinobu to panic. They climb into the attic, but Nami and Shinobu just manage to escape onto the rooftop. Shinobu reveals that she panicked because she was terrified of sharp objects. Despite being caught, Nami found out where Orochi was stockpiling his weapons. They leave using Shinobu's kite. Along the way, they see Sanji, who has attracted a line of hungry customers posing as a soba chef. However, he attracts some rivals who spy on him. Meanwhile in Udon, Luffy and Kid work furiously to haul stone blocks, each earning a giant pile of dango. However, the warden, Doban, a smile user who rides inside a hippo's mouth, is furious that his food stores have been depleted by Kid and Luffy. The hippo swallows Luffy and Kid, where Doban could attack them inside the hippo's stomach. However, even weakened by sea stone handcuffs, Luffy and Kid manage to defeat Doban, who spills out of the hippo's mouth. The prisoners cheer for them as they walk away. Sanji becomes popular from his soba shop, but he attracts some unwanted rivals. Members of the Kyoshiro family approach him and demand that he pays to run his business. When Sanji refuses, the thugs start to attack the shop and terrorize a little girl, knocking her bowl of soba onto the floor. Strangely, tears appear in the girl's eyes, but she laughs. Sanji is greatly angered by the wasted soba. They quickly begin to fight, and Sanji easily emerges victorious. Frankie also joins in and defeats a thug. Sanji then force-feeds the wasted soba to one of the fighters. After the fighters have been tied up, the little girl appears. She introduces herself as Otoko, a name the Straw Hats find humorous because it means male. She also reveals that she works as a Kamuro, a courtesan's attendant, and worked hard to pay for the soba. A woman chimes in and explains that there is a single oiran, courtesan, named Komurasaki. She also reveals that Robin had been invited to Orochi's mansion. At Udon's excavation camp, Luffy becomes a celebrity among the prisoners for beating up Doban. He also gives some food tickets to an old man that he saved earlier. Then Rezo appears, having snuck into the prison. He reveals that he knows the location of the key to Luffy's seastone handcuffs, but it is kept under tight security. Rezo disappears and goes to steal the key. Back at the flower capital, Komurasaki walks up to Orochi's mansion. Komurasaki the Oiran parades through the streets of the flower capital, stunning the spectators with her beauty. In Udon, Luffy continues to break rocks but is approached by Caribou who begs him for food. Previously, Caribou met Luffy in the Sabaudi Archipelago and terrorized Fishman Island, but was defeated by Luffy. He would later continue his crimes in the New World until being captured by X-Drake and was sent to Udon for hard labor. Meanwhile, Kyoshiro's henchmen, who were defeated by Sanji, report to their leader. Kyoshiro is unfazed, but decides to contact Queen to send assassins after Sanji. At the castle, Orochi finally appears as a multi-headed serpent. At the procession, a group of people threatens to assassinate Komurasaki. However, they are swiftly defeated by guards. More about one of the assassins, an old man named Bingo, is revealed. Bingo was an old man who fell in love with Komurasaki, who promised him that they could live together if Bingo bought her freedom from the pleasure house. To earn money, Bingo became a miserly moneylender, who sold his storehouse, abandoned his wife, and stopped buying medicine for himself to save money. Sickly and homeless, Bingo finally raised the money to free Komurasaki from the pleasure house. He would find out, however, that Komurasaki spent Bingo's money on herself, and she had no intention of marrying him. Bingo was humiliated, penniless, and heartbroken, and was cruelly beaten by other men. Back in the present day, Bingo and the other assassins are exiled from the flower capital for being poor. Komurasaki reveals that she exploits unsuspecting men for their money. Zoro goes to a gambling house where he plays an odds and evens game with dice. He wins, earning an impressive sum. However, the other straw hats do not know where he is, so they consider him missing. At the construction company, Frankie is reprimanded by his boss, Minotomo for arriving to work late. Frankie asks for the blueprints for Kaido's mansion, but Minotomo states that he had pawned them away a decade ago. After starting a fight, Frankie is fired and leaves to go to the pawn shop. Frankie goes to the pawn shop where he is led to another person named Kumagoro. He goes around town in search of the blueprints, being led to different people, and eventually reaching a dead end as he is told the blueprints are in Kuri, 
he finds Kanjuro, who is selling fish drawn with his devil fruit ability. Kinemon then calls, telling him to support other missions around the capital. Meanwhile, Wanda, Carrot, and other minks break into a factory to steal food and weapons. They leave a note saying that the Mount Atama thieves were the culprits. This way, the beast pirates would blame and attack Doji for the theft, forcing him to join Kinemon's alliance. Wanda and Carrot bring the supplies to Kinemon. At the gambling house, a gambler attempts to cheat against Zoro. A man hiding under the table uses a needle to push the dice over. Detecting the cheating, Zoro unleashes a swordless dragon twister attack, uncovering the table and revealing the man. The gamblers turn on him and begin to fight. Zoro defeats the gamblers and takes the money from the loser. Zoro leaves with one of the gamblers, Tonoyasu, to the town Ebisu. Orochi finally makes a human appearance at his mansion and meets with masked agents of CP0. The agency had previously participating in shady underworld dealings with the Joker Doflamingo, but now that Doflamingo was defeated, CP0 was forced to deal with Wano Country directly. However, because Wano Country was already self-sufficient, Orochi made unreasonable demands, even demanding the mysterious Dr. Vegapunk. Outside the mansion, Komurasaki arrives at the gate. Meanwhile, Momonosuke reveals to Tama that he has a mysterious sister named Hiyori, and he does not know whether or not she is alive. Tonoyasu takes Zoro to his hometown, Ibisu Town. The town is poverty-stricken like Okobore Town, but its citizens laugh despite their circumstances. Citizens of the town claim that an unknown thief named Ushimitsu Kozo steals from the rich and gives the money to poor tenements. A girl offers him a cup of clean water, which to them is a luxury. Meanwhile, at the flower capital, Orochi demands a luxurious dinner, wastefully rejecting many of the prepared meals offered to him. He also demands several geishas, including Robin Undercover, to dance for him. Kamurasaki and the Kiyoshiro family also join in the dinner party. Sanji is working at his soba shop when Law comes and warns him of incoming threats. He explains that the top six Shinuchi of the Beast Pirates are known as Tobiropo. Two of these Tobiropo, Page One and X Drake, are after Sanji, with Hawkins also joining in. Both are ancient Zoan users. Page One can transform into a Spinosaurus and Drake an Allosaurus. At Uden, Caribou tells Luffy a false rumor that Eustace Kid lost his arm at the hands of one of Big Mom's subordinates. Kid suddenly appears and debunks this rumor, stating that he lost his arm battling the Red Hair Pirates. Nami and Shinobu land their kites on the rooftop of Orochi's mansion and make their way inside. Inside, Robin sneaks out. Brook also snoops around, using his devil fruit ability to separate his soul from his body. He finds a strangely reinforced door, and upon passing through the door, he finds Kaido's poneglyph. In Onigashima, Kaido is informed that Big Mom is arriving from the southeast, and that her ship is riding up the waterfall being carried by carp. Kaido orders his men to fire at her ship. The cannons fire, but Perospero blocks the fire with candy. Then other Big Mom pirates destroy the cannons. Big Mom exclaims that she won't let Luffy get away. Orochi throws a banquet at his mansion as a pre-party for the upcoming fire festival. He tells his subjects to dance and drink. Just outside Wano Country, Kaido's cannons attempt to sink Big Mom's ship, but they fail to do so. Big Mom's ship passes through seven defense lines, so Queen prepares a final defense. However, Big Mom breaks through the defense line using her Ikoku attack, cutting off Queen's surveillance. Big Mom's ship is now climbing the waterfall into the country. In response, Kaido declares an all-out war against the Big Mom pirates. King decides to be proactive. He uses his ancient Zoan powers to transform into a Pteranodon, he flies out to Big Mom's ship and pushes the ship back down the waterfall. Big Mom then falls overboard and into a whirlpool, sinking due to being unable to swim. Page One walks through the flower capital in his Spinosaurus form and rampages, destroying soba shops. Sanji, who must avoid getting caught by the beast pirates, runs away. However, upon hearing the cries of the terrorized citizens, Sanji rushes to confront Page One. He takes out his raid suit, ready to battle. Sanji activates his raid suit cam, transforming into a more powerful, scientifically advanced Stealth Black. Although he is formally named Stealth Black in Germa 66, Sanji decides to name himself Soba Mask. Sanji begins fighting Page One, knocking him down with a kick in the throat. Page One attacks with his claw, but Sanji then blocks the attack with his cape, which turns into a solid shield. Most notably, Sanji's suit allows him to turn invisible, allowing him to attack Page One with super speed. Page One collapses and transforms into his hybrid form. Meanwhile, in Udon, Luffy asks Eustace Kid for more dumplings while in his cell, who ignores him. Orochi's lavish party continues at his mansion, 
and Komurasaki plays him a song on her shamisen. Meanwhile, Robin, who has snuck out of the party, looks in a room for the poneglyph. However, she is quickly detected by the Orochi Oniwabanshu, Shogun Orochi's personal military force consisting of ninjas. Fukurokuju, the ninja leader, gives Robin a chance to explain herself. Sanji, as Soba Mask, continues to battle fiercely against Page One. At one point, Page One gets the upper hand, picking Sanji up and throwing him into houses. Sanji is unharmed but wants to avoid damaging the houses in battle. So, after unleashing one powerful attack, Sanji escapes into the sky. Usopp, Law, and Frankie also flee to avoid being identified. Most of the Big Mom pirates survive the attack from King unharmed, but they are separated from Big Mom, who is sinking to the bottom of the sea. Meanwhile, Komurasaki finishes her song on her shamisen. Robin is confronted by the Orochi Oniwabanshu, who offers her a quick and painless death if she told them the truth. Robin attempts to lie to get out, but the ninjas detect this and attack her. Robin attempts to escape, but one of the ninjas captures her with a grappling hook on a rope. Another ninja attacks her with shurikens. After being attacked, Robin disintegrates, revealing that it is simply a clone of herself made with her devil fruit ability. The real Robin, who is outside, contacts Nami and Shinobu, who decide to go after Fukurokuju. Robin then is forced to disconnect, keeping her disguise as a geisha and attending to a drunk partygoer. Brooke decides to go out to protect Robin, separating his soul from his body. Meanwhile, the ninjas scatter, not wanting to disrupt Orochi's party. On the beaches of Kuri, Chopper trains with Tama while Momonosuke practices his swordsmanship. They express concern for Raizo, who has infiltrated the Udon prison but has not responded to them yet. Chopper then climbs a bamboo stalk and notices a mysterious large object in the distance. Robin rejoins the party, attending to Orochi and pouring him a drink. She manages to get some plans from Orochi about the upcoming fire festival. Orochi reveals that there will be a lavish banquet, and all the country's major officials and beasts pirates will be there. Meanwhile, Brooke floats through the hallways but is spotted by the ninjas. Brooke appears in front of them, who are frightened, mistaking him for a ghost. The ninjas then do a full sweep of the mansion, searching all the rooms and stabbing the ceiling, scaring Nami and Shinobu hiding in the attic. They also search the party area, and Robin hides from patrolling ninja. Chopper and the others go to the object and find, to their shock, that it is the unconscious body of Big Mom, who is washed ashore after King's attack. To their horror, she wakes up. However, she has lost all her memories and does not know who or where she is. Big Mom has lost all her memory from King's attack, even forgetting her own name. Chopper, who wants to avoid reminding her that she was an emperor, lies, stating that her name is Olin. Big Mom believes him. Meanwhile, Orochi retells the ghost story of Wano and the prophecy told. He states that as this was the 20th anniversary of Odin's death, the nine red scabbards are bound to make their return as ghosts and restore the Kazuki family's reign. He is already aware of the intruders that entered Wano country, Zorojuro and Sangoro, and suspects that they are allied with Kinemon. The partygoers think he is delusional and stifle laughs to prevent offending Orochi. However, Toko decides to laugh very plainly and loudly, despite others trying to stop her. Angered, Orochi prepares to attack her, but is stopped by Komurasaki who slaps him across the face. Komurasaki then refuses to bow to Orochi, then reveals that she is a samurai's daughter. Infuriated that his most beautiful subject has turned on him, Orochi turns into an eight-headed serpent. Still, Komurasaki refuses to apologize. At that point, Orochi goes into a blind rampage, attacking innocent partygoers with his other seven heads. He then bites Komurasaki, crushing her body in his jaws. Meanwhile, Robin rescues Toko and takes her away, but is spotted and cornered by the ninjas. However, Brooke scares them off, pretending to be a ghost. Kyoshiro relishes in the slaughter, calling it pandemonium, then unsheathes his sword. The ninjas refuse to help the Oiran because they are busy dealing with an intruder. They expose Robin in front of the party, revealing that she is an intruder. However, Brooke appears and scares most of the ninjas away, and Robin fights some of them off with her devil fruit ability. Nami and Shinobu watch from the ceiling when they are confronted by a ninja, Hanzo. Hanzo explains that Shinobu used to be extremely attractive and would kill her victims by seducing them first, earning her the name Man Killer. Shinobu then knocks out Hanzo, then rots the ceiling, causing all three of them to crash into the banquet. Some rubble hits Orochi's head, causing him to let go of Komurasaki. Orochi gets back up and finds Komurasaki, but Kiyoshiro steps in, unsheathes his sword, and slices her chest. This even angers Orochi. 
Kiyoshiro states that Komurasaki broke the iron rule by disobeying the shogun. However, he finds the paper containing the rebellion symbol, implying that Komurasaki is affiliated with Kinemon's alliance. Orochi then goes to attack Robin to capture Toko. The ninjas also realize that Brook is not attacking them, and they stop fearing him. However, Nami takes out Zeus, who has been stored in her climb attack. Nami feeds Zeus some weather eggs, and Zeus then unleashes a powerful lightning attack striking down Orochi. The next day, the officers of Udon is alerted that Eustace Kid has escaped. At the same time, Chopper's group takes Big Mom to Okabori Town where Tsuru feeds her red bean soup. Tama gets the idea of leading her to Udon to help break Luffy out of prison. She tells Big Mom that there was more red bean soup at Udon. This plan works, and Big Mom prepares to leave for Udon. Kanjuro meets with Nami's group in a snowy cottage far away from the flower capital. Kanjuro states that the most powerful Yakuza 20 years ago was Hyogoro, who was far more humane and caring than Kiyoshiro was at the party. They also report their findings. Robin was unable to get any useful information, but Brooke found a poneglyph, though it was not red. They decide to go back to the flower capital to relax at a bathhouse. Sanji's group is also hiding in Ibisu town. They read the news, which tells of Komurasaki's death and kids' escape from prison. Law predicts that Luffy will be part of an uprising in Udon. However, Sanji asks if there is a bathhouse, causing the others to tackle Sanji. A group of children enters and plays with Sanji's raid suit can. The Big Mom pirates are back at the bottom of the waterfall. They cannot go back up because King is defending the top. They know that Big Mom survived the fall as Prospero's Viver card is still intact, so they decide to wait at the bottom for any news. Big Mom and Chopper's group ride on a crocodile towards Udon. Strangely, Kiku forbids Tama and Momonosuke from using the word Tsunachi, stating that it is inappropriate to use. Kiku then explains the structure of Wano country, which is divided in six regions. Kuri is in the far west and Udon is just east of it. The other four regions are Kibi, a wasteland, the flower capital at the center, Ringo, a snowy region, and Hakumai, a port region. Separated from the mainland is an island named Onigashima. In Udon, Luffy once again helps the old man Hio by breaking rocks and giving him meal tickets. However, he is interrogated by Alpacaman about Kid's escape. Alpacaman, a smile fruit user, covers Luffy in smelly spit. Hio is also beaten by Daifugo, a scorpion smile fruit user, for getting his food tickets from someone else. Witnessing the beating, Luffy walks up to confront Daifugo. Raizo disguises himself as a prison guard to get into the sea stone box containing the handcuff keys. Although he is caught, he quickly defeats the guards and pins a crab smile user to the wall with shuriken. Raizo then runs through the hallways and defeats the guards. Hio refuses to tell Daifugo who gave him the food tickets. He states that Wano country used to be full of civil samurai during Odin's reign, but has since been replaced by ruffian pirates. Luffy then steps in, kicking Daifugo in the face and freeing Hio. The guards chant to kill Luffy. Luffy fights off some of the guards until Babanuki, an elephant smile user and the prison warden, appears. Babanuki has an elephant on his stomach, who sneezes a cannonball at Luffy. Luffy, unable to use his devil fruit power or hockey, is knocked back. Solitaire, the prison's vice warden and a monkey smile user, finds out about the stolen keys. She reprimands the crab guard for failing to capture the thief. Just then, Queen arrives at the prison for his showtime, with the prison guards cheering him on. He obsesses over a photo of Komurasaki, unaware of her death. He then goes up to the stage and performs a short musical number. He is formally introduced as Queen the Plague, the lead performer of the Beast Pirates. With the guards distracted, Luffy carries Hio away, attempting to climb a wall to escape the prison. Babanuki describes the circumstances to Queen, telling him about Kid's escape, the stolen keys, and Luffy attempting to escape. Queen tells his men to chase after Luffy. Luffy and Hio attempt to climb the wall to escape, but falls after being bombarded with arrows and rocks from below. He is then attacked with Babanuki's elephant cannonballs. Queen says that he has something to say to Luffy. In the flower capital, Nami, Robin, and Shinobu go to a bathhouse and relax in a steam room. Nami is frustrated it is a mixed bathhouse as many perverted men watch her while ignoring Shinobu. Shinobu uses a ninjutsu move on the men for insulting her, striking their groin. They then go to another room to have their backs washed by an octopus. One of the people at the spa mentions Hyogoro, prompting further discussion. Shinobu explains that Hyogoro was a highly respected person during Odin's reign, even gaining the loyalty from the leaders of the other five regions, and Odin himself. However, it is rumored that, after the Kurozumi family took over, 
Hyogoro refused to serve Orochi and was killed. On the other hand, Fukurokuju agreed to serve Orochi and was spared, becoming the leader of his personal ninja force. Shinobu reveals that she was one of the ninjas serving Orochi before she defected, and that is how Hanzo knew her. Queen speaks with Hayo, who is revealed to be Hayogoro and Luffy. He states that if Luffy joined the Beast Pirates, he will be pardoned for his acts. However, Luffy refuses. Raizo, having acquired Luffy's handcuff keys, finds Luffy near Queen. Suddenly, the mysterious fish-eating prisoner from before calls out his name. Raizo is shocked to see his comrade, Kawamatsu, though he is chained to the wall. Unfortunately, Raizo is spotted near the cell and Solitaire is notified. He disappears in smoke. Queen's men carry out a giant sumo ring for Luffy and Hayo to wrestle on as a sort of impossible trial. Luffy and Hayo are fitted with a collar that, when they leave the ring, ejects sharp blades to decapitate them. However, to their advantage, their sea stone handcuffs are removed. Luffy asks if they could be released from prison if they beat Queen. Queen laughs at Luffy for suggesting that he could defeat him. The terrifying sumo match then begins, and Luffy is presented with a gang of fighters. However, Luffy defeats them effortlessly, and Queen calls out the pleasures. Kawamatsu watches the match from his cell while Luffy beats up more pirates with minimal effort. Meanwhile, Hawkins raids the bathhouse that Nami's group is at, somehow knowing about the Alliance's operations. He lines up all the people to check their ankles for the reverse crescent symbol, somehow knowing about the symbol. They prepare to arrest Nami, but her robe falls, revealing her breasts and knocking everyone back, including Drake. Sanji also appears, apparently having been hiding using his raid suit. He suffers a nosebleed and crashes into a wall. Hawkins and Drake, both being from North Blue, recognize him as Stealth Black of Germa 66. The guests go into a frenzied panic in fear of Germa 66. Nami's group attempts to escape during the commotion, but are confronted by Hawkins and Drake. Sanji briefly fights them before picking up the others and bursting through the ceiling and flying away. They head to Ibisu Town to meet up with Usopp's group. In Ringo, a thief attacks swordsmen and collects their swords. At a bridge, he is confronted by Zoro, whose sword, Shusui, has been stolen from him. The thief states that Shusui did not belong to Zoro as it was stolen from Ryuma's grave. They quickly enter battle as Zoro wants to take the thief's sword collection. Big Mom rides to Udon where she and Tama express their love for red bean soup. Chopper fears that Big Mom will return to her normal self if she finds out that there was no red bean soup. However, Queen enjoys several bowls of the soup, revealing there was plenty of soup at Udon. Luffy continues to defeat the pleasures with ease, so Queen decides to bring out the gifters. Luffy is put against Batman, with advanced hearing, flight, and a bow and arrow, and Gazelman with super speed. Despite this, Luffy defeats them relatively swiftly with hockey imbued punches. Still, Luffy is disappointed that he could not defeat them without touching them like Rayleigh did. At the Bridge of Ringo, the sword thief, identified as Gyukimaru, battles against Zoro. He becomes angry when Zoro states that he met Ryuma. Gyukimaru explains Ryuma's significance. Several nobles in the past attempted to take over Wano country, but Ryuma was a formidable samurai who prevented them from doing so. Their duel is interrupted by Komurasaki, who somehow survived Kyoshiro's attack, but is running away from an assassin, Hitokiri Kamazo, the slasher previously mentioned in the news. Kamazo intends to kill Toko for laughing and Komurasaki for disrespecting the shogun. Zoro helps Komurasaki in exchange for sake and food. Zoro and Kamazo begin fighting, and the duel reaches a standstill as they seem equally matched. Zoro removes his outer garment, ready to fight harder. Kinemon is informed that their rebellion symbol has somehow been leaked. At the moment, Orochi's men set out to arrest everyone with the reverse crescent tattoo on their ankle. At the Sumo Inferno, Luffy is placed against Bearman, a bear smile fruit user with a tough body, easily taking Luffy's punches unharmed. Luffy again imbues his fist with hockey and strikes Bearman in the chest, knocking him over and defeating him. The flower capital mourns the supposed death of Kamurasaki. The person hit the hardest was Orochi, who cries profusely because his love interest was slain in front of him. Kyoshiro states that killing her was necessary because he had to devastate Orochi. He reveals that he has a rebellion flyer hidden in his robe. Sanji's group returns to Ebisu Town where he is beaten for intruding in the bathhouse. Shinobu blames the others for potentially jeopardizing the operation, accusing Beppo of telling Orochi's men about the symbol. Kanjuro tells her to stop blaming people, as the operation will fail without them. Tonoyasu then enters, stating that the rebellion symbol has been leaked all over the capital. Zoro continues his battle against the slasher Hitokiri Kamazo. At one point, Kamazo gets the upper hand and stabs Zoro in the shoulder. 
However, he cannot remove his scythe from Zoro's wound, and Zoro now has a third sword to use. With three swords, Zoro swiftly defeats Kamazo, leaving him unconscious in the snow. Gyukimaru decides to leave with his weapons, not wanting to fight Zoro. Zoro collapses in the snow from his injury. Luffy and Hyogoro are placed against Alpacaman and Medillaman, an armadillo smile fruit user. Hyogoro fights against Alpacaman, where Luffy uses hockey to predict Alpacaman's movements and tell Hyogoro what moves to make in response. Meanwhile, Luffy fights against Medillaman and attempts to defeat him without touching him, but struggles to do so, attacking him with regular hockey. Medillaman and Alpacaman use a combination technique to take down Luffy. However, this still fails as Luffy knocks them both back, sending them crashing into a wall. He is disappointed that he still couldn't beat them without touching them. The rebels with the crescent tattoos are gathered in a giant prison to be publicly shamed. Among the prisoners are a few heart pirates, including Beppo. Komurasaki and Toko take Zoro to a cottage for his wounds to be treated. Zoro tries to leave to pursue the sword thief, but Komurasaki stops him because his wounds have not healed. She explains to him that she angered Orochi, so an assassin, Kamazo, was sent to kill her. Finally, she reveals that she is Momonosuke's long-lost sister, Hiyori. Zoro tells Hiyori that he is Momonosuke's ally, confirming that he, along with Kinemon and the others, are all alive. Hiyori explains the fateful day 20 years ago. When Orochi overthrew the Kozuki family, Toki used her devil fruit powers to send Kinemon, Momonosuke, Kanjuro, Raizo, and Kikunojo 20 years into the future. Hiyori was left behind so that if Momonosuke did not make it into the future, the Kazuki bloodline would not die. Both Odin and Toki would be slain during the coup, but Hiyori would survive as Kawamatsu helped her escape. Kawamatsu would then raise her throughout her childhood. After she finishes the story, Zoro tells her about the status of the operation. His group has located six of the nine red scabbards, but not the other three. Hiyori explains that the other three are Kawamatsu, Denjiro, and Doji. They then go to sleep to get some rest. Law gets into a disagreement with Shinobu because she accused the Heart Pirates of giving away the plans. He leaves the group in rage. They worry about Law, but the town is encountered by the three criminals from Komurasaki's procession, Bingo, Bongo, and Bungo. They were criminals operating in the capital who bribed officials to ignore their crimes, but they fell in love with Komurasaki who robbed them all and exiled them from the capital. Tonoyasu welcomed them into Ebisu town, but they continued to act rude towards the townspeople. Meanwhile, Luffy is disappointed that he cannot beat his opponents without touching them. Hayogoro explains that Wano Country has a technique for doing so, and demonstrates this by defeating Alpaca Man without touching him. Hayogoro teaches Luffy how to use Ryuo, the Wano Country equivalent of Haki. Luffy struggles at first, but Hayogoro tells him to make his unused Haki flow to his fist. Luffy still struggles and keeps beating people by punching them the regular way. Meanwhile, in Ebisu Town, Tonoyasu discusses the symbol of the rebellion. The others think the plan is ruined because the symbol got leaked, but Tonoyasu says that it worked in their favor because now many people know about the symbol and are willing to join the alliance. Tonoyasu joins their cause before leaving to tend to the other citizens. Tonoyasu goes around tending to the people, checking up on them, giving them food and playing with children. The old woman explains that Tonoyasu gets his income from his daughter, Toko, who works at the capital and sends it to him. Tonoyasu would give most of it away to the townspeople. Nightfall arrives and Luffy is still in the sumo match, but still does not know how to use Ryuo. After knocking out the guards with Haki, he reveals that he plans to take down Kaidu and restore the Kazuki family. Raizo appears, having recruited Caribou into the alliance. Hyogoro then expresses gratitude that the Revolution Alliance has survived to the present day, then asks to join the cause. Raizo allows him. Hayogoro gets the idea of recruiting the Udon prisoners to fight for them, as most of the prisoners were arrested for treason. The others accept this idea, and Raizo gets to work breaking Kawamatsu out of his cell. Caribou takes out a giant pot of red bean soup stolen from Queen. News gets out that the infamous thief Ushimitsu Kozo has been caught. It is revealed that the thief is Tonoyasu. Orochi hears about the capture and is shocked to hear that he was still alive. Orochi sentences Tonoyasu to be executed. Kyoshiro suggests burying him next to Komurasaki's body. Queen hears the devastating news from Kaido that Komurasaki has died, and he starts crying. On the sumo ring, Luffy and Hyogoro have gotten plump from drinking the whole pot of red bean soup, but the officers do not tell Queen because he is already shocked by Komurasaki's death. Meanwhile, Holedam's men engage in battle against Shudamaru's thieves on Mount Adama. 
As Carrot's group previously framed Shuten Maru for thievery, Hold'em also blames Shuten Maru for his defeat in Bakura Town as he believes that Luffy was his subordinate. He sets fire to the mountain. Shuten Maru's men retreat to Bakura Town. Wanda and Carrot, who were watching from the peak, decide to contact Inurashi about it. Kinemon laments tricking Hold'em into destroying Shuten Maru's hideout, but decide to head to Bakura Town to recruit Shuten Maru. In Ringo, Brooke goes into a cottage only to find Hayori sleeping with Zoro. They wake up, and Brooke fills them in with the news. Upon hearing that Tonoyasu was caught and sentenced to execution, Toko immediately runs out to go save her father. In the flower capital, Tonoyasu is escorted out of his cell into his execution. Kamurasaki's coffin is escorted through the streets for her body to be cremated. The citizens mourn her death. Orochi also rides to the execution area to watch Tonoyasu's execution. Tonoyasu is tied to a cross, and the post is raised, placing him high into the sky. He reminisces on his past life with Odin. A live video of the execution is shown in Bakura Town, Ebisu Town, and Udon. The townspeople of Ebisu Town continue to laugh, and Holedam watches the event in Bakura Town. Kinemon rides through Bakura Town to look for Shuten Maru when he sees the broadcast, shocked that Tonoyasu is still alive. Hyogoro, who watches from Udon, also recognizes him. They reveal that Tonoyasu's real name is, in reality, Shimotsuki Yasuie. Yasui's past is revealed. He was the daimyo of Hakumai before Odin became Shogun, and he was a serious person who never smiled. Odin was kicked out of the castle by his father, Sukiyaki, so he stayed at Hakumai with Yasui. Back to the present day, the townspeople beg the officers to let Yasui down, but he keeps laughing. He states that he wants to apologize for two things, then say something to Orochi. The first bullet is fired at him. His charges and sentence are then read by an officer. Toko, who has reached the border of the town, calls out for her father. The people of Ebisu Town, along with Usopp, Nami, and Robin, charge into the flower capital to save Yasui from his execution. The people battle against the guards of the flower capital. Yasui makes his final statement. He praises Wano country for being a once beautiful country with forests and rivers thanks to the Kazuki family, but calls out Orochi for ruining the country, calling him nothing but vermin. Yasui laughs even as the executioner points his rifle at him. To save the rebellion, Yasui decides to lie stating that the Rebellion Flyers were a prank orchestrated by him, and the people with crescent tattoos are not rebels. Orochi finally arrives at the execution area and prepares to shoot him. Yasui tells Orochi, a man of such small caliber will never truly devour Odin. He reveals that he has changed the rendezvous point on the Flyers so that the revolution will live on. Shots are fired at Yasui. Yasui recalls when he was a daimyo, the nine red scabbards were captured for stealing money and brought to him. Because Yasui recognizes that Odin was going through financial struggles, he lets them keep the money they stole. On the cross, Yasui also sees his daughter Toko running to him. He remembers a moment when he walked with his daughter and let her ride on his back. In his last moments, he apologizes to her for leaving her behind before finally dying. His body falls off the cross and hits the ground. To Zoro's frustration, the citizens of Ibisu Town including Toko, start laughing at the body. Hiyori explains that they are physically unable of showing any emotion except laughter because of Kaido's smile fruits. The citizens mourn Yasui's death, though the people of Ibisu Town laugh over the death. Shinobu and Hiyori explain the smile fruits. Kaido wanted to increase the strength of his army, so he purchased artificial Zoan fruits from Doflamingo. However, the success rate of these fruits is 10% meaning only 10% of smile fruit eaters successfully gain an ability. The other 90% would permanently lose their ability to swim, as well as express any emotion other than joy. Fighters of the Beast Pirates are divided into three categories. The waiters have not eaten a smile fruit, the gifters are those who gain smile fruit powers, and the pleasures are those who have eaten smile fruits but failed to gain powers. Ibisu Town's dark history is revealed. It was a poverty-stricken town that received its food from the capital. Orochi took some failed smile fruits that have already been bitten and gave them to the town. Given no other source of food, the people of Ibisu Town ate the defective fruits and suffered its negative side effects. Toko decides to break past the fence and go to her father's corpse. Orochi sees her and prepares to shoot her, blaming her for Komurasaki's death. However, Zoro and Sanji stop him, breaking through the fence and cutting the bullets in two. The samurai start fighting Zoro and Sanji, who fight them off easily. Zoro then sends a flying slash towards Orochi, but Kyoshiro deflects the attack. Kyoshiro decides to battle against Zoro, 
while Orochi rides back to the castle. X-Drake then transforms into his Allosaurus form and attacks Sanji. The firing squad also fires their rifles at Zoro and Sanji, but Frankie blocks the bullets with his cyborg body. Frankie takes Yasui's body away. Usopp, Robin, and Nami also fight at his side. The Straw Hats decide to finish up their battle on the execution ground. Zoro battles with Kyoshiro, Sanji battles with Drake, and Usopp, Robin, Frankie, and Nami deal with the other soldiers. Luffy cheers from the sumo ring in Udon. Just then, Queen gets the news that some criminals have arrived. Kamazo, who failed to assassinate Komurasaki, and Kid, who surrendered after his escape, enter the prison. Kid immediately recognized Kamazo as his own crewmate Killer. Killer was somehow forced to eat a smile fruit and therefore can only express happiness. Angered for Kid, Luffy calls out Queen, resuming the sumo match. Zoro continues his battle with Kyoshiro and Sanji with Drake. However, the Orochi Oni Wabanshu appear. With the help of Hawkins, the ninjas have identified them as members of the Straw Hat Pirates. The ninjas scatter and all attack the Straw Hats. Meanwhile, in Udon, Kid and Killer are tortured. They are hung upside down and lowered into a barrel of water. Queen then officially resumes the sumo match with a new added rule. As long as Luffy and Hio remain in the ring, Kid and Killer will remain submerged underwater. Luffy demands Queen to come out into the ring, but he refuses. Back at the capital, Law confronts Hawkins at the prison looking for Beepo. However, Hawkins' devil fruit ability allows him to redirect damage to his prisoners. Therefore, Law would have to kill his own three subordinates before he could harm Hawkins. Sanji keeps fighting with Drake. However, Hiyori screams as she is attacked by ninjas, so Sanji decides to finish the battle quickly to go save her. He defeats Drake with his extra Hachis move, pummeling him with fiery kicks. He then goes to Hiyori's aid, but Zoro arrives first, taking her away to safety. Outside the prison, Big Mom finally arrives at the gate, ready to claim her red bean soup. Kinemon admits to Ashura that his alliance framed him for theft to turn him against the beast pirates. Although Ashura was originally hostile because Mount Adama has been destroyed, Kinemon deeply apologizes for his extreme measures as well as abandoning the country for the last 20 years. Forgiving him, Ashura asks Kinemon to follow him. At Udon, Big Mom forces her way through all three gates of the prison mine and appears, shocking everyone in the prison. She demands to be fed red bean soup, but Queen, who is very fond of the food, refuses, unwilling to share any with her. Queen uses his devil fruit power to transform into a Brachiosaurus. They quickly start to fight. Tama and Momonosuke stay behind at the gate due to it being too dangerous, but Kiku, who dons a disguise, goes inside with Chopper. After traveling through the entrance, they find Big Mom slamming Queen's head into the ground. Big Mom and Queen continue their fight. Queen attempts to stomp on Big Mom, but she manages to lift him and throw him down. She then picks up Queen and throws him into a rock wall, severely damaging the prison. This knocks over the beam, submerging Kid and Killer into water. They fall on the ground, saved from drowning. It also breaks Kawamatsu's cell. Prison guards attempt to contact Kaido in the executive tower, but Caribou stops him from doing so. He explains that the variant Denden Mushi used in Wano Country, known as Smart Tanishi, transmit very weak signals, so they require a boss Tanishi to transmit the signals. Raizo decides to go get the keys to free the other prisoners. Big Mom searches for red bean soup and finds a pot of it among the rubble. However, she opens it to find that it is empty, infuriating her. She intended to bring the pot back to Okobor Town as a thanks to its citizens for feeding her. She angrily attacks Luffy, who ate the pot earlier. She knocks him and Hyogoro near the edge of the ring. Luffy finally unleashes Ryuo and uses it to tear off their collars. They explode in the air. Big Mom then attacks Hyogoro, and Luffy attempts to use Ryo again to fight her off. Luffy recalls how he saw Rayleigh used Ryo. Back at Sabaudi Archipelago, Kami was fitted with an explosive slave collar as she was trafficked into slavery. However, Rayleigh used Ryo to remove the collar with a single hand. Back in present day, Luffy uses the same method in an attempt to repel Big Mom's attack. Luffy's defense fails, and Big Mom sends him and Hyogoro crashing into a wall. Luffy is unharmed, but Hyogoro was hit hard on the head. Hyogoro congratulates Luffy for successfully learning the technique before he collapses in Luffy's arms. Big Mom chases Luffy around and attacks him, chasing him into the ironwork section and breaking out many prisoners. Meanwhile, Queen gets up and hatches a plan to stop her. He expects that Big Mom will chase Luffy through all five labor camps of the prison before making her way back to the stone quarry. He sets up a trap by placing a pot of red bean soup as bait at the quarry. As expected, Big Mom chases Luffy back to the quarry and finds the red bean soup. However, Queen suddenly dives down from above and strikes Big Mom in the head. 
the head trauma makes her regain her memories. Immediately after Big Mom regains her memories, she collapses, falling asleep. Queen takes the chance to restrain her with pure sea stone cuffs and chains, injects her with tranquilizer, and ships her off to Onigashima to sea with most of the wardens on board, leaving only the minimum security guards at Uden. The guards continue to battle against Luffy. Luffy attempts to defeat them using Ryuo, but he struggles to do so. Babanuki orders the prisoners to fight Luffy. The prisoners do not want to battle him, but fear Kaido and Orochi should they join Luffy and break out. They accept that they have no hope of living a life of freedom again, so they obey and restrain Luffy. Daifugo shoots one of the prisoners with a flintlock, which immediately covers his skin with green patches and burns him. The disease also spreads to two other prisoners who touch him. Daifugo explains that he shot an excite bullet, which contained a contagious plague on it. He prepares to shoot another bullet at them, infecting them all. However, Kawamatsu calls from the sacred prison cell, which the other guards were told had a dangerous beast inside. Babanuki explains that the cell actually contained a member of the Nine Red Scabbards. When Kawamatsu was captured 13 years ago, Orochi sentenced him to be executed by feeding him poisoned fish. However, Kawamatsu never did die from eating the fish, so he has stayed alive in the cell ever since. Babanuki orders the guards to kill him. Kikunojo prepares to fight the guards off to save him, but Kawamatsu manages to fight them off by spitting sharp fish bones at their necks. Raizo sneaks through the executive tower in search of Kawamatsu's sword and keys to his cuffs. He finds them, but is caught by Solitaire, whose spider smile fruit allows her to use six swords. However, Raizo uses his jujutsu to create shadow forms of himself. Solitaire fought off the clones, allowing the real Raizo to get away. In his cell, Kawamatsu fights off the guards, attempting to kill him by spitting fish bones. Just then, Reizo jumps out the tower window and passes the key and sword to him. He unlocks his cuffs and uses his unique sword fighting style, the Kappa style. The prisoners immediately recognize them as the Nine Red Scabbards and are shocked to see that they are still alive after 20 years. Babanuki orders his men to attack them, but they are easily fought off. Then they start firing excite bullets at the prisoners, infecting many of them. Zoro and Hiyori walk through a leafy forest but are followed by a mysterious flute player. Suddenly the man shoots a blow dart at them. Zoro detects and hits the dart with his sword, then fights off the assailant. They believe he is Fukurokuju's assassin. Queen's ship takes Big Mom to Onigashima. Despite the tranquilizer shots, Big Mom wakes up briefly, asking for red bean soup, then falls back asleep. Back at Udon, Kid attempts to get out of his cuffs. Raizo throws them the keys, but Kid, only having one hand, asks Killer to help him unlock the cuffs. However, Killer just lies on the floor, laughing. Babanuki's men continue firing excite bullets at the prisoners. The bullet wounds form black skull marks, spreading green blotches all over the body. Prisoners affected suffer excruciating, burning pain, fever, and bleeding, and eventually become emaciated and zombie-like. The infected also touch the healthy prisoners, infecting them as well. Babanuki dubs the chemical weapon queen's masterpiece, the mummy virus. The infected prisoners blame the nine red scabbards, as well as Luffy, for putting them through the ordeal by rebelling. In response to this, Luffy hugs the infected prisoners, contracting the virus himself. Luffy calls out the weak-spirited prisoners for simply accepting the abuse from the beast pirates, then states he has a promise to fulfill, to make Wano country a place where the people never hunger again. He prompts the prisoners to either join him and liberate the country or continue to live a life of despair under Kaido's regime. Babanuki decides to try to kill all the prisoners at once using an excite shot, a cannonball containing 200 doses of the mummy virus. He places it in his elephant's trunk to fire, but Luffy walks up to him and ties a knot in the elephant's trunk. With the cannonball still inside, it detonates in Babanuki's body, knocking him out. With the last of his strength, Luffy orders his new followers to take out the vice wardens. Following his orders, the prisoners turn on and defeat Daifugo in solitaire. Eight days before the Onigashima raid, Luffy scores his first victory, liberating Udon's prisoner mine. Killer uses the keys and unlocks Kid's handcuffs. Kid goes to see Luffy, who lies on the ground. Luffy invites Kid into the alliance, but Kid refuses. He uses his devil fruit power to create an arm out of magnetic parts, then breaks the prison gate. He and Killer leave. Doji takes Kinemon and Inuarashi to a graveyard with several tombstones. Doji explains what had happened. Ten years after Odin's death, Doji's men have grown impatient for the Nine Red Scabbards to return. Not wanting to wait another ten years, they beg him to allow them to leave right away and take on Kaido at Onigashima. Doji objected to this, stating that they would be completely powerless against Kaido, so their deaths would be for nothing. 
One of the men explained the meaning of the word sunaki. It was an abbreviation of the sentence, Namae o sutero, chie o sutero, throw away your name and your wits. The phrase suggesting not worrying about the dangers and throwing themselves forward for their cause. Against Doji's command, they sailed out to Onigashima. As he warned, the soldiers were decimated by Kaido's crew and died in vain, after which they were buried at the graveyard. Back at present day, Doji and his men decide to join Kinemon's alliance to take down Kaido. Back at Udon, the prisoners start doubting Luffy for being a pirate like Kaido. They also doubt the prophecy and that the nine red scabbards truly returned from the past. Momonosuke hides with Luffy, who is resting in a cell while Chopper prepares a cure. Although Momonosuke is hesitant to appear in front of them, Luffy throws a boulder at him to chase him out into the open. Momonosuke is spotted by the prisoners and immediately recognized. The prisoners bow down to him and Momonosuke gives a speech calling them to help fight against Kaido. Now convinced that the nine red scabbards truly have returned, they join the cause to liberate Wano country and take down Orochi. Zoro and Hiyori are ambushed by Fukurukuju's group of ninjas. Although Zoro defeats most of the ninjas without difficulty, a stronger ninja, Fujin, stands in his way. Still, Zoro cuts down Fujin unharmed. He and Hiyori seek shelter at a house, where he plans to get the Shusui back to prepare for the Onigashima raid. Orochi berates Fukurakuju for allowing Zoro to get away. To appease him, Fukurakuju states that he managed to capture another criminal, Law, who was brutally tortured and chained to a wall. They set up wanted posters of all of the Straw Hats and their allies. Sanji and Shinobu find that they are both wanted in the entire country. They decide to sit on a rooftop where they plan their next moves. Now that most of their work in the flower capital is done, they decide that the next step would be to free the samurai allies who have been imprisoned by Orochi's guards. Sanji observes people creating sky ships, lantern-like balloons that are released into the sky during the fire festival. Back at Udon, Chopper finally creates a cure for the mummy virus. Luffy is cured first, then the other prisoners are also. Nami runs through the capital to find Bipo in the streets. Bipo shows her the rebellion flyer, where Yasui added two lines to the snake to change the rendezvous point. After Nami leaves, Bipo reveals what happened to Law. In exchange for Bipo's freedom, Law turned himself in to be arrested. After being beaten, Hawkins and Drake chained him to a wall and tortured him for information. Kanjuro visits Abisu town where he receives permission to bury Yasui's body in Kuri. Kanjuro remembers Yasui's sacrifice. Yasui gave up his life to save Kinemon's plans of liberation. He decides to bury his body on the grounds of Odin's grave. Meanwhile, Robin, Usopp, and Brook find out they are wanted throughout the entire country. Security checkpoints are set up, and officers check all passing people to make sure they are not the fugitives. To get past the security checkpoint, Robin and Usopp make face faults. They then sail down a river to Kuri. The rebels prepare for the upcoming Onigashima raid. At Kuri, Kinemon is shocked to see that Ashura has gathered ships to transport the rebels in the raid. Meanwhile, Luffy keeps trying to master Riwo by breaking rocks, but struggles. He also spars against Hyogoro, but is knocked back. In Ringo, Zoro confronts the sword thief of Oihagi Bridge. They quickly enter battle and Zoro gets the upper hand. The thief refuses to return the sword because it belonged to the great samurai Ryuma. They continue fighting, but the battle is broken up by Kawamatsu. The thief and Hiyori both recognize him and are shocked to see him. At Onigashima, Big Mom is taken to Kaido's mansion, where Kaido orders his men to remove her handcuffs. After this, they immediately begin to battle. Kaido and Big Mom continue their clash. Queen, afraid of the battle, looks for excuses to leave Onigashima. He receives a call from Babanuki, who tells him that his situation is okay. In reality, Babanuki has been Tama, who fed him a kibi dango after he was defeated. The prisoners, fully recovered from the mummy virus, praise Chopper for curing them and agreeing to fight for the rebellion. Surprisingly, Luffy is met with four Yakuza leaders who once ruled a region of Wano. Omasa of Udon, Tsunagoro of Hakumai, Cho of Ringo, and Yatape of Kibi are all willing to join Luffy's alliance. Meanwhile in Kibi, Kinemon finds out that Ashura has acquired the blueprints for Kaido's mansion. He receives news from Raizo that they have amassed an army of 3,500 men. The only remaining problem is that they do not have a supply of weapons for them, as possession of weapons was forbidden in the country. At Oihagi Bridge, Hiyori cries at the sight of Kawamatsu. She apologizes for abandoning him. Several years ago, 
Hiyori felt guilty that Kawamatsu was starving himself to feed her, so she ran away while he was asleep. When Kawamatsu woke up, he searched the flower capital for her, but to no avail. Basak at present day, he forgives her for running away, happy that she is alive. Suddenly, Jukimaru is ambushed by a group of bandits and is shot with a magnum. The bandits, angry that their weapons were stolen, attack them all in vengeance. Zoro and Kawamatsu fight them all off. Crying and wounded, Jukimaru decides to run away. Zoro chases Jukimaru, but he goes into an rundown doorway and disappears. Hiyori and Kawamatsu decide to walk together, but are attacked by another wave of bandits. Kawamatsu fights them off and explains what happened after he lost Hiyori. Thirteen years ago, after Hiyori ran away, he decided to leave to Ringo. Ringo was a region that was previously ruled by the daimyo Shimotsuki Ushimaru, who was with the company of a fox, Onimaru. However, when Orochi overthrew Odin, Ushimaru was killed and Ringo fell. Kawamatsu found a mass burial site with eternal graves. These corpses were buried in caskets and did not decompose due to the cold. They were marked by the deceased person's sword, which was said to contain the soul of the deceased. These swords became attractive to grave robbers, but the graveyard was guarded by the fox, Onimaru. Onimaru was initially hostile to Kawamatsu, but eventually warmed up to him. However, he became hostile again after he saw Kawamatsu taking the swords from the graves. Kawamatsu explained that the swords were to be used for the upcoming Onigashima raid. Given that the samurai in the swords will help their wielders in battle, Onimaru allowed him, helping him gather the other swords. Together, they would build a hideout to keep the swords, steal food from the capital to keep themselves fed, and fight off any grave robbers, taking their swords. Unfortunately, when Kawamatsu attempted to steal tofu one day, he fell into a trap and was arrested, being sent to the Udon prisoner mine. Back in present day, Kawamatsu goes to the place where Jukimaru disappeared and finds that it is the location where the swords were located. He contacts Kinemon and tells him that he has the supply of swords needed for the army. It is revealed that Jukimaru was the one who arranged the swords while Kawamatsu was gone, as he was actually Onimaru in his human form. He transforms back into his fox form and leaves, his duty fulfilled. Zoro tries to take back Shusui, but Hiyori asks him to leave it. Hiyori offers him a replacement sword, the Enma. This sword belonged to Odin himself and is the only sword to have ever successfully injured Kaido. Hayori explains that the Shusui is the sacred national treasure of Wano country, and that when it was stolen by Moria, the country was devastated. Zoro agrees to leave the Shusui behind in exchange for the Enma, and on the condition that he would be allowed to visit Ryuma's grave. At Rasetsu prison, Law manages to overpower Hawkins and cut him in half. Hawkins explains that he formed an alliance with Kid and Scratchman Apu. However, Apu was allied with Kaido all along, and when he met face to face with Kaido, Hawkins immediately submitted to him. However, Kid refused to join Kaido, was defeated, and was sent to the Udon prisoner mine. Finishing the story, Law cuts Hawkins down and walks free from the prison. At Udon, Luffy keeps training and attempt to learn Ryuo. The Yakuza leaders break into different groups to prepare. Hyogoro prepares the weapons, Cho transports the swords to the rendezvous point, Yatape leads the command unit, and Frankie's group work to maintain the ships. Kinemon explains the change in the rebellion flyer. The original snake symbol implied Habu Port in Hakumai, but with the two added strokes the snake resembles a lizard, implying Tokaj Port in Udon. Kinemon explains the situation stating that they have located seven out of nine of the nine red scabbards, still not being able to track down Denjiro. Scratchman Apu arrives in Wano country. He passes through the waterfall and goes through a hidden tunnel. He then goes up a gondola, leading him up to Hakumai. Apu brings the monster-like numbers, scaring the witnesses. They call Kaido at Onigashima, who has gotten past his differences with Big Mom. He declares a temporary alliance between the Beast Pirates and the Big Mom Pirates. Kawamatsu confirms to the Nine Red Scabbards that Hiyori was indeed alive. Then, Tama's grandfather, Tenguyama Hitetsu, gets back the sword that Luffy took from his house. Then, he takes out the Enma, the sword promised by Hiyori, which is granted to Zoro. Zoro tries out his new sword on a tree, but the sword ends up drawing more Riwo than necessary, creating an overly powerful slash cutting off a piece of the cliff. Hitetsu explains that the Enma is considered impossible to wield because it always uses excessive amounts of the wielder's Riwo. Still, Zoro still trains with the Enma on some bamboo stalks, Kinemon then plans out the battle. Despite having 4,000 men, they are still greatly outnumbered by Orochi and Kaido's troops of about 30,000 people. 
Luffy keeps attempting to learn Ryuo by pounding sheets of metal, but still struggles. Chopper decides that it is time to leave, so Luffy rides on Chopper's back to Kinemon's group. Just then, Kinemon receives a call from the Yakuza leaders that they have amassed a total of 400 people to fight in the Onigashima raid. One day remains before the raid, and Kinemon's group leaves to go to the port early. The Straw Hats stay behind by Yasui and Pedro's graves. Hitetsu seems amazed that Zoro is managing to tame the Enma. He reveals that the reason Zoro can use the sword is because the Wado, Ichimonji, and Enma were created by the same person, Shimotsuki Kozaburo. Zoro states that he will turn Enma into a black blade. Back at Udon, Babanuki calls Orochi and lies to him, stating that there was no trouble at Udon and the situation is under control. However, Orochi somehow reveals that he has the new information about the rendezvous point change and that Hiyori was alive. Luffy finally masters Ryuo by blasting a tree, and the curtains close on Wano Country Arc's second act. The levelly has come to an end, and the royal parties attending it have returned to their home countries. Neptune's family returns to Fishman Island accompanied by Garp, where he laments the tense and violent arguments that occurred during the levelly. However, Garp brings up a certain incident that occurred concerning Arabasta. Previously, news of the incident were spread by Morgans, head of the World Economy newspaper. Morgans was threatened by a Cypher Paul agent to keep the incident private, but Morgans refuses, beating the agent. However, he receives a call from Wapal of the Black Drum Kingdom. The news reached the officers of the Revolutionary Army at Kamabaka Kingdom, devastating the officers. Meanwhile, Kobe, who is on a Marine ship, calls X Drake in private, revealing that Drake was allied with the Marines all along, leading the Special Force Sword. To Kobe's shock, Drake informs him that Kaido and Big Mom have formed an alliance, and Cypher Paul agents have entered Wano Country. The final great revelation is revealed. During the levelly, the delegates have decided to abolish the Seven Warlords of the Sea System. The Seven Warlords were seven officially recognized pirates, but several members have lost this title. Crocodile, Moria, Doflamingo, and Law were all stripped of the title for committing heinous actions, and Jinbi and Teach declared their resignation from the system. During the levelly, Kings Nefertari Cobra and Riku Doldo III, two powerful monarchs whose countries have been damaged by warlords, advocated for the abolition of the system. This motion won the majority, and the warlords were officially disbanded. The former warlords are now fugitive pirates and are being pursued by the marines. Buggy, Edward Weevil, Dracul Mihawk, and Boa Hancock are surrounded by marine soldiers, their legal immunity being revoked. The former warlords prepare to battle the marines, ek pet for Buggy who plans to flee while his underlings keep the marine busy. At the new marine headquarters, Fleet Admiral Sakazuki discusses the seven warlords' dissolution with Fujitora. Although Sakazuki expresses disagreement with the choice, he decides he cannot change the decision. When discussing Kaido's situation in Wano country, they end up mentioning a certain rocks. The other marine officers hold a meeting and the name rocks also comes up. Sengoku decides to tell the story of the Rocks Pirates. The Rocks Pirates were a group of extremely violent pirates who even fought each other on board the ship. Among the crew were some of the most dangerous pirates today, including Whitebeard, Kaido, Big Mom, and Shiki. However, 38 years ago in what would be known as the God Valley Incident, Garp joined forces with the Roger Pirates and defeated the Rocks Pirates, protecting endangered world nobles. Since the incident, the world government attempted to remove all traces of the incident, erasing Rock's name from history and removing the island of God Valley from all maps. Strangely, both Roger and Rock's have the mysterious initial D in their name. Brand New announces the new bounties of the four emperors, Teach, Shanks, Big Mom, and Kaido, all of which have bounties in the billions. Just then, Sakazuki enters, stating that the Marines will not intervene in Wano country due to a lack of resources. Before Sengoku leaves, he mentions Odin, revealing Odin was a member of the Roger Pirates. 25 years ago, the Roger Pirates had a drunken feast at their ship. Kozuki Odin expressed his appreciation for being able to join Goldie Roger on his voyage. Silver's Rayleigh, Shanks, and Buggy offered to help him in his quest to open Wano Country's borders, but Odin replied that he should handle this alone. He was confident that with the help of his retainers, he could become Shogun and accomplish his goal. In the present day, Act 3 of the Wano Country arc begins. In Port Habu in Hakumai, Orochi boards a ship headed for the Fire Festival in Onigashima. He drinks heavily in celebration. The people in the flower capital also celebrate passionately. Meanwhile, at the rendezvous point, Tokaj Port, Momonosuke and the Scabbards find out that not only it is storming heavily, but their ships and allies are nowhere to be seen. 
and Kinemon desperately tries calling their allies on the Tanishi. However, he cannot reach any of them, and his pleas quickly become desperate before Ashura Doji silences him. Rewinding back to two days before the Fire Festival, the Alliance members move to conclude their preparations and head for Port Tokaj. After overseeing the completion of the ship restoration in Port Itachi, Frankie and Usopp headed to Amigasa Village to reunite with their crew, leaving the ships in the care of the Musketeers and Wano Carpenters. In the prisoner mine, Hiogoro oversaw the prisoners collecting all the weapons they could find, while Cho acquired the weapons stored in Ringo. Jibuemon talked with some allies about making sure they all moved to Port Tokaj discreetly, and they agreed even though Orochi and many of his officials would have already left for Onigashima. In Amigasa Village, Hitetsu gave the Straw Hat some Kabuto armor, and Luffy, Chopper, and Brook were excited to don it. Sanji asks Zoro why he does not want to wear the armor, to which he replies the armor will slow him down. Then he finally taunts Zoro with his higher bounty, causing Zoro to unleash Enma. Both of them had a fight before getting whacked by Nami. Eventually, Nami and Robin discussed with Carrot, Wanda, Shishilian, Consulat, and Giovanni about the full moon that would be present during the final battle and they hoped that the minks could use Sulong, and that Nekamamushi and the Guardians would arrive on time. Luffy looked out toward the ocean, noting that Jimbei had not yet arrived despite Big Mom being here. After finding out what had happened with Jimbei, Zoro assured Luffy that the fish man would come if he was still alive. In Okabor town, however, the citizens were confronted by Hulletum, who revealed that the Paradise Farm was still being stolen from, despite him burning down the Mount Adam of Thieves hideout. The citizens deduced that the nine red scabbards had likely stolen the food if the reports of their return were accurate, though decided to not say a word about it. Tsuru then came and told Holetum that she would guide him to the food, as she wanted to help her husband Kinemon and the Kazuki family's plan. However, the other citizens stopped her by claiming aloud that they had eaten the stolen food, shocking her and angering Holetum. Back again, in the present at Tokaj port, as the scabbards start to lose hope of their allies showing up, Inuarashi finds a boat that looks intact and prepares to sail out to Onigashima alone. Momonosuke says that they should change the date of their rendezvous, and Shinobu attempts to stop Kinemon and the rest of the scabbards from going towards Onigashima, however, Kinemon declines. On Onigashima, Orochi parties as he thinks about an incident that occurred the previous day. The day before, Orochi decided to sabotage the operation before it could happen. He bombed the Thousand Sunny as well as all bridges leading to the port. He also destroys the port itself. The nine red scabbards decide that they must sail out to Onigashima, with or without their allies. They prepare to go. They remember Odin's legacy. A delinquent from a young age, Odin committed several atrocious acts, such as starting what would be known as the Harem War, where he clashed with several other samurai whose women he stole. When he turned 18, he was disavowed from his father. The future nine red scabbards also steal to survive. Kinemon attempts to steal a baby boar, and Denjiro swindles a merchant for a pot. However, the baby boar's parent, a giant dubbed the Mountain God, goes on a rampage around town in search of its child. Odin intervenes, asking Kinemon for the boar back. Upon hearing that the Mountain God swallowed Tsurujo, Kinemon decides to battle it head-on. Despite having stabbed the beast, Kinemon is knocked back into the ground and defeated. Odin then appears and uses his sword, slicing the beast cleanly in half. Although there were no casualties from the incident, a quarter of the town was destroyed by the mountain god. Odin is blamed for the incident, and he receives the notice of disavowal from his father, exiling him from the capital. Kinemon and Denjiro decide to follow and serve him. Odin stays at Hakumai and meets the region's daimyo, Yasuye, and his servant, Orochi. He ends up destroying the room he stays in, steals money from the safe, and then leaves to travel around the country. He plans to end up at Kuri, the country's lawless region, where he would restore order to the region. He would find followers during his journeys. He met young siblings Izu and Kikunojo in Ringo, Kanjuro in Kibi, and mountain bandit Raizo in Udon. However, while in Kuri, he would come face to face with bandit Ashura Doji and start a battle. Odin met with Ashura Doji, the bandit leader of the lawless part of town, Kuri. They quickly got into a sword fight, which appeared to be at a standstill. However, by the time Odin's followers came to his aid, he had already emerged victorious and defeated Ashura. Odin would take him in as one of his followers. After liberating Kuri from Ashura, Odin would start building structures and towns in the area, 
Turning what was once an uncivilized, rough terrain into an officially recognized province of Wano country, with Odin as its first daimyo and his followers as his official retainers. Sukiyaki repealed his disavowal and accepted him as his son again. The Kazuki family also formed an alliance with the Mink tribe. Inuarashi, Nekomamushi, and Kawamatsu washed ashore as children, but the people, mistaking them for monsters, attempted to burn them at the stake. Odin arrived just in time to rescue them. After welcoming them into his palace and feeding them Odin stew, they explained that their ship sunk and they washed ashore. Odin accepted them into the country, and they became Odin's loyal retainers like the others. Odin's followers then raided Hakumai and attempted to steal money from Yasui, but they were all captured and brought to the daimyo. Surprisingly, Yasui allows them to keep the money they stole, and also faithfully gave his own savings. Odin and his followers then used the money to pay for books and education, learned proper manners, and trained to become strong warriors. Although they originally gained a reputation of being ruffians, they eventually became respected, high-class individuals. The God Valley incident occurred, leading to the defeat and dissolution of the Rock's pirates. Although their captain was killed, the crew split up and formed their own pirate crews. Among these powerful pirates was Edward Newgate, who became known as Whitebeard. After their ship sunk, they washed ashore onto the beaches of Wano country. Odin went to the shore and instantly started a battle with Whitebeard, but was instantly defeated. Odin asked Whitebeard to let him join his crew, but he refuses, stating that he was not a loyal person and would therefore not be good at serving someone else. Kinemon was also opposed to Odin setting sail because he had his duties as a daimyo. Two weeks passed and Whitebeard's men finished repairing his ship, the Moby Dick. Whitebeard decided to set sail at night to prevent Odin from joining, but Odin snuck out and nevertheless attempted to board the ship. He held onto a chain tied to the ship's mast and was carried along with the ship. Izu pursued Odin and held on to him, trying to prevent him from setting sail. Marco rescued Izu from the water and carried him on board. Odin, however, was not rescued and was dragged through the rough waters, crashing into rocks along the way. Whitebeard promised Odin that he would be allowed into the crew if he held onto the chain for three days. Odin accepted the challenge as he rode down the waterfall, got eaten by a fish, and was dragged through icy waters. Three days passed and one hour remained. Odin held onto the chain strongly, but his body was greatly swollen from water collision. However, he heard the screams of a woman being harassed on a nearby island, Amatsuki Toki. Odin let go of the chain, swam to the island, and scared off the miscreants. Toki took care of Odin as he recovered from his swelling. Toki explained that she dreamed of going to Wano country. However, the next day they are confronted by the thugs from earlier, the Takatopus pirates led by their captain Karma. However, Whitebeard suddenly appeared and knocked out Karma with a single hit. The other thugs were scared off at the sight of an emperor. Since Odin gave up his ambition to save a woman, Whitebeard allowed Odin onto his ship. Izu, Toki, Inuarashi, and Nekomamushi were also accepted in. Odin would prove to be one of the most violently powerful members of the crew, as he sunk an enemy ship before his crew got the chance to plunder it. Traveling across several distant lands, he recorded all his adventures in his journal. Odin got close with Toki, who explained that her parents were born in Wano country, so she wanted to visit the country. Eventually, during Odin's second year in the crew, they had a child and named him Momonosuke. He became a wanted pirate overseas, and when Whitebeard decided to segment his crew into divisions, Odin became the commander of the second division. Back at Wano country, the shogun Sukiyaki falls critically ill and had to select an heir. Since Odin was absent, he decided to appoint Kurozumi Orochi as his proxy. Meanwhile, the Roger pirates were informed about a new samurai from Wano working under Whitebeard. Roger decided that he wanted to meet the samurai himself. Orochi became Odin's proxy as he was at sea, but the other daimyos suspected him because he was a member of the Kurozumi family. Orochi's past is revealed. In his childhood, he and his family became hunted because of what his grandfather did. Orochi hid away in the forest and found a desolate cabin. Inside, there was an old man and woman, Semimaru and Higurashi. Higurashi explained the truth about Orochi's grandfather. Since the Kozuki shogun was infertile, daimyos from the Shimotsuki, Kurozumi, Uzuki, Amatsuki, and Fujetsu families all fought to be the next heir. Orochi's grandfather attempted to take over by assassinating the other daimyos, but the Kozuki shogun finally managed to give birth to an heir, Sukiyaki. The assassination plot was exposed. Orochi's grandfather committed suicide, and the people grew to despise the Kurozumi name. Orochi deduced that all his miseries stemmed from Sukiyaki's being born, 
and that he would have become shogun if Sukiyaki was not born. Higurashi revealed she was also a member of the Kurozumi family and that she had the power to transform into other people. She gave Orochi a devil fruit, allowing him to transform into an eight-headed serpent. Orochi plotted to usurp the throne. Orochi needed to collect funding to buy weapons. He stole money from Yasui while working undercover as a servant and asked Odin for loans without paying him back. Higurashi then disguised herself as Odin to convince the shogun to let Orochi into the palace, where he became the shogun's faithful servant. Years later, Higurashi disguised herself as Sukiyaki, pretended to fall ill and spread news that Sukiyaki died of the illness, allowing Orochi to rise to power. Overseas, Odin reached his fourth year under the Whitebeard Pirates, giving birth to another child, Hiyori. They approached an island being plundered by Gold Roger. Odin picked a fight with Roger and was defeated, but Whitebeard appeared and they began to clash. And their crews also started battling each other. The battle lasted for a total of three days, after which a ceasefire ended the battle. A gift exchange was carried out on the fourth day, and Shanks and Buggy appeared frightened by Teach, who had allegedly never slept in his life. Roger meets with Whitebeard and Odin, amazed that Odin could read a poneglyph. Roger originally thought that he had reached the end of the Grand Line on Lodestar Island, but since his log pose stopped working on the island, he deduced that there was a final island after that. He heard that the location of the final island was written in the poneglyphs. Roger asked to borrow Odin for a year to reach the final island. Whitebeard originally refused, but Odin agreed, determined to find the final island of the Grand Line. He decided to part ways with Whitebeard and join the Roger pirates with Toki and his baby children. Izu stayed with Whitebeard while Inuarashi and Nekomamushi snuck on board Roger's ship as stowaways. The Roger pirates stopped at Jaya, and Odin stole food from the stores, unaware that it was a lawless town filled with violent criminals. The townspeople retaliated against Odin and blew him up with a grenade, but Odin managed to fight them off. At the end of the day, Odin used the stolen ingredients to make Odin stew for his crew, who enjoyed the dish. Roger contracted a terminal illness and knew he had under a year to live. Still, his crew kept going with their adventures, merrily singing Bink's sake along the way to a sky island. The Roger pirates went up a knock-up stream, entered Sky Pia, and found the ancient golden city of Shandora. There they found its national treasure, the Belfry Bell as well as a poneglyph. The poneglyph told of a certain weapon called Poseidon located in Fishman Island. They decided not to steal the bell, but left behind a carved message stating that Roger had reached a sky island. They continued on their travels and left Sky Pia, using an octopus balloon to get the ship down safely. There was a road poneglyph in both Zoo and Wano country, and Roger had already gotten a copy of another poneglyph belonging to Big Mom, so the Roger pirates had already located three of the four poneglyphs needed to find the final island. They set sail for Water 7, where they suspected the remaining poneglyph is located, where they met Tom, their ship's creator. They continued their adventure to the Red Line, finding the Sabaody Archipelago and under the sea, Fishman Island. Its king, Neptune, explains that the weapon Poseidon is a certain mermaid born every several hundred years with the ability to control sea kings. Shiarli, the kingdom's fortune teller, states that this mermaid would be born in ten years. Roger decided to continue on his journey, his crew still cheerfully singing Bink's sake. Odin's adventure with the Roger pirates led him back to his homeland, Wano country, since there was a road poneglyph there. However, Toki fell ill from the fatigue from several years of adventure with Odin, so Odin was forced to leave her and the children in Wano. Inuarashi and Nekomamushi also decided to stay behind. Odin was also willing to stay, but Toki insisted that Odin sail with the Roger pirates. As he set sail once again, he noticed a slight change in Wano country. Meanwhile, Orochi and Higurashi expressed disappointment that the Kozuki family now had a viable heir after Odin. The Roger pirates traveled to Zoo, where the last remaining road poneglyph was located. They were greeted by its duke, Hitsugisu Khan, who was thankful that Inuarashi and Nekomamushi were both alive. A young Pedro also asked to join the pirate crew. Roger denied him due to his age, but stated that his time would come. The Roger pirates now had all the information they needed to find the final island, but Buggy fell ill with a high fever just before the trip. He and Shanks had to stay behind while the others left. Before Roger left, he gave Shanks his iconic straw hat. News spread across the world that the Roger pirates successfully conquered the entire Grand Line, being the first pirate king in history. Finding the island, Roger thanked a certain joy boy who left him the treasure. 
Roger gave the island untouched for centuries the name Laugh Tale. Roger became the first ever pirate king, after which he went back to the island to pick up Shanks and Buggy. However, he knew that his days were ending as he was dying from a terminal illness. The Marines, including Garp, as well as other pirates, started fighting more aggressively to take Roger down, so he decided to disband his crew. He recalls his times in Fishman Island, where he heard voices from the sea creatures saying that there will be a new king succeeding Roger. He decided to leave his crew behind at an island, where his first mate Rayleigh took the ship to take the other crew members home. Rayleigh first took Odin back to Wano country. Odin reunited with his wife and children, and the citizens were happy to see him return. He had become a celebrity since his wife helped the town after she recovered. Odin also met his retainers, except for Ashura and Dinjiro. Ashura had returned to being a mountain bandit, and Dinjiro wandered around the country borrowing money. Kinemon revealed what happened to the country while Odin was gone. Since Sukiyaki died of an illness, Orochi became the temporary shogun. Backed up by a powerful pirate, Kaido, Orochi had almost absolute power and built several weapons factories operated with slavery. After a family was executed by Orochi, the nine red scabbards protested the cruelty by going to Orochi's palace. However, while they were away, Kaido's men invaded Kinemon's palace and attempted to kill Momonosuke. Although the enemies were fought off, Toki was shot in the leg with an arrow protecting his child. Angry that his family was threatened and hurt by Orochi, Odin decides to confront him. He tells the others to watch over Kuri while he is gone. Against the advice of his retainers, Odin decided to go to the flower capital to confront Orochi. Odin broke into the palace and attempted to attack him, but Semimaru used his devil fruit ability to create a barrier protecting Orochi. Higurashi, who was nearby, revealed that she too had a devil fruit ability, which allowed her to disguise herself as Sukiyaki and hand the throne to Orochi. The real Sukiyaki never intended to give the throne to Orochi, and did not die from illness like how the news said he did. Citizens outside cheered on Odin to save the country, but they were struck with poisoned arrows that rained down from the sky. Odin reclaimed the throne, but every week he stripped down naked in the courtyard and danced like a fool, singing about Odin's stew. For this weird behavior, the citizens started believing him to be a fool and stopped respecting him. The children also made fun of him. Odin did not mind the ridicule, but found in the newspaper that Roger had been executed. Overseas, Whitebeard also receives the news, reflecting on the last time they met, where Roger told him all about the mysterious Will of D. Previously, Roger was taken to his birthplace, Logetown, to be executed by impalement. Duflamingo, Buggy, Shanks, Mihawk, Crocodile, Moria, and Dragon all witnessed the event. In his last moments, one person asked Roger where his treasure was. As his final words, Roger said that he hid the treasure for others to find. The executioners impaled Roger, ending the life of the first ever pirate king. Odin went to the beach to mourn. Because Roger told his crew not to cry for him, Odin laughed in tears to mourn his death. Five years passed since Odin's return to Wano country, and nothing much had changed. He had garnered a reputation of being the silly lord for his naked dances, but the other daimyos and his retainers supported him unconditionally. However, Orochi made his move. He wanted to start building weapon factories in Kuri to transform the country into the leader of the weapons industry. Orochi captured Hyogoro, who refused to serve him, and sent him to prison. Those who attempted to aid Hyogoro, including his wife, were shot. Upon hearing the news, Odin decided that Orochi had become a great threat and must be stopped. Because of their unwavering loyalty to the country, Odin's retainers were named the Nine Red Scabbards. Kaido's men were strangely prepared for the attack, almost as if there was a spy within Odin's retainers. The Nine Red Scabbards faced off against hundreds of the beast pirates as well as Kaido himself in his dragon form. Kaido revealed that the promises Orochi made to Odin were entirely a lie. The battle begins, and despite being greatly outnumbered, the Nine Red Scabbards started strong fighting off the beast's pirates. While Odin's men faced off, Toki watched over Momonosuke and Hiyori back in Kuri, pressured by Yasui to keep them safe at all costs. To the disappointment of Kaido king and queen, Odin and his retainers fought strongly against Kaido's men, even having Shinobu join them. Kaido decided to intervene personally with his Bolo Breath attack, but Odin remained unharmed by the attack. The two fought each other one-on-one -on -one while Odin's retainers battled king and queen. Kaido got the upper hand, knocking Odin into the fiery ground below. Odin got up, ready to face him again. He coated his swords with Ryuo and leaps toward Kaido. Although Kaido's flames nearly knock him back down, 
Through sheer willpower, he braves the flames and slashes into Kaido's body, being the first person to ever cut Kaido. He prepares to finish off Kaido while he is in his human form. However, Higurashi disguised herself as Momonosuke, while a beast's pirate held her at knife point. This distracted Odin just enough for Kaido to critically wound him off guard. Ashura and Kinemon attempted to aid him, but were defeated by king and queen. Odin collapsed, earning victory for the beast's pirates. The fires set during the battle raged through the Udon forest for five days, until the rain finally put it out. Odin and the nine red scabbards were all jailed in the flower capital, with only Shinobu being spared. Previously, Odin denied allegiance to her so that she would not be arrested with the others. Eventually, the nine red scabbards verdict was released, and they would be executed by boiling in three days. Three days passed and the day of the execution arrived. The public event became a big spectacle since execution by boiling was rare. As Odin walks the plank into the pot, one of the executioners slipped on oil, fell into the pot, and suffered an excruciating death. Just before Odin entered the pot, he suggested a wager to Orochi. If he and his retainers could survive a set amount of time in the pot, they would be set free. Although Orochi initially scoffed at Odin's suggestion, Kaido accepted the challenge, agreeing to release the retainers if they survived one hour in the pot. Odin entered the pot, already being singed by the boiling oil. The other retainers run on the plank to also get in, but Odin lifts the plank up, allowing his retainers to sit safe from the boiling oil. Kaido allowed him to do this since they were technically in the pot, Less than a minute passed and Odin already struggled to lift the plank. It forced Odin to stand on the bottom of the pot, and his veins burst from the pressure. Shinobu watched the event from the sidelines and attacked a man who called Odin a silly lord. She publicly called out the oppressive shogun Orochi. While in the pot, Odin reflected on what Orochi told him back at the palace. Orochi revealed that he held an immense hatred for Wano country for humiliating his family. Since his grandfather's assassination plans were exposed and he committed seppuku, the remaining members of the Kurozumi family were hunted down, beaten and killed by the other people. He intended to destroy the country through his oppressive regime as an act of vengeance for his family's life of suffering. Shinobu reveals more, as she was hiding in the ceiling when it happened. Orochi kidnapped hundreds of citizens meant as tributes to Kaido. At that point, Orochi offered Odin a bargain. Orochi would cease the kidnappings, and he and Kaido would leave Wano country after five years. In exchange, Odin had to dance naked in the flower capital every week while being humiliated by Orochi. Odin decided he had no choice as he had no chance against Kaido. Shinobu finishes her story, stating that Odin's naked dances were in an effort to release the kidnapped citizens. Although he was not appreciated then, the citizens witnessing the execution were touched by Odin's sacrifices. The truth about Odin's sacrifices are revealed to the public, and feeling bad for mocking him over the years, they rush to the execution site to cheer him on, hoping for his survival. However, Odin knows that he will not survive the execution, so he tells his retainers to open up the country in his name. Meanwhile, Fukurokuju confronts Shinobu for telling everyone the truth, but Shinobu denounces the Orochi Oniwabanshu and pledges loyalty to the Nine Red Scabbards. Thirty minutes passed and Odin still stood strong, so Orochi ordered his men to further increase the temperature. Ten minutes remained and Orochi became increasingly frustrated that Odin had not yet died. Through pure willpower, Odin pushed through the final ten minutes and completed the challenge. Despite this, Orochi decided to break his promises, and the firing squad pointed their guns on Odin anyway. After telling his retainers to open up the country for him, he threw the plank away from the execution area, allowing his retainers to flee to Kuri. They remembered their happy times with Odin as they tearfully ran away. Kaido mentioned that he killed Higurashi, but then took out his pistol and shot Odin in the head. His final words, Odin wouldn't be Odin, was cut off, but the townspeople completed his sentence with, if it wasn't boiled. News of Odin's death spread to Toki, who reflected on her final moments with Odin. Before he left to confront Kaido, Odin entrusted Toki with a scroll to be opened if he died in the battle. The scroll prophesied that in 20 years, someone would arrive to save Wano country. Pursued by beast pirates, the nine red scabbards ran through the forest to escape back to Odin's castle. Ashura and Denjiro were forced to stay behind to battle the beast pirates. Kaido's men fired flaming arrows at Odin's castle, setting it ablaze with Toki, Momonosuke, and Hiyori still inside. Momonosuke reflected on his time with Odin. As the Roger pirates floated down from Skypiea, they got a view of the ocean from above. Hayori also remembered when Odin listened to her playing the shamisen. Hayori learned the song Moon Princess. 
Odin joked that the song should be played at his funeral, frightening Hiyori. Kaido entered the castle looking to kill Momonosuke. He confronted Momonosuke, but since he was too cowardly to cooperate, he lost interest, leaving him to die in the mansion. He transforms into his dragon form and leaves. Most of the nine red scabbards made it to the castle, except for Ashura and Denjiro. Toki transported the nine red scabbards along with Momonosuke 20 years into the future. She entrusted Hiyori to be raised by Kawamatsu while she rode away to Bakura town. At the city gate, she announced the prophecy given to her by Odin to the crowd just before she was shot down by an enemy sniper. Orochi took a bath and complained about it being too cold, despite the water being scalding hot. He expressed his frustration that Odin's retainers had not been caught. Meanwhile, Odin's remaining followers were devastated by the deaths. Ashura, who survived the encounter in the forest with injuries, reflected on the prophecy given by Toki just before her death. Kawamatsu attempted to cheer up a grieving Hiyori, but to no avail. Denjiro had a meltdown while hidden in a secluded wooden cabin. In the end, this transformed him into a cold and cynical person under the new name, Kiyoshiro. He created a new Yakuza group and very begrudgingly pledged allegiance to Orochi to work undercover. At night, he became the infamous thief Ushimitsu Kozo. Eventually, Hiyori ran away out of guilt for Kawamatsu. She showed up at the brothel owned by Kiyoshiro, who immediately recognized her. Kiyoshiro took her into the brothel and raised her, transforming her into an oiran by the name of Komurasaki. She was to carry fake blood at all times so she could fake her death when needed. Twenty years nearly passed and the fire festival was fast approaching. Paranoid of the Nine Red Scabbard's return, Orochi secures the country. He mentions a spy among them that was allied with Kaido the entire time. This unknown spy was a member of the Kurazumi family. He was originally part of a theater troupe, but his parents were killed in front of him. The spy met with Orochi and Higurashi, who tasked him with working undercover as one of Odin's retainers. The retainers who were transported to the future attempted to sail out to Zoo, but their ship wrecked in stormy waters, and Raizo got separated from the group. Then, in Dressrosa, Momonosuke boarded on the wrong ship and also got separated. Kanjuro sacrificed himself there and allowed himself to get captured, allowing Kinemon to escape Dressrosa and pursue the ship to Punk Hazard. Unfortunately, he encountered Law, who cut him into pieces. He would be reassembled and reunited with the others thanks to the Straw Hat Pirates' efforts. They formed the Ninja Pirate Mink Samurai Alliance to take down Kaido and gathered an impressive army to battle in Onigashima. None of the people who promised to arrive at Tokaj Port arrive, not even Luffy. The Nine Red Scabbards realize that since they took over Udon, Kaido's forces will be informed of their presence soon. So they have no choice but to set sail for Onigashima immediately, getting on a small rowboat to traverse the stormy waters. This marks the third time that their plans have been leaked to Kaido's forces. Kinemon deduces that there must be a spy among Odin's retainers. Kaido hinted at a spy before, but Kinemon did not believe him until now. Kanjuro makes the shocking revelation that he was the traitor. Being hunted for being a member of the Kurozumi family his whole life, he decided to infiltrate Odin's retainers, sending confidential information to Orochi. Back in Zoo, he told Jack that Raizo was located there, and he told Orochi about the new rendezvous point given by Yasui. Orochi sabotaged the mission by bombing all connecting bridges, as well as the Thousand Sunny. Now aware of the Nine Red Scabbard's whereabouts, Kaido's battleships are all lined up, ready to sink their rowboat. Kinemon cuts down Kanjuro, only to reveal that it is only a drawing of him. The real Kanjuro is still at the port. He restrains Shinobu with drawn snakes and captures Momonosuke. Since Kanjuro was not on the ship, the beast's pirates bombard it with cannonballs. The Straw Hats finally appear, having managed to repair the Thousand Sunny in time. The Thousand Sunny strikes the enemy ships with cannonballs. Law's submarine also appears from underwater, and so does Kid's ship from the opposite side. The three captains prepare to battle against the enemy forces. Although the arrival of the Straw Hat Pirates, Heart Pirates, and Kid Pirates was unexpected, the Beast Pirates are still confident as they fire their cannons. Usopp and Zoro repel the attack. Meanwhile, back at Tokaj Port, Kanjuro is surprised to see the pirates being present there, having reported to Orochi about the changes of Kinemon's plan. Previously, Two gifters bombed the Thousand Sunny on Orochi's orders. The Straw Hats, who were located in Amigasa Village, heard the explosion at the coast. Luckily, the ship was built out of a durable wood and was unharmed by the explosion. However, the sails were burned and had to be repaired. 
The gifters then reveal how they prevented the rest of the Allies from getting to Tokage port. They bombed the ships docked at the port, as well as all connecting bridges. The gifters also reveal that the Beast Pirates have formed an alliance with the Big Mom Pirates. Feeling satisfied, they decided to keep firing their cannons. Luffy, Law, and Kid board the enemy ship. They get into a disagreement over who should destroy the ship. The three captains together go on to destroy the ship. Luffy defeats the Eagle Gifter, and Law takes out the Butterfly Gifter. Soon, Kiyoshiro and his family arrive on the ship, supposedly to take down the Allied ships. However, he instead decide to slash the Beast's pirate's ship, cutting it in half and sinking it. Kyoshiro pledges allegiance to the Kazuki family, even mentioning the Mountain God incident caused by Kinemon. He reveals that he is Denjiro, and he has been working undercover for Orochi for the last 20 years. He also explains that he freed 1,200 prisoners from the flower capital, all of whom were willing to join the alliance. Then Kyoshiro explains that Kinemon misunderstood the new flyer given by Yasue. What the lines really meant was to remove the middle syllables of Habuminado, Habuport, getting Hato, Wharf. The correct rendezvous point was at the wharf of Habuport all along. Kanjuro deliberately misled Kinemon's group so they would go to the wrong port. Furthermore, although Orochi bombed the connecting bridges between regions, the Allied forces had already crossed the bridge before then. Their ships were safely hidden away at the Habu Wharf. The Allied fleet set sail for Onigashima. Kinemon laments his error but joins the Alliance, ready to battle. Kanjuro laments having let the Alliance get away but attempts to escape with Momonosuke by drawing a crane. The drawing is surprisingly good, as he had only pretended to be a bad artist. Although Kawamatsu swims back to shore to confront him, Kanjuro manages to get away, flying away with Momonosuke. Luffy and Kid sink another enemy ship, but see them flying away. Usopp attempts to snipe down Kanjuro, but he deflects the attack. Sanji also joins in, but Kanjuro uses a special technique to repel him. He uses his hair to create an ink cloud which rains arrows of ink below. The arrows strike Sanji, as well as the allies and their ships. The Straw Hats attempt to evade the barrage of arrows. Kanjuro revels in the anguish of the allies. Momonosuke is initially too afraid due to the height, but remembers Luffy encouraging him back in Zoo. He also remembers the speech he gave to the prisoners back in Udon that earned the loyalty of the prisoners. With this courage, he yells out to the allies, telling them not to worry about him and to focus on the invasion, stating he could escape on his own. An enemy ship that fled returns and attacks the Allied fleet with a long-range cannon. The ship is too far away for Luffy's ship to fire at. However, Jimbei makes his appearance from underwater, destroying the ship with Fishman Karate. He decides to officially join the Straw Hat Pirates as the helmsman. The Straw Hats are happy to welcome Jimbei into their crew. Jimbei parted ways with the Sun Pirates after they helped the Straw Hats escape Tato Land. He remembers when he first met Luffy at Impel Down, as well as when he saved Luffy from Akainu during the Summit War. After the war, Jimbei was the one who helped him restore his will again after he lost his brother. He reunited with Luffy on Fishman Island, where he gave him a life-saving blood transfusion. He decided to leave the Big Mom Pirates so he could serve Luffy. In present day, he takes the helm and begins steering. The Allied fleet starts to near Onigashima. Shishilian leads the Minx and Hyogoro leads the Samurai. The Allies gather in a circle on Law's submarine and Kinemon discusses the plan. Onigashima is an island surrounded on all sides by mountains except for a single passage at the front, which is guarded at a Tori gate. The castle, shaped like a skull, has a back entrance that could be entered, being less heavily guarded than the front entrance. The Allies would enter the front gate, use the mountain paths to reach the back entrance, and crash Kaido's banquet to assassinate him. Law proposes a better plan. Luffy and Kid would burst through the front gate as decoys. A second decoy would be sent around the mountain paths to the back entrance. The other allies would sneak in by water with Law's submarine, then be teleported into the island with Law's ability. Kinemon and Denjiro would each lead a decoy group going around the castle. The Straw Hats stop by an enemy fortress just in front of Onigashima, where the Itsutori Gate is located. The Thousand Sunny attaches its anchor to the gate before the Straw Hats set foot onto the island. All of them, except for Nami, Usopp, and Chopper, decimate the enemy troops. The Allies continue to discuss their plans on getting past the front gate when they notice the Straw Hats are missing. They realize that they have already taken over the Tori Gate, despite it being heavily armed. At Kaido's mansion, the Beast Pirates throw a raucous banquet in the dining hall. Orochi mingles with the women. Fukuro Kuju hides in the shadows, and Queen eats Oshiruko ravenously. Kaido looks for his son, but instead the Toboropo arrive. 
Queen hosts a concert and performs his funk song, with Scratch Manapu as the DJ. They call out for the waiters, pleasures, gifters, and Shinuchi, but the Tobarapo do not respond to their call. Queen brushes this off and calls out other groups. Orochi watches the concert from above with Fukurokuju guarding him. Kaido grins at Orochi mischievously. Back at the concert venue, Queen reveals that the Charlotte family would be joining them for the fire festival this year. The Tobirapo also watch from a secluded location. They are introduced as X Drake, Sasaki, Page One, Ulti Who's Who, and Black Maria. They comment on Ulti's short temper, as well as how they were summoned to Onigashima. The Straw Hats raid the fortress for alcohol and make a toast together for their new helmsman. The nine red scabbards appear, happy that the Straw Hats have broken through the Beast's Pirate's first line of defense. The Allied fleet charges into Onigashima, and the Straw Hats put their mugs down, ready to join their allies in the raid. Kid and Luffy race to Onigashima, with Jinbei controlling the Thousand Sunny. Meanwhile, Raizo briefs the plan. Kid and Luffy would enter through the front gate as decoys, while Kinemon and Denjiro each lead another decoy group through the mountain path. Starting the plan, Kinemon sets sail while the Heart Pirates go underwater in their submarine. The Allies enter to find Onigashima vibrantly illuminated, with the guards at a banquet and unprepared for enemy attacks. Usopp knocks out the few intoxicated guards on lookout, allowing the others to safely disembark. However, they destroy their return ships, making it impossible for them to escape if they had to. They split up into their two decoy groups. Kinemon uses a devil fruit technique, Kinchan Gofukuten, to create a gate that gives disguises. Kid, Killer, and the Straw Hats walk through the gate, disguising them all as beasts pirates. Kinemon warns that if the disguises are damaged or removed, they will transform back into regular outfits. He makes his final remarks before going forward. Although Orochi believes that the nine red scabbards have been stopped, the raid on Onigashima officially begins. Kinemon leads the eastern forces while Denjiro leads the southern forces up the mountain paths. Kid decides to go his own way and barge into the island head on, and Luffy follows him with Zoro. They enter the party hall and find a raucous party being thrown. Although the Nine Red Scabbards are concerned, Law reassures them that it was part of the plan, as Luffy and Kid were meant to be the first decoys at the front gate. Kanjuro leads Momonosuke down a secret passageway to Orochi, but gets lost in its maze-like tunnels. Momonosuke sees a viable knife on the floor. Frankie reveals two new vehicles, a motorcycle called the Kurasai FRU-4 and a tank called the Brachio Tank Vai. They are disappointed that Luffy and Zoro went into the island on their own. They all get in the vehicles and ride up the mountain paths, except for Robin and Jimbei, who walk up the mountain. A masked figure watches Robin and Jimbei. Ulti throws another temper tantrum in front of the Tobarapo before they are finally summoned by Kaido. Meanwhile, Zoro attempts to blend in with the Beast Pirates, but one of the partygoers mocks the people of Okabori Town who could not afford to drink as lavishly as them. Angry, Zoro force-feeds the person alcohol until he faints. At the party, Luffy also sees Beast Pirates wastefully dumping Oshiruko on the floor. This angers him as he remembers when he fed Tama Oshiruko, who accepted it gratefully. The Tobirapo goes to see Kaido, unsure why they were summoned. King reveals that he is the one who summoned them, unhappy that Sasaki and Who's Who are attempting to take his spot as an all-star. The Tobirapo were told to wait because Kaido wanted them to meet Big Mom, who is still getting ready for the party. An officer and Flying Squirrel Smile user, Bao Huang, appears. She reveals that Kaido will make a surprise announcement sometime during the party. Kaido tells Sasaki and Who's Who to capture his escaped son, Yamato. He offers them a chance to become an all-star if they can bring him back safely. They accept the mission. Kid, who is in the party, attacks some of the partygoers and demands to see Kaido. Zoro also picks a fight with some of them, defeating them with fists and swords. Luffy, who is angry that the guests are dumping Oshiruko on each other, drinks some of the soup to avoid wasting it. When one of the partygoers kicks over a pot onto the floor, Luffy angrily uses a gear third attack to defeat him. The attack alerts the attention of the partygoers, who panic and retreat. Kid and Killer take advantage of the ruckus to advance. Meanwhile, Luffy tells Zoro what happened, who decides to join him. Queen watches them from above, disappointed that Luffy escaped the prisoner mine. Scratchman Apu notices and recognizes Luffy and Zoro, and he decides to play a song on his turnstable, while Luffy and Zoro continue to wreak havoc on the Beast Pirates. Queen realizes that Babanuki lied to him when he reported that Luffy and Kid were safely behind bars. Queen calls out to all the partygoers, offering a spot in the Tobarapo to the person who captures Luffy. 
Kid remembers when he met Apu and Hawkins. They formed an alliance together as three members of the worst generation. However, that was when Kaido jumped off a sky island and into Kid's lair. Kaido was upset that two members of the worst generation took down his supplier of smile fruits. Apu, who was allied with Kaido all along, helped capture Kid and imprison him. Luffy and Zoro battle several gifters, but Apu intervenes with his devil fruit ability. He strikes his chest, creating a sound wave that strikes Luffy like a punch. Another attack slices Zoro in the chest with an invisible force. Luffy is momentarily knocked out by Apu creating an explosion. Although they remove their disguises to fight better, Apu still defeats them, sending them flying into the air. Kid decides to intervene himself, using his devil fruit ability to attract the metal around him. He creates a gigantic metallic arm and uses the Punk Gibson attack to slam Apu into a wall, breaking his glasses. Kid confronts Apu about his betrayal, but Apu fights back, slashing Kid. Queen, shocked that Kid has also escaped from the prisoner mine, gives his men permission to kill him. They are attacked by one of the numbers, Hacha, a mace-wielding giant. A fired explosive arrow knocks Hacha back, allowing Kid, Luffy, and Zoro to escape to the castle while Wire and Heat hold Hacha back. However, they are pursued by Apu's sound attacks. Killer suggests covering their ears. This makes them immune to Apu's attacks, since they only work if the target can hear the sound waves. Kid, Luffy, and Zoro continue to advance to Kaido's castle. Big Mom, who is getting ready to join the party, receives word that her family is unharmed and are on their way. The Big Mom pirates, led by Perospero, ride up the waterfall approaching the country. Chopper's group with the tank joins Kinemon's forces up the East Mountain Path. Kinemon discusses the plan. The group will split into another two groups. One group will enter through the side of the Skull Dome and the other through the back. This will allow them to attack Orochi and Kaido from two angles. Denjiro leads the southern forces. The rest of the nine red scabbards are under the sea, and Robin, Jimbei, Frankie, and Brooke infiltrate the castle in disguise. Although Nami and Carrot's group encounters enemy beasts' pirates, they use their good looks to charm their way through. Unfortunately, Kinemon's group finds that the island blueprints were out of date, and the castle has been expanded since it was made. The forces encounter a pond on the eastern mountain path. Sanji finds a pleasure hall owned by Black Maria, but finds it empty since Kaido's subordinates have left in search of the intruders. Nami, Carrot, and Shinobu decide to break away from the group to search for Momonosuke. Apu explains what happened to Killer. When Killer was imprisoned, Orochi offered him a chance to save his captain if he ate a smile fruit. Killer ate the fruit, but it was defective, giving him the side effects, but no ability and making him a pleasure. Who's who decides not to intervene in the battle, instead working on tracking down Yamato before Sasaki does? He also thinks about how Queen said he would kill one of the Toboropo. Who's who mentions a certain Toboropo he wants to kill? Although Luffy attempt to follow the plan, Kid and Killer continue to wreak havoc on enemy units. Meanwhile, at the Eastern Mountain Path, Kinemon's forces split into two groups. One group enters the castle while the other continues down the path. Chopper's tank joins the group entering the castle. Most of them see Big Mom's shadow from the window and dive into the water, but she opens the window to find Chopper's tank. The Big Mom pirates, led by Perospero, finally make it back up the waterfall and into the country. However, they see another flying figure, Marco the Phoenix, who arrived to Wano country to aid Luffy. Although they attack Marco, he uses his claw to push the ship back down the waterfall. Nekamamushi and Izu, who have also arrived to aid the rebellion, ride up the waterfall and watch the ship falling down. Marco remembers seeing Luffy in the Summit War of Marineford. When Akainu attempted to kill an unconscious Luffy, several Whitebeard pirates, including Marco, Vista, and Izu, all held Akainu back while Luffy was taken to safety. Orochi meets with Kaido and discusses the samurai's plan. Orochi believes that the allies have died at sea. He comments on how trusting the samurai were of Kanjuro prior to his betrayal, since he nearly died along with them in the boiling pot 20 years ago. However, Kaido laments that Odin never told them the location of Laughtail. The beast pirates outside, unaware that Kanjuro was on their side, act hostile towards him, but they are defeated, and Kanjuro enters Orochi's throne room. He brings with him an unconscious, beaten Momonosuke. Meanwhile, Page One carries Ulti down the hallway. Law's submarine encounters a particularly strong current. They decide to charge at it at full speed, passing the current but causing a jostle. Meanwhile, Nekomamushi just finished climbing the waterfall with his subordinates, but he would unlikely make it to Onigashima in time. In the mansion, Zoro cuts down a wall to get to Kaido, 
only to find several beasts pirates on the other side. He and Luffy fight the enemies off, with Luffy practicing his Ryuo on them. More enemies come, and Luffy prepares to battle them. Big Mom recognizes Chopper as a straw hat and chases his tank into a canyon, with her forces setting up cannons and mortars to fire at the tank. Although Chopper fires back and destroys the cannons and mortars, Big Mom throws a missile at the tank from above. The tank is unharmed, but it is sent flying into the air. Chopper uses the chance to fire at Big Mom's head, then throws another explosive into Big Mom's mouth. Big Mom is still unharmed and chases the tank away. Kanjuro comes to Orochi with an unconscious, beaten Momonosuke. He states that Momonosuke attempted to escape by cutting the rope with the knife, but Kanjuro beat him unconscious. However, Kanjuro reports that he failed to thwart the Nine Red Scabbard's plans, and that the Allied forces are in Onigashima. However, Fukurakuju reports that since there were no enemy ships at the port, the island was safe from enemy attacks. Still, Orochi prepares to execute Momonosuke to damage the enemy morale. Marco's ship approaches Onigashima. He states that he is joining the raid in Odin's name. Denjiro leads the southern forces up the mountain path only to find the map is out of date, as they encounter an unmapped gate. Sasaki exits the gate and recognizes Kyoshiro, unaware that he was Denjiro. Although Sasaki was trusting of Denjiro, Denjiro's men ambush Sasaki, tying him with sea stone chains. From there, the southern forces split up into two groups. One would enter the Skull Dome while the other continues down the path. Since Big Mom has been lured away, Kinemon's forces are able to safely come out of hiding. They make their advance, but Nami's group is spotted by Prometheus. Meanwhile, Ulti insists that Page One carry her down the hall, but they fall down the stairs and encounter Luffy. A mysterious masked figure runs through the halls, excited to meet Luffy. She is chased by the beast pirates who see her. She crosses through several rooms, including the one where Kid is fighting beast pirates. Meanwhile, Ulti checks on her brother, Page One. She again throws a fit in front of him, remembering how she rode on Page One's back down the staircase. She then confronts Luffy, being told that he is a pirate intruder. They immediately get into a fight, and they headbutt each other, each attempting to knock the other down. Ulti gets the upper hand and slams Luffy into the floor. She transforms into the hybrid form of her Pachycephalosaurus fruit, while Page One transforms into his full Spinosaurus form. Although Luffy gets up, he acknowledges that he is in an emperor's castle and fights at full strength. Eventually, Luffy grabs onto Ulti's horns and slams her into the ground, then defeats Page One with a hockey-imbued gear third punch. In rage, Ulti transforms into her full beast form, headbutting Luffy. She prepares a more powerful headbutt, Ul Meteor, but the masked figure appears and strikes her down with the Reimei Haki move. Excited to see Luffy, the masked figure carries him away, revealing himself to be Yamato, Kaido's son. Angry that the Big Mom pirate's ship was knocked down the waterfall twice, Prospero rides to Onigashima on his candy slug. He swears revenge on King and Marco for knocking the ship down. Chopper's tank fires several rounds at Big Mom, but she is unharmed by the fire. She prepares to use her devil fruit powers on Usopp and Chopper, but upon hearing Prometheus's call, she walks away. Although the tank is unharmed, a transformation switch is activated, turning the tank into the lower half of the General Frankie. Chopper must unite it with the Kurosai FRU-4 to form the full General Frankie. Big Mom walks through the halls in search of Zeus, creating homies with pieces of her soul. Nami, knowing she could not win in a battle against Big Mom, decides to run into the performance hall with Zeus to avoid her. Meanwhile, Zoro is in the halls but is surrounded on both sides. He encounters a group of gifters who offer him a spot in the Beast's Pirates. Zoro refuses and cuts the enemies down, Robin and Jinbei are among the partygoers and they spot Hyogoro, and they are glad that the samurai successfully entered the castle. Robin is harassed by a drunken beast pirate, but she knocks him out. Then Orochi appears on the party room balcony, showing Momonosuke tied to a cross and preparing to execute him. Kaido is disappointed that Orochi interrupted his party. The medical team tends to Ulti's mouth injury and helps her regain consciousness. Page One, who had no injury other than a dislocated jaw, goes to chase after Yamato. In the hallway, Yamato attempts to speak with Luffy, but Luffy refuses to listen because he was Kaido's son. He unleashes several attacks on Yamato, who defends himself against the attacks. This reminds Yamato of the time he battled with Ace. Orochi prepares to execute Momonosuke to damage the enemy morale. He explains to the crowd that Momonosuke was a time traveler who was transported 20 years into the future by his mother Toki. The crowd votes on his method of execution, although Robin, 
Jinbei, Hyogoro, and the other allies are unhappy to see Momonosuke on the cross. They are forced to jeer at him to blend in. At Onigashima's coast, Law's submarine approaches the back of the island, battling strong currents. The submarine goes up to the surface. Then Law creates a room for his devil fruit ability. Using the shambles move, he switches the samurai on the submarine with mountain rocks on the island. This transports the samurai to a snowy mountain peak. Marco also arrives, having carried Nekomamushi and Izu to Onigashima. Kikunojo has a heartfelt reunion with his brother after 20 years separated. Ashura and the others prepare to enter the castle. Kaido gets frustrated that Yamato has not been captured yet. He decides to personally appear at the party, appearing by Momonosuke. Along with the execution, Kaido introduces a certain new Onigashima project. Finally, in private, Luffy grants Yamato five minutes to explain himself. Yamato explains that he idolized Odin, and when he was executed, Yamato proclaimed himself to be Odin. He went to Kuri and found Odin's logbook, reading about his adventures with the Whitebeard and Roger Pirates. Back in the present day, Yamato removes his mask, revealing himself to be a woman. She decided to become a man as she desired to become Odin. On the top of the castle, Law and Beppo break away from the group to achieve their own goals. However, the remaining samurai are attacked by headless centaurs, deducing they are drawings made by Kanjuro. Kanjuro comes out of the castle door and confronts them, revealing what happened to Momonosuke. Momonosuke attempted to escape by cutting his ropes using a knife. Although he managed to cut Kanjuro's hand, he was brutally beaten unconscious and taken to Orochi. Kanjuro finishes by announcing Momonosuke's public execution at the party. Outraged and feeling betrayed, the samurai wage a battle against Kanjuro's forces. Nekomamushi has replaced his hand with a double-barrel gun and Inuarashi's leg a sword, so they battle fiercely against their enemies. However, Kikunojo still attempts to sympathize with Kanjuro, believing that there was still some good in him. After Kanjuro denounces the samurai for the last time, she enters the battle. Nami's group is chased by Prometheus down the halls and are further attacked by the homies. Nami and Carrot are captured, but Shinobu flees. Zeus also attempts to intervene, but is grabbed by Big Mom's obscured hand. Yamato reveals that he met Ace when he visited the country. They battled because Ace attempted to assassinate Kaido. Yamato also explains that he wishes to be free like Odin, but Kaido fitted him with shackles that would explode if he left the country. Luffy offers to remove his handcuffs for him, but they are interrupted by Kaido's speech from the performance floor. Kaido announces to the crowd his official alliance with the Big Mom pirates against the world government. In the hallway, Big Mom attacks Zeus before personally crashing into the party hall. Kaido continues his announcement to the crowd below. His final objective is to obtain the ancient weapons and use it to destroy the world order, putting the world into a state of endless warfare. He also announces a new plan. He would take full control of the country and enslave all citizens, including those in the flower capital. Orochi objects, arguing that the capital is the pride of the Kurozumi family. Kaido promptly takes out his sword and decapitates him. Upon seeing Momonosuke on the cross through a crack in the ceiling, Luffy and Yamato fall through the ceiling into the party below. They go to rescue Momonosuke. Kanjuro battles Kikunojo atop the mountain, creating drawings to battle her. Eventually, Kikunojo gets the upper hand, but Kanjuro begs for forgiveness. Still believing there is good left in Kanjuro, she attempts to forgive him, but Kanjuro reveals it to be an act, attacking her. He states that shared absolutely no feelings with the samurai and never cared for them at all. Finally accepting that Kanjuro's act was entirely fake, Kikunojo enters battle and manages to cut him down. Kanjuro collapses while Kikunojo gets on her knees in tears. Kinemon and Denjiro have reached the back of the castle and joined the group, who is still hurt from Kanjuro's betrayal. Still, they decide to move forward and continue their advance. Remembering her happy memories with Kanjuro, she decides to set them aside and join the rest of the group. Kaido continues the announces. He plans to move the island of Onigashima into the flower capital. This would cause Wano country to collapse, creating a new country, New Onigashima, under control of the beast pirates and with Yamato as the new shogun. Enraged that he was being forced into the plan, Yamato protests. To the shock of Hyogoro, Fukurokuju and the Orochi Oniwabanshu all agree to join Kaido's side and abandon their shogun. Kaido then goes to Momonosuke, remembering when he left him in the burning castle to die. Just like 20 years ago, Kaido demands to know Momonosuke's name, offering to cancel the execution if he turns out not to be the son of Odin. The crowd encourages Momonosuke to lie to escape the execution. Yamato and Luffy run down the hall. 
where Yamato hears, to his delight, that the Odin's retainers are alive. However, they are pursued by Who's Who and Ulti. Meanwhile, Chopper's tank on its two legs run through a dark cave, accidentally waking up one of the numbers. At the seas outside the island, Prospero battles against Marco, where they both express their disapproval of Kaido and Big Mom's alliance. Back at the performance hall, through sheer bravery, Momonosuke gives his real name to Kaido, revealing he is a member of the Kazuki family. This greatly angers Kaido. Just then, Luffy removes Yamato's handcuffs and they explode, revealing to Yamato's horror that the shackles really were explosive. He prepares to attack Kaido, but Luffy stops him so that the samurai could act. Kinemon's forces advance through the hallways and break into the platform with Kaido and the All-Stars. Nekomamushi strikes down Jack and Izu manages to disarm King. Shocked that the nine red scabbards have returned like the prophecy said, Queen makes the announcement to the crowd that they are facing a full-scale raid. Together, the nine red scabbards yell Tsunaki before slashing Kaido, cutting him like how Odin did 20 years ago. As he falls, Kaido realizes that the nine red scabbards used Ryuo to pierce through his body. He crashes into the ground below. The All-Stars realize that Luffy's group was only a decoy for the real invading group. Ulti confronts Yamato for striking her down earlier. Yamato officially defects from the Beast's pirates, swearing allegiance to the Kozuki family. He attacks the enemy Beast's pirates and battles Ulti head-on. Ulti leaps into the air and prepares a headbutt, but Yamato strikes her with his club. Meanwhile, Big Mom spots and approaches Luffy. They quickly enter battle and punch each other, but Big Mom overpowers Luffy, sending him crashing into the ground. Getting up, Luffy declares that his goal was not to only take down Kaido, but also his, Big Mom's, and Orochi's subordinates. Shinobu sneaks onto the balcony in an attempt to rescue Momonosuke, while Robin and Jimbei prepare to strike when needed. In the hallway, Nami and Carrot fight back against the homies, striking them with electricity and killing them. Nami runs after Big Mom to retrieve Zeus. Terrified of her, Zeus rejoins Nami. The nine red scabbards attempt to kill Kaido by stabbing him with their swords. Kinemon recites the prophecy given by Toki 20 years prior. They nearly succeed in killing Kaido, but he unleashes a powerful attack knocking them all back. He deduces that the samurai have allied themselves with Luffy to take him down. Kaido attempts to deceive the samurai, claiming that Luffy would betray them whenever he saw fit. With great trust in Luffy, Kinemon refuses to back down. Luffy declares an all-out war. War ensues in Onigashima. Big Mom and Kaido assume that the raid would be easily defeated, as Luffy only had a few hundred troops. However, Queen gets a report that there are enemies in the thousands charging into Onigashima. The samurai troops join Zoro. The former Udon prisoners join Killer. And Kid and Law also join in on the battle. Furthermore, at the shore, Marco and Prospero join forces in battle against Kaido's troops. Hearing all these reports from his subordinates, Queen calls off the banquet, telling all the partygoers to enter battle and declaring an all-out enemy raid. Shinobu, who is hiding in the ceiling just above Momonosuke, prepares to rescue him. However, she cannot act immediately as the All-Stars are still on the balcony. Kaido transforms into his dragon form and flies out of the hole, ready for combat. He flies through the ceiling and into the sky. The minks appear to confront him, but Jack's forces appear to stop them. Inuarashi and Nekomamushi remember when Jack devastated the Mokomo dukedom in search of Raizo. Jack's men tortured innocent minks, even using a toxic gas to wipe them out. Jack also remembers when his ship was decimated by Zunesha and he was left to drown in the sea. The minks stare at the sky, allowing them to transform into their Sulong forms. The minks battle Jack as well as one of the numbers, Nangi. Inuarashi and Nekomamushi also transform into their Sulong form to battle Kaido, Battle ensues in the party hall, and Queen receives several reports from his subordinates. While he and King are distracted, Shinobu silently drops from the ceiling and attempts to rescue Momonosuke. She uses a technique in an attempt to break the chains. Although she damages the chains, she is caught by King, who throws her off the balcony and sends her crashing into a tower. She takes out a parachute to slow her fall. Momonosuke's chains finally break and he falls off the balcony. King pursues him, but Sanji, appearing in his raid suit, intervenes. He catches Momonosuke and passes him to Shinobu before battling King. King gets the upper hand, transforming into his Pteranodon form, piercing Sanji with his nose and crashing into a building. At this point, Yamato abandons his battle with Ulti to take care of Momonosuke. Big Mom confronts Luffy. She recalls how the Straw Hats ruined the Big Mom pirate's wedding. Luffy and his clones destroyed her wedding cake and Brooke destroyed her only portrait of Mother Carmel. 
In an act of revenge, she takes out Napoleon and unleashes her Ikoku attack, creating a powerful shockwave. Luffy successfully evades, but the Sasaki was tied to is destroyed, freeing him. Big Mom notices that Zeus is missing and catches him being carried away by Nami. Big Mom grabs Zeus, but Frank and Brooke appear in their motorcycle and run over Big Mom's face, knocking her over. Brooke then slices Zeus in half. Nami is excited to see Frankie and Brooke. The samurai continue to battle the Beast's pirates in the performance hall. However, the numbers play with the Brachio tank like a toy, ripping the hatch open to see Usopp and Chopper before throwing the tank into the ground. Unharmed by the beatings, the tank fires back, but the numbers are also unharmed by the fire. One of the numbers picks the tank up and shakes it around, making Usopp and Chopper dizzy. Yamato runs through the halls to rescue Momonosuke, but is still pursued by Ulti. Yamato is forced to battle her, but he gets the upper hand, knocking her into a wall. He goes to meet Shinobu and Momonosuke. Although Luffy insists that Yamato could be trusted, they get suspicious when Yamato claims to be Odin. They flee from him. Big Mom gets up, infuriated that two more straw hats have shown up. Frankie attempts to fight back by firing a laser beam, but the numbers appear. Their gigantic size reminds the Straw Hats of the time they battled oars in Thriller Bark. Big Mom explains that they were artificial recreations of ancient giants from Punk Hazard that were failed experiments but were purchased by Kaido. Frankie notices that one of the numbers has the Brachio tank in its hand, so he fires a laser beam at it. Big Mom attempts to attack Frankie, but Robin and Jimbei intervene. Jimbei flips Big Mom over, and Robin creates a path of hands that rolls her away. To the excitement of Usopp and Chopper, Frankie prepares to combine the Brachio tank and the Kurosai FRU-4 into the Iron Pirate. Big Mom rolls out of the castle and down the entrance steps, being spotted by Prospero. Meanwhile, Sasaki's chains are broken off by his subordinates. Sasaki swears revenge on Denjiro for betraying him. Atop the Skull Dome, Kaido and Jack's forces battle against the Minx. Although Jack fights off the Minx, Inuarashi and Nekomamushi take over, transforming into their Sulong forms to face him. Inside the castle, Luffy and Zoro meet up on the platform, intending to go to the rooftop to face Kaido. They attempt to launch through the hole in the ceiling, but they are caught by Queen's dinosaur mouth, and King also appears. They are flung off the balcony, where they are faced by Jockey, one of the numbers on the ground below. However, Frankie combines the two vehicles into the Iron Pirate, a giant robot. Operating the robot, Frankie shoots down Jackie with his cannon. Unharmed by King's attack, Sanji emerges from the rubble and removes his raid suit. Although he is attacked by enemy units, Luffy and Zoro fight at his aid. The Straw Hats battle against the enemy beast's pirates, remembering their past adventures as a crew. Despite being far stronger than most of the beast pirates, the Straw Hats are still greatly outnumbered. Still, they gather and prepare to battle against the All-Stars and the Tuburapo. X, Drake, and Basil Hawkins watch the battle from above. Secretly fearing Kaido and Big Mom's alliance, Drake is happy that Luffy has come to stop them. He prepares to betray the Beast's pirates, but Hawkins refuses to join him. King and Queen also meet on the balcony, with Queen still questioning how the Udon prisoners escaped. King tells the Tobarapo to stop all enemy invaders from climbing onto the Skull Dome to battle Kaido. After hearing that Drake was attempting to betray the Beast Pirates, who's who decides to carry out his own plot against the traitor. He claims that he is plotting to kill Queen, so Drake joins him to confront Queen together. However, who's who instead turns on Drake, shooting him in the arm. Queen reveals that they were aware of Drake's betrayal all along. He was spotted letting Law out of prison, so they deduce that he was a traitor. Queen prepares to torture Drake for information regarding his true allegiances, the Straw Hats aid the samurai in battling another one of the numbers, Goki. Luffy remembers when they defeated Oars in Thriller Bark. Although that battle required the efforts of the entire crew, Luffy transforms into his Boundman form to battle Goki on his own. Drake escapes, throwing a grenade at Queen before transforming and fleeing. Leaping into the party, he uses his swords to cut down another number, Juki, just as Luffy defeats Goki. Drake officially defects from the Beast Pirates joining Luffy's side. The Straw Hats recognize Drake as one of the Tobarapo, remembering him from the bathhouse incident. Although they are suspicious of him, Luffy accepts him into the alliance. Still, Zoro battles him, still untrusting of him. While the samurai protect the Straw Hats, they advance forward. Usopp and Nami are chased by Page One and Ulti, and Luffy and Sanji are attacked by Apu's sound attacks. They cover their ears to evade the attacks. Apu summons Hacha to defeat the Straw Hats. Hacha is then enticed by the General Frankie and attempts to chase it. 
Frankie decides to run away, chased by Hatcha to prevent him from further rampaging in the live floor. Zoro and Drake battle, with Zoro untrusting of Drake because he refuses to reveal his true identity. However, their battle is interrupted by Apu, who attempts to summon more numbers. United by a mutual hatred for Apu, Zoro accepts Drake into the alliance and they battle him together. Queen fires a machine gun into the crowd, striking several samurai fighters with bullets. Although their wounds are shallow, the bullets immediately begin taking effect, freezing the victim's skin and coating it with ice. Drake finds that the bullets fired were Excite bullets, and the samurai were affected by another one of Queen's viruses. The virus in the Excite bullets causes a transformation in its targets, freezing them and covering their skin with ice, as well as making them grow horns and fangs like an oni. The victims became hostile, attacking their allies and biting them, infecting them as well. Queen fires another round into the crowd, striking more samurai. Yamato chases after Momonosuke, who is being carried away by Shinobu. Shinobu is untrusting of Yamato for claiming to be Odin, but Momonosuke is willing to listen, desperate to speak with his father again. As Yamato continues to chase his son, Black Maria sings a song in the empty banquet hall prophesizing about a certain separated couple finally reuniting. The fierce battle atop the Skull Dome continues, and Shishilian manages to defeat Nangi in his Sulong form. Inuarashi and Nekomamushi confront Jack, remembering how Jack terrorized the Mokomo dukedom and severed their limbs. They battle, and the two minks triumph, slashing Jack's eye and cutting off part of his tusk. Kaido decides to take over the battle, allowing Jack to leave the battle to receive medical treatment for his injuries. Wanda and the mink forces attempt to stop enemy beasts' pirate from climbing to the top of the Skull Dome. Carrot also joins in, but is forced to leave after hearing Prospero. Just outside the castle, Big Mom gets up from falling down the stairs and speaks with Prospero and Marco. Prospero initially protests her alliance with Kaido, but decides to trust her. But this places him at odds with Marco. Marco battles Big Mom fiercely, just as Carrot shows up and recognizes Prospero. She remembers how her mentor Pedro sacrificed himself to help the Straw Hats escape from Prospero. As Luffy and Sanji run through the hallways, Kaido fires a fireball at the samurai. Kinemon slashes the fireball, cutting Kaido in the process. As Queen continues firing Excite bullets into the crowd, King orders Bao Huang to locate Kozuki Momonosuke. Momonosuke is in the hallways, still being chased by Shinobu. Although Momonosuke and Shinobu attempt to hide from them by hiding on the ceiling, an explosion causes them to fall and be seen by Yamato. They run away from Yamato just as they are spotted by a black cat with Bao Huang's mask. With this, Black Maria continues her song hinting at a reunion. The song ends with Maria breaking the string of her shamisen. The nine red scabbards work together to battle Kaido. Raizo and Denjiro strike Kaido's underbelly. Kinemon climbs onto his body and pierces his head, and Inuarashi and Nekomamushi strike him with Electro. Kaido is still unharmed, flinging them to the ground before blasting them with fire. Still, just like Odin 20 years ago, the samurai rise in the flames. They remember when Odin offered to teach his retainers Odin II sword style, but they all refused. So using their individual fighting styles, they each take turns attacking Kaido, each managing to pierce his body. Kaido is still unharmed, so the nine red scabbards decide to mimic Odin's two sword style in honor of Odin. Kaido shoots several fireballs at them, but they evade them. Kinemon clashes against Kaido's bolo breath, then they all perform a move. Togen Totsuka, slashing Kaido's underbelly just like Odin did 20 years ago. The slash that the nine red scabbards inflicted on Kaido reopens the scars that Odin made. Kaido collapses from the injury. Back inside, Queen takes out his Gatling gun and fires another round of Excite bullets. Zoro is forced to fight off the infected samurai who became hostile from the virus. Although he recognizes one of the samurai from the hallway, he is forced to cut him down to avoid getting infected. The Straw Hats are appalled by this new highly infectious virus, and Queen names it his masterpiece, the Ice Oni. Luffy and Sanji fight off a group of beasts pirates, but they are faced with a Shinuchi Gorilla Smile user, Briscola. Jinbei strikes Briscola down from behind. Although he gets up, Jinbei defeats him with a punch, sending him crashing into the ceiling. Together, Luffy, Sanji, and Jinbei battle against the remaining beast pirates. The people in the flower capital celebrate, but they secretly long for the return of the Kazuki family. Minotomo the carpenter sits down for a drink and remembers the old days where the country was run by Sukiyaki and Odin. The townspeople pray that the nine red scabbards are battling against Orochi and Kaido. Atop the Skull Dome, 
The nine red scabbards decide to decapitate Kaido to finish him off, but he gets up before they could do so. Kaido reflects on his battle with Odin. Although he laments that Higurashi used a dirty trick to sabotage Odin, he decides to attack the samurai at full strength. He unleashes a series of flying slashes, and one of them cuts off Kiku's arm. Shinobu and Momonosuke are chased by Yamato into the right brain tower. Shinobu uses a falling piece of paper to divert Yamato away from him. They are now safe from him, but they are spied on by Bao Huang's black cat. Bao Huang reports back to King about Momonosuke's location, and King sends the report to his subordinates. He orders all available Shinuchi and Toboropo to go to the right brain tower to kill Momonosuke. Shinobu runs into a dark location only to be ambushed by the Beast Pirate's armored division, led by Sasaki. All members of this division have smile abilities that give them an armor-like defense. Shinobu is attacked by a turtle smile user, and Momonosuke refuses to run away to save himself. Just then, Yamato appears at his aid, defeating the turtle man and sending him crashing into a wall. Yamato declares that he will fight for the Kazuki family. Queen starts to get bored of shooting the enemy samurai, so he decides to start firing at his own men as well. He shoots the pleasures, knowing that they would simply laugh in response to being shot. The uninfected samurai battle the ice oni to avoid getting infected. However, one of the Yakuza Omasa is scratched by an oni's nail and is infected. Chopper swears revenge on Queen for his gross misuse of man-made viruses. Luffy, Jinbei, and Sanji run through the hallways and defeat Hamlet, a giraffe smile user, and Fortrix, a chicken smile user. After being slashed by Kaido's attack, Kiku loses her left arm, her helmet shatters, and her sword breaks in two. Inuarashi orders his subordinates to evacuate the rooftop to avoid the slash attacks. Izu bandages Kiku's arm and Kinemon cauterizes the wound with his flaming sword to stop it from bleeding. Fully treated, Kiku returns to battle. Kaido transforms back into his human form, stating that death brings completion to a human. The Isoni virus spreads throughout the live floor, affecting several people. Queen performs a short sadistic rap about the miseries of the victims. Omasa considers killing himself to prevent himself from becoming an Oni, but Hyogoro dissuades him, reminding him of how the Udon prisoners were cured of the mummy virus by the Straw Hats. However, still needing excitement, Queen fires another round of Excite Bullets into the crowd. The Straw Hats are now cornered by infected Oni. Chopper deduces that Queen must have created an antibody to cure the virus, so he must acquire it from him to develop a cure. Queen announces that the virus will kill its victims in an hour at most. Apu tries to escape the live floor, but he finds that the gates are locked. Queen introduces a game he calls Ice Oni Tag. He gives a vial containing the only sample of the antibody to Apu. The people must fight desperately for the antibody, or else they would inevitably become infected themselves. The Straw Hats must win this game and acquire the sample to cure everyone. Queen performs an alternate version of his funk dance, with sadistic lyrics celebrating the blood sport. He then begins the game, and Apu is chased by the crowd for the vial. On the rooftop, Inurashi and Nekomamushi attack Kaido, but they are struck down with his spiked club, and they lose their Sulong forms. In the right brain tower, Yamato decides to aid Shinobu. He reveals that he attended Odin's execution and heard Shinobu's speech. Sasaki's forces bombard Yamato with cannons, but he endures the barrage. Apologizing for not saving Momonosuke from the burning castle 20 years ago, Yamato introduces himself as Odin. Marco battles with Big Mom, with his blue phoenix flames clashing with Prometheus's flames. Although Marco defeats Prometheus, Big Mom picks him up and Prospero prepares to shoot him with a candy arrow. Apu is chased by Zoro and Drake, who attack him viciously for the antibody sample. Queen watches from above, recognizing two of the straw hats as Roronoa Zoro and Sanji, son of Vinsmoke Judge. Brook is bitten by an oni, but due to having no skin, he is unaffected. Ulti and Page One continue to chase Nami and Usopp down the halls. They separate, and Ulti chases Nami into a bathhouse. She overpowers Nami and strikes her to the ground with a headbutt. Usopp attempts to intervene with his pop greens, but with Page One's help, Ulti defeats Usopp. With this, Nami surrenders, and Ulti pressures her to admit that Kaido will become the Pirate King instead of Luffy. Nami recalls when she first met Luffy in Orange Town. Later, Luffy stood up against her oppressor Arlong and liberated her village. Remembering how well Luffy treated her, Nami bravely declares to Ulti that Luffy will become the Pirate King. Just then, Tama appears with Komachio, who bites Ulti's head and frees Nami. Still in grief over Pedro's death, Carrot becomes furious at the sight of Prospero. Wanda consoles her, stating that Pedro took his turn as he promised and did not die with regrets. 
Together, they transform into their Sulong forms. Just before Prospero could fire his arrow, Wanda and Carrot appear and scratch his face. Prospero immediately recognizes Carrot as the mink who sunk the enemy ships on the waters of Tato Land. They reflect on Pedro's sacrifice, but Big Mom attempts to get away. While Marco pursues her, Wanda and Carrot confront Prospero. Back in the bathhouse, Page One assists his sister, knocking Comachio away. He strikes Usopp with his dinosaur nose, sending him flying but landing safely onto Comachio's back. While Hihimaru the baboon holds Page One back, Comachio rides away, and Tama reveals that an enemy gave her a ride to Onigashima. In the right brain tower, Yamato battles against the armored division, breaking through their shields. Although Sasaki prepares to battle him personally, they are interrupted by Frankie and Hacha. Yamato fights Hacha, defeating him with a single blow. He escapes with Shinobu and Momonosuke. While Sasaki sends a pursuit unit after them, the armored division prepares to battle Frankie. As Yamato runs through the halls, he declares that the future of Wano Country lies in Momonosuke's hands. Law defeats guards and finds a poneglyph. Remembering Corazon's sacrifice as well as the mysterious initial D in his name, he wonders why he lives the checkered life he lives. Back inside the castle, Chopper, having contracted the Ice Oni virus, attempts to nullify the symptoms by slowing the freezing. Brooke uses a torch to keep Chopper's body warm, and this prevents the virus from spreading to the rest of his body. Just then, Big Mom appears riding on both Prometheus and Zeus. In the hallways, Kid runs through the halls but encounters Rattlesnake Smile user Poker. Kid decides not to finish Poker off and get past him. On the rooftop, the nine red scabbards leap at Kaido and stab him, but Kaido unleashes a lightning bolt, knocking them all back. Although the samurai prepare a counterattack, Kaido brutally beats all of them with his club, leaving them gravely injured on the ground. Kaido ends up breaking the rooftop with his strikes, sending Kiku's severed arm falling into the live floor below, which is found by Zoro. Big Mom decides to ride up to join Kaido on the rooftop. Zoro becomes enraged by Queen's lack of empathy for the ailing people. He steps up to Apu and uses a resheathing technique to cut him down. He then acquires the antibody sample and entrusts it to Chopper before moving on to another area. Chopper announces his findings to the crowd and works on creating a cure for the virus. Luffy, Sanji, and Jinbei run up the stairs on the way to the rooftop, but Sanji hears the voice of a woman being harassed. Sanji splits away from the group to rescue the harassed woman. However, when Sanji bursts through the door, he gets caught in a sticky spider web. This is revealed to be a trap created by Black Maria. She reveals corpses hanging in a closet who have also fallen into her trap and were killed. Maria shows she has feelings for Sanji, and they have a romantic moment. Luffy and Jimbei are watched by Bao Huang's cat. Huang reports to King that Luffy has reached the third floor. King positions two Shinuchi poker and a gorilla smile fruit named Mizurka at the stairs to the fourth floor. However, Luffy meets with the Udon prisoners, who have built him a ladder to the next floor. Luffy climbs up, avoiding Mazurka and Poker. On the rooftop, Kinemon is the only one left standing against Kaido. Kaido unleashes a strike, knocking him down. An earthquake strikes Onigashima. At this point, Marco enters the live floor and finds Zoro. Outside, Yamato, Momonosuke, and Shinobu start to evacuate, but the tremors abruptly stop. Yamato discovers that the Beast's pirate's ship has disappeared from the port, leaving behind a lilac fog. He explains that Kaido can fly by creating flame clouds and using them as footholds to move through the air. Kaido, who conjures flame clouds from the rooftop, is now using the clouds to lift up the entire island of Onigashima to move it to the flower capital. The island is completely out of the ocean and is floating in the air. Chopper, discovering that fire can be used against the Isoni virus, requires a large amount of fire for the infected people. Marco uses his devil fruit power to create blue flames, setting Chopper on fire. These flames are warm enough to stop the virus's spread, but not hot enough to burn him. With this, Marco sets all the infected people on fire, granting them temporary relief from the virus effects. Chopper leaves with Minx Miyagi and Tristan to work on the antidote. Queen attempts to turn the beast pirates against the straw hats, claiming that Chopper does not intend to heal everyone with the antidote. While Hyogoro's forces hold the enemy army off, Drake defeats a vengeful Apu. This allows Chopper to start working on a cure. On the way to the rooftop, Luffy and Jinbei encounter a room with enemy beasts pirates. Jinbei holds them off as Luffy continues on his way. However, Jinbei is watched by an obscured enemy. In the right brain tower, Frankie battles the armored division with General Frankie, but Sasaki intervenes and transforms into a triceratops. They both clash, 
Meanwhile, Ulti and Page One rampage in their beast forms. Page One cuts down Hihimaru with his claw. Although he perseveres and gets up, he is beaten a second time. Page One and Ulti then pursue Nami, Komachio, and Tama. Yamato, Momonosuke, and Shinobu arrive at a storehouse to hide in. While Shinobu rests to take care of her wounds, they find a stone statue of a dragon. Yamato explains that the statue once decorated the front of the island, but it was damaged by Ace and left abandoned in the storehouse. Yamato explains that when Ace visited Wano Country, he attempted to kill Kaido. Sanji attempts to escape, but is caught by Black Maria's silk. It is revealed that Black Maria has a devil fruit power allowing her to transform into a Rosa Miguel Gravigali, an ancient spider. Meanwhile, Luffy battles fiercely against the beast's pirates, and the obscured enemy who confronted Jinbei hears. The enemy is revealed to be Who's Who, who has transformed into a saber-toothed tiger. Who's Who hints that like Jinbei, he used to work for the world government. In the storehouse, Yamato bandages Shinobu's wounds. At this point, Yamato reveals more about his experiences with Ace. When Ace led his own pirate crew, he invaded Onigashima to rescue abducted children. Ace battled against its guardian, Yamato, where it is revealed that Kaido was on expedition with his top officers. While Ace's subordinates rescued the children and sent them back to the mainland, Ace continued his battle. He revealed his past to Yamato. When Ace was a child, his father Roger became despised by the people. Ace began questioning whether or not his life inherently had no worth when his father was so rejected. Yamato also revealed his past. Since he dreamed of living free like Odin, Kaido fitted him with handcuffs that would explode if he left the island. Ace encouraged Yamato to do what he desired against Kaido's wishes. In anger, Yamato destroyed Kaido's dragon statue. Ace and Yamato developed a friendship. As they watched the sunset, Ace told Yamato about the outside world, including his brother who will rise as a powerful pirate. Finishing his story, Yamato tells that Ace died two years ago, but his brother Luffy inherits his will. Yamato anticipated Luffy's return so he could take Kaido down. Meanwhile, Tama reveals to Nami that she also knew Ace. Chopper works on an antidote while Marco helps some of the infected with his flames. Although the beast's pirates do not want to attack Marco, Queen threatens them with death if they do not. Still, Marco transforms into his phoenix form and flies Zoro to the rooftop, while Robin and Brooke run to the castle. Zoro reminds Marco of his memories with Ace. When Ace was in the Whitebeard Pirates, he begged Whitebeard to let him go to Wano country to take Kaido down. When Ace last visited the country, he promised he would make the country free from hunger. However, knowing that Ace would not stand a chance against Kaido, Whitebeard did not let him go. Ace resolved to get stronger so he could battle Kaido and fulfill his promises. Nami reveals to Tama that Ace was Luffy's brother. Tama reflects on when Luffy told her about Ace's death. Although Luffy spoke to her very bluntly, she regrets the way she reacted. Moving on, Tama's group decides to carry out a strategy Tama laid out. In the storehouse, Momonosuke hears from Yamato that Ace was Luffy's brother and Roger's son. He also hears that Luffy has the infamous initial D in his name. On the way to the rooftop, the mink soldiers struggle to defend the stairway from enemy beasts' pirates. Just then, Luffy appears and defeats them, taking the stairs to the next floor. Marco is pursued by King and Queen. Queen fires bullets at him from his mouth, but the bullets pass through Marco's body. Keeping King and Queen in a chokehold, Marco flings Zoro out of the hole in the ceiling. On the rooftop, Big Mom meets with Kaido and finds the samurai defeated on the ground. They discuss the new Onigashima project. Although the people are enjoying the fire festival in the flower capital, Kaido will move Onigashima there, even if many will die. However, they start to bicker over the road Poneglyph, where they both agree to negotiate further once the One Piece is acquired. As Yamato takes out Odin's journal, he reveals more about his times with Ace. As Ace and Yamato sat around a campfire, they discussed each other's dreams. Ace discussed Luffy's dreams. Since his childhood, Luffy had a dream of finding the One Piece in memory of Roger. Using Ace's fingernail, Yamato creates a Viver card of him. Ace eventually departed from the island and Yamato kept a Viver card of him. However, during the Summit War, Ace was killed in battle. As he died in Marineford, Yamato's Viver card disintegrated before his eyes. Yamato remembered when Ace told him that his brother Luffy would rise as a powerful pirate. Yamato resolved to wait for Luffy to come to save the country from Kaido. Finishing his story, Yamato entrusts Odin's journal to Momonosuke. He suggests that Luffy was the person mentioned in the prophecy, who would arrive to the country to take down Kaido. Kid, Killer, Law, and Zoro reach the rooftop to confront Kaido and Big Mom. 
Luffy also enters by punching through the ceiling. After tending to Kinemon's wounded body, Luffy apologizes for being late to the battle. Remembering all the people who made the rebellion possible, Luffy creates a Ryo-imbued Gear Third Punch, striking down Kaido. As Kaido gets up, Luffy declares that he will become the Pirate King. As Big Mom scoffs at Luffy's declaration, Kaido is surprised that Luffy was able to injure him, a feat only done by a few of the most powerful pirates. He unleashes his Raimei hockey move, and Luffy mostly avoids the attack. Big Mom attempts to intervene, but Zoro cuts Prometheus in half, though Prometheus survives and is reunited. Kaido attempts to strike Luffy off guard, but Law saves him. He, Luffy, and Kid begin bickering just as Prometheus shoots fireballs at them. Luffy suggests a contest where the last to dodge the fireball would win. Since they were focused on winning this contest, they all ended up being hit by the fireballs. Although they all emerge from the rubble, Zoro and Killer are left to battle Kaido. They charge at Kaido and manage to shallowly cut him. In the banquet hall, Sanji is kept bound by Black Maria, but is too charmed by the women to attempt to escape. Eventually, he decides to free himself by burning the webs with Diablo Jambe flames, then uses the webs to fight off the ladies. However, he could not find himself to attack Black Maria, and Maria starts interrogating him about his crew's whereabouts, especially Robin. The three captains declare they will defeat Kaido. Luffy transforms into his Gear Fourth form. Kid gathers metallic objects and Law creates a room. They prepare for battle and Kaido calls them monsters. Kaido prepares a counterattack, but Luffy strikes Kaido's stomach with Kong Gun. Kid crushes him with his fists using Punk Vice, and Law pummels him with rocks using Tact. Still, they continue to bicker over whose attack was stronger. Big Mom continues to mock the worst generation. Kaido transforms back into his dragon form and unleashes Kaifu, sending wind slashes flying at the enemies. He declares that he defeated and samurai and will become the sole ruler of Wano country. Luffy strikes Kaido back with Kong Rifle, Kid slams his head into the ground with Slam Gibson, and Law uses Gamma Knife to damage Kaido's heart. Killer also attempts to use Scyther Sonic to repeatedly slash Kaido with his punishers, but Big Mom strikes him down with a lightning bolt. With Law's help, Zoro attempts to slash Kaido with the powerful Enma, but is stopped by Big Mom. Zeus unleashes several lightning bolts that strike the worst generation. Still, the lightning does not affect Luffy since he is made of rubber, he pummels Kaido with Kong Gatling Gun. Luffy pummeling Kaido astounds the worst generation in Big Mom. His final punch sends Kaido crashing into the ground. Luffy attempts an attack to end Kaido, but he runs out of energy and loses his Gear Fourth form, collapsing. As Zoro helps Luffy recover, Kid and Law take on Big Mom's attacks. Kaido regains consciousness and flies into the sky, creating tornadoes that knock Kid and Killer back. Luffy flies out of Zoro's hands and into Kaido's mouth. So, Zoro uses his Enma and unleashes an attack, cutting Kaido's rough scales and making him spit Luffy out in pain. The fierce battle in the rooftop is heard from the live floor. CP0 agents who have entered the party sit away from the conflict, using a Go board to depict the battle status. There are far more black pieces than white, indicating that Kaido has a strong advantage. They lament that their supplier was killed, but note that this battle was inevitable since Luffy took down Doflamingo. They predict with certainty that the Beast Pirates will triumph, but nevertheless encourages battle, hoping that the pirates will destroy each other. Big Mom goes to check on the fighting pirates. Although Kaido is obscured, the worst generation hint that he has transformed into a new form, his hybrid form. Hours before Tama entered Onigashima to rescue Nami and Usopp, she asked Speed to take her to the island so she could assist the raid. Speed agreed immediately to take her, along with a tame Daifugo and Gazelman. On the ship, Tama created several Kibi Dangos to tame the Gifters in Onigashima. Upon reaching the island, Speed claimed that the Dangos she was distributing to the Gifters were medicine created by Queen, apparently granting added strength. After Briscola ate a Dango and reported having a surge in energy, the other Gifters ate the Kibi Dangos being tamed. Back to the present day, after uniting with Nami's group, Gazelman and Daifugo forcefully feed the Gifters in the corridors. Usopp shoots a Dango into Hamlet's mouth, taming him. On the live floor, enemy beasts pirates attempt to take the antidote from Chopper, but he is guarded by Hyogoro's forces. However, one of the infected fighters lose their stamina. The flames given by Marco die and he transforms back into an ice oni. He charges at Hyogoro and infects him. Frankie gets the upper hand against Sasaki and throw him into several walls, but the beast pirates restrain him and prevent him from moving. Just then, Nami's group, along with Tama and the Tamed Beast's pirates, enter to aid Frankie. Usopp fires Kibidangos at Sasaki's forces, taming the armored division. 
Frankie takes out a sword and slashes Sasaki's abdomen. Black Maria's women play a game where they roll Sanji to each other. Sanji is knocked out during this game and wakes up to see Black Maria has crucified him with webs. Maria orders Sanji to call for Robin using a surveillance unit. Bao Huang attempts to locate the nine red scabbards. She determines they are in the treasure repository, and there is an unknown person in the room helping them. Carrot and Wanda turn into their salong form and confront Prospero, but he covers them with candy, turning them into candy men. Carrot frees herself and Wanda using Electro to melt the candy. However, Prospero crushes Wanda with a candy maiden. On the live floor of Skull Dome, Marco battles King as Chopper continues to try to make an antidote for the Ice Onus. Hyogoro, who was infected, decides to fight as much as he can. He transforms into a younger version of himself. Before she goes to pursue the wounded samurai, Black Maria carries out her plan. She tortures Sanji into calling for Robin's help by punching him with brass knuckles. Sanji calls out for help at the top of his lungs, and the Marys announce the message throughout the live floor. Black Maria prepares to deliver one final blow to finish Sanji, but Robin sprouts a giant arm, striking Black Maria. Robin strikes down Black Maria and Brooke frees Sanji by freezing and shattering the webs. As Robin faces Black Maria, Sanji escapes. He goes down a random path, hoping to meet with some of the allies. Bao Huang announces Yamato's location to the live floor. Yamato locates and strikes down the mouse. Yamato explains that it is a cyborg, known as a Mary, that serves as Kaido's surveillance unit by broadcasting their findings to human Marys. Now that Yamato's location has been revealed, enemy beast pirates approach the storehouse. With Momonosuke hiding in his robe, Yamato battles the pirates to escape. Carrot becomes furious after Wanda was defeated by Prospero. She charges Prospero, melting his candy and breaking through his armor. However, as clouds block the moon, she loses her Sulong form. This allows Prospero to defeat her as well. After taunting Pedro and Carrot, he leaves to join the others in battle. On the roof, Kaido reveals his hybrid form to the worst generation. One minute remains before Luffy can use hockey again, so he sleeps to get rest. Killer attempts to cut Kaido, but Kaido's body is now too hard for him to cut. Killer is struck away by Kaido's club. As Black Maria was unavailable, Jack, having been bandaged, decides to go to the treasure repository to kill the samurai. Bao Huang reports that somehow, the nine red scabbards' injuries have been bandaged. Now that Jack is taking care of the samurai, Black Maria now focuses on battling Robin. She removes her robe to reveal a tattoo reading Girl Trouble. On the live floor of Skull Dome, Chopper works on the antidote but starts to run out of stamina. Still, he pushes through, using the last of his strength. Hyogoro also decides to use the last of his strength, battling the enemy beast's pirates. However, he instructs his men to kill him once the transformation is complete. As he takes on the Mimawarigumi, he regrets not battling against Kaido while in his prime. However, he is pleased that the Alliance now has a powerful asset, Luffy. On the rooftop, Kaido sends more slashes at his enemies in his hybrid form, and Big Mom makes Zeus unleash more lightning bolts. Luffy, having rested enough, is able to use hockey again and is ready to re-enter the battle. Marco battles both King and Queen in his Phoenix form. He bests both of them, sending King flying into a house and Queen into a wall. Although both survive and emerge from the rubble, this buys Chopper some extra time. However, Pirospero, who enters from the stairs, spots him exhausted. Chopper manages to develop a cure for the virus. Before he administers the antidote to other people, he decides to test it on himself to guarantee its safety. The antidote creates a high fever meant to combat the virus. Hyogoro defeats both the Orochi Oniwabanshu and the Mimawarigumi, but he begins to transform into an Ice Oni. He orders his men to kill him so he would not endanger his allies. Leaving the battle to his subordinates, he states that he has no regrets. Marco struggles against King and Queen who attack him from two angles. He is sent crashing into a wall. Meanwhile, Yatape and Tsunagoro hesitate to kill Hyogoro and Omasa, reluctant to kill their comrades. The waiters and pleasures beg Queen to save them. Queen berates them, calling them useless to the crew since they have no special abilities. He tells them that they should simply succumb to the virus. He also tries to turn the pirates against Chopper, claiming that he cured himself and escaped. After taking the antidote, Chopper is cured and the ice crumbles off his skin. Delighted, he prepares to administer the cure to the people. Just before Yatapi could behead Hyogoro, Chopper kicks the sword away. He sprays the antidote sample into Hyogoro's mouth, curing him as well. Then, Miyagi and Tristan load and fire a cannon. The cannonball, named the Chopper Phage, releases a pink mist into the live floor, curing all those who inhale it. Chopper confronts a furious queen for his abhorrent use of a virus in war. 
Queen fires bullets at Chopper, but the Pleasures rush to his aid. Since Chopper saved them, the Pleasures decide to join his side, fighting Queen. Chopper transforms into his monster point form and strikes Queen. On the rooftop, Luffy rejoins the battle against Kaido. Meanwhile, in the treasure repository, the nine red scabbards wake up to find their wounds bandaged. They open the door to find, to their surprise, Odin greeting them. Yamato and Shinobu defend Momonosuke from enemy beast pirates, but Momonosuke becomes frustrated by his inability to fend for himself. He accidentally transforms into a pink dragon, shocking Yamato. Momonosuke explains that when he was in Punk Hazard, he broke into a restricted area and ate a fruit, not knowing it was Vegapunk's smile fruit. Yamato comments that his ability is very similar to Kaido's. A CP0 agent explains how this fruit was made. The Punk Hazard scientists, led by Vegapunk, created the fruit by extracting Kaido's lineage factor. However, the experiment was deemed a failure and the fruit was left abandoned in the laboratory following its closure. While in the hallways, Momonosuke somehow reveals that Luffy is losing the battle. On the rooftop, Luffy in the worst generation is failing to land a single hit on Kaido in his hybrid form. In the treasure repository, the nine red scabbards are happy to see Odin, assuming that he must have escaped the boiling pot and survived. However, Ashura becomes suspicious and slices Odin's face, but he does not bleed. Furthermore, Odin stabs Ashura with his sword, confirming he is an imposter. It is revealed he is a drawing made by Kanjuro. Kanjuro states that he was fatally wounded by Kiku and would not survive the battle, but he plans to kill Momonosuke in his final moments. The nine red scabbards and Izu fight off the Kanjuro-controlled Odin, but Odin reveals and lights an explosive vest. To save the others, Ashura tackles Odin, crashing through a window before the vest detonates, killing them both. The nine red scabbards begin to grieve his death. Kanjuro runs through the halls, still looking for Momonosuke, and states that he intends to kill the young lord then die himself, finally ending his lifelong play. Meanwhile, in another room, a vengeful Orochi knocks over a barrel of oil and sets it aflame, setting the castle on fire. Although beast pirates attempt to put the fires out, Orochi cuts them down, planning to burn down Onigashima as revenge against Kaido. The remaining scabbards run through the hallways but quickly run into Jack, surrounded by fallen mink warriors. Inuarashi and Nekomamushi break away from the group to battle Jack while the others advance to rescue Momonosuke. Meanwhile, Queen gets up to battle Chopper, but Marco rushes to his aid. They battle Queen together. On the rooftop, Kaido and Big Mom decide to use a joint attack to try and wipe them out. Law could not transport them downstairs because of their hockey, and they launch Hakai, unleashing an extremely powerful shockwave. The worst generation members are unable to dodge the attack, but Zoro blocks the attack, protecting the others from the attack but leaving himself gravely injured. Luffy attempts to retaliate, but Kaido evades the attack, preparing to attack him further. Orochi and Fukurokuju continue to set fire to the castle, as they prepare to go to the explosive storage. The remaining nine red scabbards run through the hallways, worried about the fire when they run into Orochi. Fukurokuju offers to battle them, but Orochi insists on battling them himself, transforming into his Yamato no Orochi form. Despite this, the nine red scabbards cut off Orochi's heads, and Kinemon cutting off his main head. Orochi collapses. Meanwhile, the four emperors continue to battle the worst generation on the rooftop, with Kaido battling Luffy and Big Mom battling the others. Still, Luffy struggles to hurt Kaido, and Big Mom wreaks havoc on the worst generation. The worst generation tries a strategy to take Big Mom down by immobilizing her homies. Law traps Zeus into a metal box created by Kid, Zoro slices Prometheus into several pieces, and Killer distracts Napoleon by attacking him. With all her homies unable to aid her, Law and Zoro push Big Mom over the edge of the island, and she starts falling into the sea. Big Mom falls into the ocean below and starts to drown, but her homies are unable to go rescue her. Kaido aids them, and Prometheus and Napoleon escape Zoro and Killer. While Zeus is still trapped in the box, Prometheus and Napoleon dive into the sea, rescue Big Mom, and carry her back to Onigashima. On the way, Big Mom thanks Prometheus and Napoleon for rescuing her, but gets angry at Zeus for not coming to her aid. Prometheus, no longer wanting to share his power with Zeus, suggests that Big Mom abandons him and creates a new homie to be his girlfriend. She agrees. While they rise to the island, the Heart Pirates watch her from the Polar Tang, angry that she survived. Kaido prepares to finish off an unconscious Luffy, but Zoro uses the last of his strength to take him down. 
He uses a nine sword style attack combined with Haushoku Haki, slashing Kaido's chest open and reopening his scar. Kaido retaliates, defeating both Zoro and Law with Raimi, Haka. However, Luffy gets up swearing to defeat Kaido. Luffy's declaration angers Kaido. At the same time, Big Mom takes out a fragment of her soul and gives it to the thundercloud above, creating a new homie to replace Zeus. As her first technique, this new homie fires a powerful lightning bolt at Kid and Killer, hitting them at near point-blank range and shaking the entire island. Meanwhile, Nami, Tama, and Usopp attempt to return to the live floor on Komachio, while Page One chases them. Page One transforms into his hybrid form and leaps onto Komachio's back, but Komachio begins to speed up, running into a wall at full speed and ramming Page One into it. Kid and Killer emerge from the rubble somewhere inside the castle. Big Mom is on the floor directly below them, still in pursuit of Kid. Suddenly they are attacked by Hawkins, and Kid becomes enraged that Hawkins abandoned Kid in favor of Kaido. Kid decides to advance while Killer battles Hawkins. Hawkins uses Goma no So, transforming into a scarecrow-like figure. Back on the roof, Luffy notices that Kaido had the rare power of Hao Shoku Haki, he also remembers Hyogoro's lessons on internal destruction Busoshoku Haki, where one directs their Haki into the target, damaging the target internally. With this, Luffy strikes Kaido's stomach without touching him, then unleashes a powerful uppercut knocking Kaido over. With this, Luffy tells Law and Zoro to head downstairs while he battles Kaido on his own. When Hera hit Kid and Killer with Fulgora, Kid's imprisonment of Zeus collapsed, finally freeing him. On Luffy's instruction, Law teleports himself, Zoro, and Zeus to a lower level. Meanwhile, Momonosuke's group hides in the castle ceiling. They get in touch with Kinemon, informing him that Momonosuke is safe, giving him their location so they can reunite. Yamato gathers some sewing supplies for their next move. Elsewhere, Usopp, Nami, and Tama are still being chased by Page One, who rides on Kamachio's back. Usopp manages to use his pop greens to knock Page One off Komachio's back, but he still fiercely pursues them. However, Big Mom appears and is initially hostile to Nami and Usopp. However, due to her soft spot for children under the age of 10, she enters mother mode when she sees Tama. She remembers that when she lost her memory, the people of Akabor Town took care of her, fed her, and fixed her hair. However, Tama told her devastating news. Since food was stolen from Bakura Town, Kaido's subordinates, led by Holetum, set fire to the town. Several people were harmed in the fire, including Tsuru. Page One continues to pursue Tama's group, and Tama reminds Big Mom that he is one of Kaido's subordinates. Angry over Okabor Town's destruction, Big Mom strikes Page One with a hockey imbued punch to the neck. He collapses on the ground in front of Ulti, defeated. The grouped scabbards head to Momonosuke to protect him from Kanjuro. Kiku states that the pain from her arm was far less than the pain of losing her brother Izu. The scabbards decide to split up to assist various areas of the battlefield, but Kiku remains with Kinemon to pursue Kanjuro. Nekomamushi is finally informed about Pedro's sacrifice and death, now knowing that his killer, Perospero, is present on Onigashima. To avenge Pedro, Nekomamushi goes to assist Wanda and Carrot in battling Perospero. Yamato decides to run off with a decoy of Momonosuke, diverting the Marys' attention from the real Momonosuke. In the crawl space, Momonosuke hears Luffy's voice and senses that Luffy is battling Kaido one-on-one. -on, -one. on the rooftop, they are battling fiercely, but neither person could hit the other. On the castle's second floor, Sanji carries a heavily bandaged Zoro on his back, fighting off swarms of gifters and pleasures, while the latter heals from his injuries. On the live floor, Chopper battles Queen, but Perospero intervenes by firing candy arrows at Chopper. This angers Queen. Meanwhile, Ulti decides to avenge her defeated brother by attacking Big Mom. She brutally beats Komechio down to the ground, and when Tama attempts to stop her, Ulti strikes her in the face. Angry that Ulti assaulted a young girl, Nami and Big Mom both decide to turn on her and fight her directly. Nami attacks Ulti with her Klima Tact, striking her with lightning. Sanji carries and protects Zoro as he heals, angry that he had to carry someone with a lower bounty than him. He remembers how this happened. 
previously, Law teleported Zoro and the others downstairs and ran into Sanji on the way. Law instructed Sanji to take care of Zoro while his group ran off to another area. Sanji begrudgingly took Zoro to another room and bandaged his wounds. Back in the present, Sanji continues to carry Zoro down the halls when he encounters Kawamatsu and Izu. On Zoro's advice, they go to the live floor. Back in the castle, Ulti gets back up and attacks Nami, grabbing her arm. However, Big Mom's homies, Prometheus, Napoleon, and Hera, combine into a single weapon. They use Mazer Ho, unleashing a powerful beam striking Ulti's abdomen. Ulti collapses. Zeus watches from the corner, eager to rejoin his master, but Big Mom approaches him and states that he is no longer needed in her crew. On the rooftop, Luffy and Kaido continue to fight. They clash, destroying the floor under them, and Luffy is nearly thrown off the island. Luckily, he uses a gear third technique he restabilizes himself on the island. Luffy declares he will restore the Kazuki family and become the Pirate King. However, Kaido eventually triumphs, knocking Luffy unconscious and throwing him off the island. Kaido watches as Luffy falls into the ocean, remarking that though Luffy coated himself in Haoshoku Haki, he was still sloppy and unable to wield it perfectly. He declares that Luffy would never become Joy Boy. Inside the palace, Big Mom rejects Zeus, no longer wanting him in her crew. She instructs Hera to eat Zeus so she can gain more power from his soul. Knowing that Big Mom is trying to take his life, Zeus attempts to reconcile with Nami, but Nami refuses to forgive her. So, Zeus rebels for one final time against his mother. Big Mom removes his soul before feeding his lifeless body to Hera. Hera receives a surge in energy from eating Zeus, and Nami's group decides to leave. As Tama also fled with them, Big Mom loses her compassion for her. Big Mom attacks Tama, but Kid appears and confronts her. Meanwhile, on the live floor, Queen and Perospero battle against and Chopper and the defected beast's pirates. Chopper gets the upper hand by slamming Queen's body into the floor and throwing him into a wall, but Queen is unharmed while Chopper is left exhausted. On the third floor, Yamato continues to run through the halls with his fake Momonosuke, defeating a group of gifters who fall for his decoy. The real Momonosuke is waiting in the crawl space for backup. While he is in hiding, he reads the Odins, which tells of his adventures as a pirate. However, Momonosuke suddenly detects another mysterious voice. Unbeknownst to him, he is watched by another Mary. Having located him, Bao Huang reports Momonosuke's location to Kaido, who decides to personally pursue him. As Momonosuke continues to react to the mysterious voice, Shinobu begins to panic, allowing Kinemon and Kikunojo to find them. Meanwhile, on the live floor, Chopper continues to protect everyone from Perospero's arrows. As he does so, he thinks back to a conversation he had with Kaser Clown, where the scientist offered to improve each Chopper's Rumble Ball. However, the improvement comes with a side effect, which Chopper agrees to. Back in the present, Chopper charges at Queen, but is forced to dodge a light beam, allowing Queen to regroup on the ground. He fends off an arrow wave from Perospero and is attacked again by Queen, but is able to force him off. However, as he attempts to dodge, he's grabbed by Queen again, forcing himself out and continuing to struggle. Suddenly, Bao Huang announces the end of the duel between Luffy and Kaido, declaring Kaido as the winner. Across the island, various allies and enemies react to the news, and Bao Huang announces that Kaido will re-enter the castle and begin cleaning up the remaining pirates and samurais. She offers the attackers the option to surrender and join the beast's pirates, though nobody accepts. Meanwhile, Kanjuro arrives to Momonosuke's hiding spot and creates a new Oden disguise. As he enters the hiding spot, both Momonosuke and Shinobu fall for his disguise, but Kinemon and Kikunojo realize he is really Kanjuro, holding the other two back. Kikunojo prepares to fight, cursing him for killing Ashura Doji, but she is stopped by her memories of Oden. Kanjuro takes advantage of her delay and stabs her, with Kikunojo falling to the ground. With Kikunojo out of the fight, Kinemon and Kanjuro prepare to duel. Kanjuro creates a stage for the fight, and Kinemon angrily charges at him, forcing the actor back. The two think back on their time together, and Kanjuro declares that he needs to lose Kinemon, his best friend on the stage, before falling to the ground, defeated. With the fight over, Kinemon returns to Momonosuke and Shinobu, but Kaido suddenly appears before them, 
smashing through the ceiling. Kinemon prepares to fight the Emperor as Shinobu and Momonosuke escape, and he is crushed by Kaido's Kanabo while Momonosuke watches. As Luffy sinks into the ocean, Chopper continues to battle Queen, but is demotivated from his captain's defeat. Across Onigashima, various samurai and allies react to Bao Huang's announcement, with some reacting like Chopper and some refusing to believe it. Meanwhile, Onigashima approaches Wano country proper, finally reaching the mainland. As the samurai begin to give up in their fight, the nine red scabbards continue to fight, stating they won't stop until they defeat Kaido. Izu points out how they can't confirm Luffy's death, and Kawamatsu remarks that even the possibility destroyed morale. However, Sanji refuses to even consider that Luffy lost, getting angry at the samurai for thinking that they might have lost. Back on the live floor, Queen has gotten the upper hand against Chopper, and Prospero continues to bombard the samurai with arrows. They encourage everybody to give up fighting, and Queen is about to bite Chopper. However, he's stopped by Sanji. Sanji's kick is hard enough to send Queen's head spinning, causing him to intercept all of Prospero's arrows, as well as send Prospero himself flying. He congratulates Chopper for holding off Queen enough for him to arrive, and tells him to continue trusting in Luffy, before handing him Zoro and telling to take care of the injured swordsman. Sanji resolves to fight Queen, and the samurai look on in awe, noting how he doesn't give up despite his captain having been defeated. Meanwhile, above the first floor, Kaido easily defeats Kinemon. Despite his injuries, Kinemon continues to stand up and stab Kaido, allowing Shinobu and Momonosuke time to run. As he struggles, Kinemon thinks back to when they were sent to the present day. He thinks back to when he and Momonosuke pretended to be father and son and encourages him to continue living. However, he is stabbed again by Kaido, collapsing to the floor. As Shinobu and Momonosuke run, he also thinks back to his time with Kinemon. He resolves himself to tell the ninja pirate Mink Samurai Alliance members that Luffy isn't dead and speaks into one of the Marys, announcing it across the island. He declares that Luffy is speaking to him and encourages the allies to continue fighting until Luffy returns to the island. Luffy will defeat Kaido. The people located on the live floor begin to cheer and are reinvigorated in their fights. However, Momonosuke and Shinobu are still being followed by Kaido and are forced to flee, being thrown outside the Skull Dome. However, before Kaido can crush them, Shinobu is able to destroy the floor using her abilities and the pair fall into the ocean. Bao Huang and a horse gifter decide to announce their fall, hoping to demoralize the remaining samurai. Meanwhile, Nami, Usopp, and Tama continue heading towards the live floor, hoping to allow Tama to take control of all the smile users who have eaten her dango. As they talk, Nami's climb attack responds, shocking the trio. Elsewhere, Kid prepares to battle Big Mom when Law suddenly arrives. He offers to form a temporary alliance with Kid to defeat Big Mom. Meanwhile, in the flower capital, the residents of Wano celebrate the fire festival. Tenguyama, Hitetsu, and Toko walk through the town together, and he explains the festival to her. Toko wonders if her father is watching them, and Hitetsu responds that he's sure he is. Back in Onigashima, the CP0 present assess the ongoing battle. They notice how nobody surrendered even after Luffy's supposed defeat, and count 5,000 soldiers who can no longer fight. With the pleasures and gifters present on the live floor switching sides, the Beast Pirates now have 20,000 combatants, and the Ninja Pirate Mink Samurai Alliance have 7,000. Back with Nami, Usopp, and Tama, the group is trying to identify why Nami's climb attack can suddenly speak. Usopp wonders if might secretly be a genius, but the climb attack responds that it's actually Zeus. He reveals that when Nami tried to feed him black balls, he was pressed into her climb attack. Nami tries to shake him out of the baton, but he points out that he can't leave without Big Mom's power, so she gives up and continues running. The trio finally arrive at the live floor, exiting a door directly behind Bao Huang. As she's about to announce Momonosuke's fall from Onigashima, she is alerted to their presence, which distracts Usopp and allows Ulti to attack him from behind. She grabs Tama, angry that she's been able to make Beast's Pirates members switch sides and prepares to attack her. However, she's attacked by Nami and Zeus, who can now extend and transform the climb attack. Usopp is able to attack Ulti from behind, separating her and Tama, which allows Nami to prepare a lightning strike without fear of hurting Tama. Meanwhile, the Heart Pirates hear a voice underwater, finding Luffy sinking. They travel to save him, wondering how they can even hear his voice. At the same time, Yamato reaches the roof, seeing Kaido at the edge of the island and announcing that he's cutting ties. The Heart Pirates find a sinking Luffy, 
positioning their submarine underneath him and pushing him to the surface. They begin trying to treat him, forcing the water he swallowed out of his stomach. Meanwhile, Shinobu and Momonosuke fall from Onigashima. Shinobu uses a kite and the pair glide to the Wano mainland. However, when they land, Momonosuke bursts into tears, worried over the Kinemon and Kiku. Back on Onigashima, Ulti is terrorizing Tama when she's suddenly attacked by Nami. Zeus offers to send a lightning blast, but Nami argues that it would hurt Tama. However, Usopp is able to separate her, and Nami attacks Ulti with a lightning blast. She tries to dodge the strike, but Zeus redirects himself to hit her, knocking the Tobarapo unconscious. Panicking, Bao Huang accidentally announces Ulti's and Page One's defeats over the Mary system, causing panic across the gifters and pleasures. Taking advantage of her panicking, Usopp incapacitates Bao Huang, informing Tama that she works as a transmitter. As the allies across the island are overwhelmed with numbers, Tama speaks into the transmitter, converting the gifters tamed by her power into allies. Elsewhere, Yamato informs Kaido of his decision to cut their familiar ties. Kaido tries to persuade him otherwise, stating that he defeated both Luffy and Momonosuke, but Yamato refuses to change his mind. Yamato declares his intention to set out to sea, stating that he will force Kaido to leave Wano. However, Kaido refuses to be a pirate elsewhere, stating he must stay in Wano. The two clash with Yamato intending on forcing Kaido to remain on the rooftop until Luffy returns. Across Onigashima, the gifters who have eaten Tama's dango begin to switch sides, attacking former allies. A Mary reports the mass betrayal to CP0 as the combat devolves even further into chaos. The Beast's pirates react in angry confusion, while the Alliance members welcome the change. Nami, Tama, and Usopp celebrate their success, drawing attention from Queen. However, as he tries to shoot them, he is attacked by Sanji, instead shooting the inside of his mouth. He welcomes the son of Judge, angering Sanji, and reveals that he is a former member of the science group Mads. As he prepares to fight, Queen reveals he is a cyborg and enters his human beast form. The surrounding beast pirates panic at his transformation, but Sanji ignores him, confirming with Chopper that Zoro will recover. As he turns to ask, however, he notices that Chopper has entered a new transformation, the baby Gigi, as a result of his Rumble Ball transformation. However, as they talk, Sanji is attacked by Queen, and he prepares to face off. Chopper begins explaining his new form to Tristan, and Sanji begins fighting Queen. His explanation complete, Chopper turns to helping Zoro. Miyagi informs him about a powerful instant recovery drug from Zoo. However, should he take it, his pain will be doubled when the drug wears off. Chopper decides not to give Zoro the drug, but Zoro insists on receiving it, stating that he wants to return to the fight. Elsewhere, the CP0 agents calculate the traitorous gifters, estimating 300 people switch sides. Meanwhile, Nami, Tama, and Usopp try to find a safe space to hide, having completed their mission. As they run through the halls, they are attacked by a group of gifters. However, they're suddenly saved by Dai Fugo and joined by Speed and Gazelman, who offer lifts to the group. Gazelman also informs them that he found Komachio unconscious. Elsewhere, Jinbei and Who's Who begin to fight. Among his attacks, Who's Who incorporates Soru, Rankyaku, and Tekai, prompting Jinbei to remark that he's using a world government fighting style. He brings up a story about a CP9 agent escaping from prison, and Who's Who confirms that he's the agent. As the two continue fighting, Who's Who begins explaining his past as a government agent, though Jinbei has trouble understanding how the story is relevant to him. However, Who's Who explains that 13 years ago, he was tasked with protecting a devil fruit. The fruit was stolen and later eaten by Monkey D. Luffy. Speed carries Tama, Nami, and Usopp through Onigashima, with Gazelleman and Dai Fugo following close behind. The headliners defend the trio and promise to recover Kamachio. Tama thanks them and declares themselves friends, prompting Zeus to ask Nami if he can become her attendant again. However, she declines, and he begins asking for increasingly low positions, none of which she accepts. He apologizes for his actions, and Nami accepts, asking him to be her partner. Elsewhere, the present CP0 agents speculate that 2,000 soldiers switch sides due to Tama's abilities, which after discounting 2,000 beast pirates due to injury, leaves the field at 16,000 versus 9,000. However, they remark that it has no effect on them, noting that they only need to confirm Who's Who's death as punishment for leaving CP9. Meanwhile, Jimbei and Who's Who continue their discussion. Jimbei asks why Who's Who left the world government and became a pirate, but Who's Who just responds that Jimbei functionally did the same thing. However, he insulted Luffy at the same time, annoying Jimbei. 
The two argue over their opinions of Luffy, with Who's Who saying that he was disappointed by his fight with Kaido and Jinbei, stating that Luffy will return. In the ocean, the Heart Pirates continue trying to resuscitate Luffy. Who's Who states that he will simply kill Luffy, and Jinbei promises to defeat Who's Who instead. He thinks back to his past with Luffy, swearing to fight as the helmsman of the Straw Hat Pirates. Who's Who begins repeatedly attacking Jinbei, but the Fishman just dodges his attacks. Who's Who attempts to reinitiate small talk with Jinbei, but he declines, and Who's Who offers to instead talk after chewing up Jinbei's limbs. He charges at Jinbei, but Jinbei catches and throws him, crashing him into the ground. Who's Who once again initiates conversation, asking Jinbei to listen while he tells him a story. He tells Jinbei that while he was imprisoned, he was mockingly told to pray for salvation from the sun god Nika, a legendary warrior of ancient times who would supposedly free slaves. While Who's Who wasn't convinced of Nika's existence, he was desperate enough to continue believing in him, praying for any help in his imprisonment. Jinbei asks how this information is relevant to him, and Who's Who brings up the past slavery of Sun Pirates members and Fishmen as a whole, asking Jinbei for more information about Nika. He informs Jinbei that the guard who told him about Nika was eventually executed, and asks if it's dangerous to even know of his existence. He begins once again bombarding Jinbei with attacks, asking if he knows a lot about slavery due to being a fish man. However, Jinbei just catches Who's Who's arms, stating that he has nothing to tell him. He breaks Who's Who's fingers and steps on his tail, destroying Who's Who and the arena behind him with a single punch. Who's Who flies backwards into the wall, collapsing on top of him, and Jinbei tells him that if he wants to investigate history, then he needs to be prepared for what he'll find. Kaido and Yamato clash on the Onigashima rooftop, as Yamato attempts to cut ties with his father. However, Kaido refuses to accept it, instead trying to convince Yamato to become the shogun of Wano under Kaido. Yamato states that he will continue to believe in Luffy and that he will stall Kaido until he returns. He transforms into his human beast form, vowing to protect Wano. On the live floor, Queen continues to attack Sanji, bragging about his powers as a cyborg. However, Sanji argues that he can only use what he's given, angering Queen. He begins shooting beams at Sanji, forcing him to continue dodging. Sanji remarks that Frankie would like Queen's laser technology, only further annoying Queen. As Sanji continues to dodge the lasers, Zoro convinces Chopper and Miyagi to give him the miracle drug. Elsewhere, gifters under Tama's influence begin assisting Frankie, driving off the beast's pirates who were surrounding him. Sasaki informs the gifters that they're committing treason and charges at Frankie, but he's able to catch him and throw him upwards into the ceiling. The two realize that they're both very durable, with Sasaki transforming into his human beast form. Back on the roof, Kaido continues trying to convince Yamato to stay by his side. He remarks that he didn't intend for Yamato to eat his fruit, and Yamato responds that he's also mad since he can no longer swim. Back in the right brain tower, Sasaki and Frankie both draw their swords. Frankie instructs the surrounding gifters to go help others, but Sasaki suddenly begins spinning his propeller frills, confusing Frankie. Sasaki begins to fly, charging forward and sending the gifters flying. Frankie is forced on the defensive, preparing the general shield in anticipation of Sasaki's next charge. However, Sasaki accidentally spins his frills the wrong direction, throwing himself backwards instead. He follows up with a charge forward, successfully blowing one of the thrusters on the general Frankie's shoulder. However, Frankie managed to grab Sasaki, suplexing him into the ground. In the ocean, the heart pirates continue trying to wake up Luffy. He finally regains consciousness and begins demanding meat. Yamato and Kaido continue to duel on the rooftop, with Yamato officially refusing Kaido's offer to become Shogun. Meanwhile, Frankie points out Sasaki's stomach cut despite his toughness, attempting to slash his stomach again. However, Sasaki avoids it and the two begin a sword fight. Frankie is eventually forced to run, launching a general cannon at Sasaki. Sasaki avoids the attack, charging at Frankie, but in the process makes himself vulnerable for a Frankie radical beam to the stomach. Back on the rooftop, Kaido laments Yamato having eaten the Inu Inu no Mi model, Okuchi no Mikami, and asks once again for Yamato to become Shogun under him. Yamato refuses once again, and begins shooting ice at Kaido, though the latter counters the ice shots with a blast of fire. Inside Onigashima, Brook and Robin walk through fog, with Nico Olvia suddenly appearing before them. Saul and Clover quickly follow suit, gesturing towards Robin. She reminisces her time with the three of them, remembering their deaths. However, she realizes soon enough that those are simply mere illusions. 
knocking away Nuri Ona, Kunyun, and Tenjo Sagari, who were embodying these illusions. As Robin runs from Black Maria's gifters, she is joined by Brooke, who relieves that she was not tricked by the illusion mist. However, they are suddenly attacked by Black Maria herself, who admonishes Robin for attacking her own mother. She calls them cruel for attacking their friends and family, but the duo ignore her, and Robin remarks that Brooke was immune to the mist as well. He explains that he saw his old crew in the mist. Together, the old friends played Bink's sake for the first time in 50 years, as Brooke thought back to his time as one of their companions. As he thought back, he was attacked by the Beast's Pirates member disguised as Yorkie, though he was able to dodge the attack in time. He reveals that he was simply reminded that his old crewmates are dead as he defeats the impersonators one by one. Continuing his conversation with Robin, Brooke explains that while being stuck in the Florian Triangle for 50 years, he constantly wished his crewmates had been alive, even hallucinating that they were. However, every time he imagined them, the fantasy was broken, and he was forced to reconcile with their deaths. As the two continue running, Robin points out that they have a lot in common, and Brooke thinks back to his time joining the Straw Hat Pirates. While Robin and Brooke keep running, Black Maria swipes at them, burning the floor behind them. She shoots Silk to the roof and jumps above them, forcing them to suddenly stop. She begins spinning Juan Yudo around, causing Robin to grab onto the ceiling and lift the two straw hats off the floor. Robin advises Black Maria to stop spreading fire, but Black Maria ignores her, asking her to surrender instead. Brooke suddenly realizes that Juan Yudo is a living being, sending his soul through him and freezing him, stopping his flames. Black Maria angrily swipes at the ceiling, causing the straw hats to fall to the floor. As the two fall, Brooke covers the ground in ice, breaking their fall. Black Maria tries to state that Sanji sold out Robin, hence the reason he called for help, but Robin ignores her. Brooke leaves Black Maria to Robin, promising to defeat her gifters instead. Once Brooke leaves, Robin argues with Black Maria's description of Sanji and begins fighting back in earnest. Robin creates a giant version of herself, grabbing Black Maria with multiple extra sets of giant hands. However, Black Maria begins slicing at the arms, causing injuries to form on Robin herself. Noticing Robin received the injuries, Black Maria launches multiple tendrils of thread, blocking the movement of Robin's enlarged limbs. Back on mainland, Momonosuke and Shinobu watch as Onigashima flies more inland. They suddenly notice the polar tang at the shore, with Luffy loudly shouting for meat. He quickly eats through all the Heart Pirate's provisions, while still asking for more, when Momonosuke and Shinobu run over to him. The Heart Pirates explain how they found Luffy, and Momonosuke explains what happened to Kikunojo and Kinemon. Momonosuke begins crying, and Luffy yells at him to stop, stating he'll be the next Shogun. He then begins yelling for meat again, as Caribou arrives behind a shipwrecked ship, offering meat to the Heart Pirates. Meanwhile, Luffy asks Momonosuke to transform into a dragon and bring him back up to Onigashima. Black Maria shoots her webs at Robin's enlarged form, grabbing her arms and stopping their movement. She forces Robin's arms open, undoing her defenses, and jumps on top of her to begin punching her. Eventually, Robin cancels her technique, recreating her giant arms behind Black Maria. However, Black Maria is able to block the attack, burning the webs she used and surrounding Robin in the process. Black Maria begins swiping at Robin, forcing her to evade, until she ends up caught in one of Black Maria's webs. Black Maria states that she's only getting payback for Robin punching her earlier, and she hits Robin again, throwing her into another set of webs. As she continues to beat Robin, she berates her, stating that she's only useful as somebody who can read the poneglyphs. Black Maria's insults remind Robin of her childhood and time on the run, and Brooke advises Black Maria to run before it's too late. As Robin continues to think back, she remembers a training session with the Revolutionary Army during which she learned a new slapping technique that applies fishman karate techniques. She creates another giant arm, slapping the ceiling above her and crashing debris above Black Maria, putting out the fire in the process. Free from the webs, Robin creates another giant body, this one in the shape of a demon. She generates more arms, trapping Black Maria in a grappling hold. She then knocks her unconscious with clutch. Hearing Black Maria's scream, her gifters try to see through Brooke's ice wall. They realize the Black Maria has lost, and while in a panic, are swiftly defeated by Brooke. Back on the Wano mainland, Luffy eats the food provided by Caribou. As he eats, he reassures the Heart Pirates that their captain is alive, 
and Momonosuke tries to convince a shinobu to transform him into an adult. Ameri watches Black Maria, the last remaining Tobirapo, face defeat. Raizo enters battle against Fukurokuju, but Fukurokuju uses his long earlobes as whips, knocking him to the ground. Killer battles Hawkins and manages to slash him, but Hawkins' Devil Fruit ability allows him to redirect the damage onto other people, leaving himself unharmed. When Killer stabs Hawkins, he instead injures Kid, hurting his battle with Big Mom. Killer realizes that he cannot harm Hawkins without first killing his own captain. On the live floor, Sanji is left to battle against both King and Queen while Zoro continues to heal, waiting for the drug to take effect. Prospero attempts to sabotage Sanji by shooting him with his candy bow, but Nekomamushi appears and strikes him out of the castle. King and Queen get the upper hand and strike Sanji down, while Queen brutally punishes the defected gifters. King decides to pursue and attack Zoro while he is incapacitated. Although Chopper's group attempts to take Zoro away, King stops them, with the drug having yet to take effect. King intercepts Chopper's group, which is carrying Zoro. Sanji sees this and tries to defend against King, but is shot by Queen's laser. Marco manages to block King's attack and the two square off. Marco talks of a race that could ignite themselves, and once lived on top of the red line and says that he didn't expect to meet one in King. King and Queen are prepared to fight Marco, but he surrenders seeing that Zoro has recovered from his injuries, thanks to the drug given to him by Miyagi. Zoro deflects Queen's attack. He and Sanji then proceed to attack the two All-Stars. Marco spaces out as he watches the fight. He recalls his conversation with Whitebeard about how Mary Juaz used to be the Land of Gods. He is then saved by Izu when some beast pirates shoot at Marco while he is in a daze. During their fight, Sanji notices something different in his body from when he put on his raid suit a while back. Queen notices this too, as he claims that Sanji must also be a cyborg like Judge's other children, since no human can ignite themselves unless he's a Lunarian. As the four continue to battle, Hayogoro and Kawamatsu notice Zoro's similarities with the former daimyo of Ringo, Shimotsuki Ushimaru, who was a descendant of the god of the blade, Shimotsuki Ryuma, from the way he stands, his one eye, down to his swordplay. They feel that the fact that he returned Shusui to Wano was fate. Meanwhile in Tokage port, Luffy regains his strength and looks for Momonosuke. Shinobu responds to Luffy as two giant eyes appear behind the shadows. The castle is slowly being engulfed by fire. A large number of beast pirates quickly move towards the live floor where Sanji, Zoro, King, and Queen are fighting. Hiogoro and Kawamatsu see this and stop them from interfering with the fight. Meanwhile, Frankie defeats Sasaki and fends off some beast pirates. However, he runs out of cola, so Bipo, Penguin, and Shachi step in. On the second floor of the castle, Nami, Usopp, and Tama are riding on speeds back, with Zeus following close by. They are running away from beast pirates when a crocodile gifter blocks their way. This forces speed to accelerate, which causes Usopp to fall off her back. On the same floor, Law and Kid are battling with Big Mom. Her Haushoku Haki causes a large number of beast pirates to lose consciousness, which saves Usopp from their attacks. Usopp bluffs about causing the surge of Haki and urges the remaining conscious beast pirates to join him. On the third floor, Brook is carrying an unconscious Robin inside the burning floor. On the fourth floor, Jinbei and Heat are also fighting beasts pirates. Meanwhile, at the rooftop, Yamato barely manages to keep Kaido preoccupied while waiting for Luffy to return. In the treasure repository, Jack and Inuarashi are still engaged in battle. Jack seems to have the upper hand since Inuarashi is indoors and unable to use his Sulong form. However, using the memory of Jack's transgressions against him, he gets a surge of energy to toss Jack over his shoulder, which breaks a wall leading to a portion of the castle where the roof was blown off. Now with the moon visible, Inuarashi transforms into his Sulong form. Outside, Nekomamushi faces Prospero, vowing to avenge Pedro's death. He too transforms into a Sulong. In Tokage Port, Caribou and the other heart pirates see a large dragon and are frightened as it resembles Kaido. Luffy approaches the dragon, knowing that it is actually Momonosuke. Shinobu reveals that she used her Juku Juku no Mi abilities to age him to 28 years old at the young shogun's request. Luffy then tells Momonosuke that it's time for them to take Wano back. Luffy rides on Momonosuke's back, and they start flying towards Kaido. However, being afraid of heights and having realized that they have been flying, Momonosuke comes crashing down. Meanwhile, Yamato and Kaido continue to fight. Yamato remembers the first time he saw Odin and how the latter's sacrifice to save his retainers touched him as a young child. This caused the young Yamato to rampage around the castle. Beast pirates tried to restrain him, but he inadvertently used Haushoku Haki and knocked out most of them. Ultimately, the men were able to restrain him, 
and Kaido went to investigate the commotion caused by his son. When Yamato declared his love for Odin and declared himself to be Odin, Kaido chained him and locked him up inside the sacred cave. Kaido saw that his son had potential as he was able to knock out a number of his men using hockey. He told Yamato that he would be locked up for a month to cool his head, but if he changed his mind and joined his army, he would only need to call out from the cave's air hole in the ceiling. Yamato begged for his father to release him and to give him food since he was starving, but the emperor left him inside with three samurai who were also held captive. He also left the samurai their swords and a meal good for one person. It was then revealed that after Odin's execution, Daimyos from across the land stood up, with the three being the fiercest of them all. Yamato was frightened at the thought of being left alone with the samurai who undoubtedly hated his father and could possibly take it out on him. However, the three samurai showed him nothing but kindness. They gave him the food, released him from his chains, and trained him. When he saw that the samurai did not intend to harm him, he asked them to help him read Odin's journal which he found at the foot of Odin Castle. The four read the journal together, which detailed Odin's travels from the time Roger asked Whitebeard to lend him Odin so he could reach the final island, up to when Roger's crew finally reached Laugh Tale. The journal detailed that in 20 years, the next era would come surging into the new world. After 10 days, the samurai resolved to escape from the cave after seeing that Kaido had no plans on releasing his own son. They also had no intention of rotting away inside the cave, and while they would not be able to see the battle that would happen in 20 years, they were reassured knowing that people like Yamato would still be there to fight. Back in the present, Yamato and Kaido are still exchanging blows, with Yamato remembering that there were people who believed in him and accepted him. He demands to know why his father is taking away his freedom and the freedom of Wano. Kaido answers that life isn't a series of simple questions and answers. Luffy urges Momonosuke to fly and grows impatient, but the young master is crippled by his fear of heights. Meanwhile, Yamato keeps Kaido busy and the two continue to exchange blows. Yamato manages to make Kaido bleed and is able to defend against Kaido's attacks using Mira Mountain. He declares that he cannot die until Luffy comes back. Kaido mocks Yamato's resolve to protect Wano since Yamato is still his son, so the people of Wano would never look at him as an ally. Kaido further laughs at how Yamato doesn't even have any friends. Yamato disagrees as he remembers Ace who became his friend when the latter came to Wano. However, he also remembers when he was a child and one of Kaido's men helped him by giving him food when he was starving and a blanket when it was cold. This same pirate was executed when it was found out that he was helping Kaido's son. Kaido points out that all of those who have been good to Yamato are all dead, including the samurai who were locked up with him in the sacred cave. Yamato rebuffs him, saying that they all died because he killed him, to which Kaido replies that they were getting in the way of him educating his child. Back in Tokaj port, Luffy pulls on Momonosuke's dragon whiskers to force him to fly. Ultimately, Momonosuke takes flight towards Onigashima, albeit with closed eyes due to fear. Flying blindly, Momonosuke crashes into the Skull Dome and flies through the castle, destroying walls and ceilings as he runs wild. He finally opens his eyes and finds his way to the rooftop where they see Kaido and Yamato. Yamato prepares his Shinsoku Hakujaku technique and Luffy joins him in Gear 4, using his Snake Man jet culverin technique. The two attack at the same time, which sends Kaido flying across the rooftop. After sending Kaido flying across the rooftop, Luffy thanks Yamato for holding back Kaido, and Yamato tells Luffy how relieved he is that Luffy has finally arrived. Kaido then emerges in his dragon form, unscathed. He is in disbelief that Luffy survived his previous injuries. He notices the pink dragon before him and demands to know who he is. Although frightened at first, Momonosuke answers that he is Kazuki Momonosuke, the one who will become the Shogun of Wano. Meanwhile, the people in the flower capital are oblivious to the events on Onigashima. Toko and Hitetsu join the festivities, with Toko remembering her adoptive father, Yasui. Hitetsu, on the other hand, is reminded of his ward, Tama, who joined the fight in Onigashima and worries for her safety. Ameri reports updates on the rooftop to Queen, which the others in the Skull Dome also hear. Elsewhere, Inuarashi and Nekomamushi seem to be winning their fights against Jack and Prospero, respectively. However, clouds slowly obstruct the full moon, and the Minks are transformed out of their Sulong form. Deprived of their Sulong form and drained of their energy, the Minks are overwhelmed by their opponents. On the rooftop, Kaido is about to breathe fire on Momonosuke, so Luffy urges the Pink Dragon to do the same. However, Momonosuke doubts he can produce such an attack, so Luffy instead tells him to bite the Emperor. 
Momonosuke is horrified by this suggestion. Kaido blasts him with successive bolo breaths, which Momonosuke barely manages to evade. Momonosuke remembers what he and his family went through in the hands of Kaido, so he musters up the courage to sink his teeth onto the blue dragon. An angered Kaido is about to blast another attack when Luffy punches him in the face, preventing Kaido from breathing fire. Luffy shouts his praises for Momonosuke, which is heard all throughout Onigashima. Luffy tells Momonosuke that he just bit an emperor of the sea, so there should be nothing left in the world that can scare him. Momonosuke realizes what he just did and concurs. Luffy's proud declaration from the Skull Dome rooftop inspires the remaining fighters of the Alliance to continue fighting. With this, Zoro and Sanji increase their efforts, beginning to overpower King and Queen. However, Kaido re-emerges from the rubble after being bitten. After both leaping into the air, Luffy and Kaido clash once again, creating a powerful explosion that breaks apart the clouds above and revealing the night sky. Upon Luffy's instruction, Momonosuke and Yamato then leap off the edge of the island, aiming to stop Onigashima from moving. The explosion created by Luffy and Kaido, which revealed the full moon, allows Inuarashi and Nekomamushi to transform back into their Sulong forms. They both use Odin One Sword style. Nekomamushi uses Neko Niko Band to strike a powerful uppercut, defeating Prospero and shattering his candy arm. Inuarashi uses Inu Spire on Jack, sending a piercing shockwave that destroys his stomach plate and knocks him out. Jack's defeat is observed by Orochi, who is still alive and hiding and horrified that an all-star has been defeated. On the rooftop, Luffy and Kaido resume their battle. Momonosuke and Yamato fly away from the island to try to move it back. They find out that Kaido's flame clouds are quickly weakening, and the island risks collapsing and crashing into the flower capital below. Momonosuke attempts to push the island, but to no avail. He finds that he will have to create flame clouds of his own to support the island. On the live floor, Sanji's battle with Queen continues, and Zoro's battle with King. Zoro sends a flying slash that slices off a spike from King's outfit. As this was the first time that King's mask was compromised, he quickly grows infuriated and transforms back into his pterodactyl form, sending flying slashes into the battle. Several fighters are hit by the slashes and one slash hits Queen's behind. Zoro and King separate from the other fighters. Zoro slices off another piece of King's mask, revealing part of his scalp. King's attack sends Zoro flying off the island, but Zoro manages to get back onto the island. They continue the battle in the air. Meanwhile, as they battle inside, Queen begs Sanji to put on his raid suit. Momonosuke attempts to make flame clouds in order to move Onigashima, but he struggles to create them as the clouds immediately disintegrate. Yamato decides to leave him and go back into the island to secure explosives. As explosives are stored on the island, if the island crashes into the flower capital, the explosion will be amplified by the explosives. To prevent this, Yamato climbs back onto the island and runs inside. Luchi contacts Guernica and the other members of CP0 on the island, planning their moves. If the Alliance wins the battle and Kaido falls, the world government plans to seize Wano country to make it a member state. Luchi informs them that reinforcements are on the way. He also informs them of another target of interest, Nico Robin. Sanji's battle with Queen intensifies as he uses Diablo Yambe against Queen. Queen uses his Braccio Joris move. With his cyborg enhancements, he detaches his head and tail from his body so his body resembles a snake. He captures Sanji and constricts him, breaking his bones and crushing him. However, Queen accidentally fires missiles at himself, freeing Sanji from his grasp. Strangely, Sanji gets up and finds that he was unharmed by Queen's attack. Although his bones are broken and dented, he is able to pound his body back into place. Queen attempts to behead Sanji, only for the blade to shatter against Sanji's neck and cause him only minor pain. Sanji realizes that he may have genetic enhancements just like his siblings. Killer continues his battle against Hawkins, but the battle is not in his favor. Thanks to his devil fruit abilities, Hawkins has total immunity from Killer's attacks, with the damage inflicted being redirected to Kid. Killer's subordinates arrive to his aid, but Killer refuses to attack Hawkins. So Hawkins decides to harm Kid himself by repeatedly slamming his head into the wall. The damage is redirected to Kid's head, proving especially disadvantageous to Kid due to his battle with Big Mom. When Killer declares that Kid will become the Pirate King, this angers Hawkins, causing him to ruthlessly beat Killer. With a single attack, Killer slices off Hawkins' left arm. Because Kid lost his left arm prior, the attack leaves him totally unharmed. Instead, Hawkins loses his own arm. Killer pulls the straw doll out of Hawkins' severed arm and destroys it, undoing the damage dealt to Kid's body. 
Hawkins no longer has any people left to redirect damage to and is now completely vulnerable to attacks. In a last-ditch effort, Hawkins draws a tarot card. He reveals the death card upright, summoning a giant straw monster. Killer decapitates the monster with the Zanshu claw move, instantly destroying it. Hawkins draws a second card, only to find to his horror that he drew the tower card. With this, Killer sliced Hawkins with Jin Sonic, defeating him and causing him to collapse. The tower card is assigned two meanings, the death of the old and a new path. After Queen's blade shatters upon contact with Sanji's neck, Sanji realizes that he may have scientific enhancements just like his siblings. Even when his enemies shoot him with firearms, he survives uninjured. Still, he denies his abilities due to contempt of his old family. X-Drake continues his battle against combatant beast pirates when he is confronted by Scratchman Apu. Apu suggests an underhanded proposition. Given that both sides of the battle would be heavily damaged after the raid, Apu suggests the formation of an alliance to defeat the weakened victor after the battle concludes. On his side are three numbers, Inbi, Fuga, and Zanki. Drake is uninterested by this offer, untrusting of Apu. Tama and her tamed beast pirates try to escape the fire, but they come face to face with Kinemon's lower body. Apparently, he survived his defeat at Kaido's hands as he had already been bifurcated by law. While his upper body remains in the attic attempting to wake up Kiku, his lower body looks for allies. His lower body can communicate, but cannot hear others because his ears are on his other half. He reunites with Nami's group after she traces the reverse crescent on his leg, allowing him to identify her as an ally. On the third floor, Brooke continues to escort Robin away, but is confronted by Guernica and the members of CP0. Guernica attempts to capture Robin, but mink combatants come to her support. Kanjuro reveals to have also survived his defeat and is in contact with Orochi. On Orochi's order, Kanjuro decides to give a final performance using his Devil Fruit ability. To symbolize the burning hatred of the Kurozumi family, he uses Kazenbo. He draws and creates a large ghost-like entity wreathed in flames. The monster passes through walls and sets everything it touches on fire. Shortly after creating the monster, Kanjuro collapses, finally succumbing to his injuries. The Marys announce that the Skull Dome is now on fire. Sanji continues his battle against Queen, Zoro battles fiercely against King in the air, and Luffy and Kaido continue their combat on the roof of the Skull Dome. As Momonosuke attempts to create the flame, clouds needed to stop Onigashima, Yamato runs to the armory to secure the explosives. However, on Orochi's command, Kanjuro's fire monster also heads towards the armory to ignite the explosives to destroy the island. Yamato gets to the armory first and heads to the door. Meanwhile, Law and Kid continue their battle against Big Mom, but their attacks are futile because of her homies. So they decide to carry out an ace card, their awakened powers. After the castle is devastated by Big Mom's Ikoku, Law his awakened powers, allowing him to coat objects with room. He coats his sword, inserts it into Big Mom's neck, and unleashes Shock Willa, striking her with an electrical shock. Kid uses his awakened powers, allowing him to make other objects magnetic. He makes Big Mom magnetic, causing objects including Napoleon to fly towards her. Then he magnetizes the castle's pillars, causing them to strike her and crush her. Although Big Mom was finally damaged for the first time in the battle, she survived the entire attack, now enraged. Using Soul Pocus, she steals the lifespans of the soldiers, using the souls to create homies. Then she consumes an entire year's worth of her own lifespan, causing her to grow to a gigantic size. Apu tries to convince X-Drake to team up against Kaido after the Emperor defeats Luffy. He states that Kaido has never been weakened like this, so now is the time to defeat him. However, X-Drake rejects his offer and attacks Apu instead. The skirmish is interrupted by Yamato, who is in a hurry to go to the armory and stop Onigashima from exploding. Elsewhere, CP0 agents have come to take Nico Robin. However, the minks attack the agents as a distraction, allowing Brook and Robin to escape. Meanwhile, Sanji is fleeing from his fight against Queen after he noticed that his body had started mutating. His fears of turning into a cold-blooded Germa soldier like his brothers is slowly taking over him. He fails to notice a lady calling to him for help, and he only regains his senses when he sees the said lady on the floor bleeding and looking at him in terror. He rushes to help her, but she begs him not to come closer. Osum, as the woman is called, rushes to a nearby room where other geishas have been hiding. Sanji again offers to help Osum, but the other women chastise him for hurting a defenseless woman. The women drive him outside their hiding place where he finds Queen who had been looking for him. Sanji is shaken by the thought of possibly striking a woman. He comes to the realization that his mutation was brought about by his use of his germa suit. 
He wonders if Luffy would rather have an unreliable crewmate who is helpless against women, or a cruel and heartless warrior who is able to bring anybody's head when he's ordered. He ponders what the future Pirate King needs and decides to destroy his Germa suit. Using a Denden Mushi, Sanji calls Zoro, who is in the middle of his fight against King. Unsure if his mutation will change him for good, he asks the swordsman, once the battle is won, to kill him if he ever loses his humanity. Zoro gladly accepts and tells Sanji not to die before then. Shortly after, Sanji turns seemingly invisible and hits Queen with his Hell Memories attack. An angered Big Mom promises to inflict unspeakable pain towards Law and Kid. She sicks her homies on the two which they barely fend off. Meanwhile, Kezinbo is wreaking havoc and burning everything on its path. Samurai and Beast pirates all flee in a panic. Elsewhere, Brook and Robin are on the run with the CP0 hot on their tail. Yamato is still charging his way towards the armory, hoping to reach the bomb stored there before Kazenbo reaches them. In the treasure repository, Orochi listens with excitement to the chaos brought about by Kazenbo, which was created to exact vengeance in the name of the Kurozami clan. Suddenly, he hears a shamisen playing nearby. He is drawn to the sound which reminds him of his beloved Komurasaki. Outside, a determined Mamanosuke is frantically creating flame clouds to prevent Onigashima from crashing down onto the flower capital. Zoro and King are still in battle. Zoro is overwhelmed by King's attacks, which he deems to be unblockable. He notices the flames on King's back and wonders out loud if this is an ability from his devil fruit. King hears this and answers that it is not a feature of the Pteranodon. Zoro attacks with three sword style, black rope dragon twister, but King easily overcomes this. Zoro is at a loss at how durable King is, noting that it must be because of his dinosaur devil fruit. King agrees, but hints that it might also be because he is also a little unique. Zoro concludes that King's durability, wings and flames, are a feature of a tribe that is unknown to him. Zoro is knocked down and exhausted. All of a sudden, Zoro hears the sound of a shamisen which causes Enma to start draining his hockey and emaciate his arm. Inside, Orochi crawls towards the shamisen player and sees Komurasaki alive and well. He cries out in tears while she greets him with a smile. Kazenbo continues to make its way down to the armory. The beast pirates and samurai try in vain to stop its descent. Yamato realizes that the flame specter is moving through walls and that it will be reaching the armory soon. He urgently moves faster, enlisting the help of the numbers Fuga. Atop Fuga's head are Brook and Robin. Knowing that the CP0 are just behind the flames, they hop off and quickly put distance between them and the agents. The CP0, still in pursuit, are stopped when their pictures are taken by Apu, who plans to sell the photos to Morgans of the World Economy newspaper. After Apu reveals his plans, one of agents attacks him using his Shigen technique. The agent then turns his sights onto X Drake and attacks him using the same technique. He is, however, stopped by Apu, who survived by defending himself using Busashoku Haki. Apu uses Scratch Boom, which sends the agent flying. X Drake suggests that they team up to take down the CP0 agents, and Apu gladly accepts. Meanwhile, Onigashima is inching closer towards the flower capital. Momonosuke is still creating flame clouds to prevent the floating island from crashing. He remembers his promise to Luffy, Yamato, and the citizens of Wano, and the reason why he asked Shinobuto age him. He is determined not to betray this promise and keep everyone safe. Inside, Komurasaki plays her shamisen while Orochi watches tearfully. The sound of the shamisen causes Enma to drain Zoro's haki. Seeing Zoro trying to stop Enma from fully draining him, King mocks how Zoro is having a falling out with his friend. The two continue their clash, with King continuously ridiculing and insulting Zoro. Elsewhere, Sanji attacks Queen with Hell Memories, which sends the latter flying. However, the All-Star laughs it off, expressing his disappointment that he was not able to see Sanji use his Germa suit. Queen proceeds to provoke Sanji, calling him mentally weak for asking Zoro for help. He tells Sanji that Zoro isn't any better, and that he will not be able to defeat King since King is a Lunarian, a race people once revered as gods. Sanji brushes this off, asking how gods manage to become extinct. Zoro is at a loss at how to defeat King. He attacks using his one sword style Yi, -E, Death Lion's Song, an attack he deems to be stronger than his previous attacks. However, this does not cause any damage to King. Zoro hears the Shamisen, and once again, Enma drains his Haki. At the same time, King attacks Zoro with Tempurauden and lands a hit on Zoro. This hit causes Zoro to let go of his swords. King notes that this is the first time he has ever seen a swordsman being held back by his own swords. Zoro falls and tries to retrieve his blades. He recalls the day he obtained Sandai Kitetsu, 
the cursed sword forged by Tenguyama Hitetsu. King attacks Zoro in midair, which sends him crashing onto the side of the floating island. There, he finds Wado Ichimonji, the sword of Kuina, his childhood friend. In a flashback, Hitetsu explains that Enma and Wado Ichimonji were forged by the same person, the legendary swordsmith, Shimotsuki Kozaburo. This is why Enma fits comfortably in Zoro's hand. These memories make Zoro question how a sword from the land of Wano ended up in a remote region in the East Blue. Zoro retrieves two of his swords and proceeds to attack King. The two engage in an intense exchange of blows. King launches his Berizodan attack. Zoro senses Enma nearby and immediately lunges to retrieve it. As Zoro grabs Enma, it immediately drains his haki, emaciating his arm. King attacks him relentlessly and he barely manages to block the Lunarian's slashes. Zoro falls and Enma continues to drain him. Zoro recalls how he learned of the battle cry, Sunyachi, and how Momonosuke was prohibited from uttering such cry. He explained to the young daimyo that he learned it from an old man from his village a long time ago. He remembers the old man who was always on the seacoast. He also recalls Hitetsu explaining that his two swords, Wado Ichimonji and Enma, were both forged by the legendary swordsmith, Shimotsuki Kozuburo. Zoro remembers events in a village in East Blue 13 years ago. A young Zoro was training with Kuina, his childhood friend, at the Ishin Dojo. Kuina easily disarmed him and knocked him down. Determined to best his rival, Zoro went to the coast to train. There he saw an old man looking towards the sea. Sensing that Zoro was a bit down, the old man taught him of the battle cry, Sunachi, which according to him was a good luck word to uplift one's spirit. Zoro told him that he had no use for such a weird word, but asked the old man if he was a samurai, since everyone at the dojo said so. Instead of answering, the old man told Zoro to pay the gossip no mind. He then told the young boy that the marines would be invading their village soon, but he refused to tell him why and told him to go home. Instead of going home, however, Zoro started training while the old man watched on. After Zoro explained why he was training hard, the old man offered to give Zoro two of his swords that he forged himself. He explained they were blunt so Zoro could use them for practice. The old man explained that swords were made to kill. Every sword had a personality and that it was a swordsman's job to tame them. He went on to say that a cursed sword is a fine sword and was simply called as such because the weak feared it. The old man recalled a sword that he forged when he was younger. He deemed it the greatest piece that he crafted in his life. Just by holding it, the blade would give the bearer chills, thus he dubbed it the Great King of Hell. Remembering all these, Zoro realizes that the aforementioned sword, the Great King of Hell, was none other than Enma. Outside, Momonosuke accidentally grasps Kaido's flame clouds. He realizes that since he is also a dragon, he can also control and manipulate the clouds. He proceeds to try and divert Onigashima's path. Meanwhile, Zoro pieces together the clues to the history of his village. It was not a coincidence that the village was named Shimotsuki. Hitetsu mentioned that Shimotsuki Kozaburo had left Wano more than 50 years ago. With all this information and his memories, Zoro deduces that the old man and Kozaburo are one and the same. He remembers Kozaburo explaining that it is the sword that chooses its wielder. With that, Zoro understood that Enma chose him and was simply testing him. He recalls one night when he was younger and had challenged Quina to their 2001st duel, all of which were won by the latter. Zoro cried in frustration, but Quina told him that it is she who should be frustrated. Her father had told her that as a girl, she could never surpass a man as a swordsman. She envied Zoro for being a boy since she too wanted to become the world's greatest. Hearing Quina utter those words angered Zoro since he was aiming to surpass her and saying that was insulting all the hard training he was doing. With this, the two made a pact to become the world's greatest swordsman. The following day, Quina died after falling down a flight of stairs. Distraught, Zoro begged Quina's father to give him Quina's sword, also promising to be so strong that his name reached her in heaven. Back to the present, Zoro realizes that Enma was not draining him out of malice and admits that he was simply lacking thus unable to withstand the sword unlike Odin, who had been using it with ease, even though the sword took away so much of his haki. Zoro tries to figure out how to control the flow of his haki and keep it from being depleted and ultimately causing his death. Rather than fighting the sword's effects, he decides to let Enma take his haki instead and conquers it, unleashing his Haushoku haki and rendering the nearby beast pirates unconscious. King notices and asks if he was trying to be a king. Zoro answers by saying that he just remembered his promise to Luffy and Quina. Sanji continues his battle against Queen. After Sanji destroys his raid suit, Queen decides to continue on with the battle. 
This time he demonstrates his scientific enhancements and uses techniques from Sanji's brothers. He uses Ichiji's sparking red ability to fire laser eyes, Sparking Queen, Niji's Dengeki Blue to strike Sanji with electricity, Henry Queen, and Yanji's Winch Green ability to use his retractable arm as a winch, grabbing Sanji and spinning him in the air, Winch Queen. He reveals that he had a rivalry with Judge, and his goal is to outperform Jerma 66. Before he could slam Sanji into the ground, however, Sanji uses a Diablo Yambi-infused kick to destroy Queen's mechanical arm. In Fury, Queen uses Sanji's stealth black ability to turn himself invisible to catch him off guard. However, Sanji uses Soru, allowing him to turn effectively invisible to Queen but physically taxing him. Queen plans to wait for him to exhaust himself, then strike him unexpectedly. Sanji perches on a wall looking for his next approach. Some, the woman who Sanji accidentally attacked earlier, has her wounds bandaged and healed. However, the room where she and the other geishas were hiding are destroyed during the battle. The geishas decide to evacuate, but Sum's pet mouse, Chuji, is missing, so Sum stays behind to look for it. Sum follows Chuji dangerously into the battlefield, unaware of Queen's presence. Queen recognizes her. He had visited the pleasure hall numerous times in the past to request her services, but she repeatedly turned him down using sickness as an excuse. Seeing her healthy, Queen realizes that he had been lied to. Infuriated, he strikes Sum in anger. Seeing Queen attack a woman infuriates Sanji, allowing him to use a new ability. Using his strong exoskeleton to protect his body and coating his Diable Jambe flames with Busashoku Haki, he is able to turn the flames into hotter blue flames called Ifrit Jambe. This gives him added agility and greater kicking power against Queen. He strikes Queen in a set of attacks, knocking him into the ground. Queen gets up, preparing his retaliation. Remembering his past and accepting the scientific advancements given to him by Jerma 66, Sanji uses Buff Burst against Queen, sending a powerful flaming kick into Queen's stomach and defeating him. Queen's unconscious body is sent flying out of the Skull Dome and off Onigashima, falling into the mainland below. Emerging victorious from his battle, Sanji returns Chuji to Sum, then collapses from his injuries. King had asked Zoro if he was trying to be a king, but Zoro tells him that he was simply remembering his promise to his captain and his best friend. King scoffs at this, saying that so long as he and Kaido were around, Zoro's promise will never be fulfilled. With that, the two continue their battle, exchanging blow after blow. Zoro is exhausted, but King is still unscathed. King mocks his attempts and tells him that his sword attacks will not work against him. King is now on the offensive. Zoro tries to analyze their battle while he is parrying King's attacks. He knows that he is slashing King, but his slashes are not affecting him at all. Zoro uses his three-sword style, Ultra Tiger Hunt attack while infusing his swords with Haoshoku Haki. The attack manages to make King bleed and also rips up the All-Star's mask. Zoro finally figures out that King's durability and speed are directly linked to the flames on his back. That once the said flames go out, King's speed increases, but his defense gets weaker. A couple of beast pirates see King without his mask and observe that he has black wings, white hair, and brown skin. They say that he is of a race so rare that the world government awards 100 million to those with information about their existence. King overhears this and burns them to death. King and Zoro continue their battle outside the Skull Dome. King finally acknowledges Zoro's strength and the danger he poses. Zoro accepts the compliment and vows to end Kaido's and the Beast Pirate's reign. King rebuffs this and declares that Kaido will the King of the Pirates. Zoro rejects this declaration and attacks with King of Hell, three sword style, Rengoku Onigiri. King recalls the first time he met Kaido on Punk Hazard many years ago. The younger Kaido was a guinea pig of the world government and had just escaped. While making his way out of the laboratory, he saw a young man engulfed by fire after undergoing a durability test. Kaido surmised that he was a Lunarian, given his ability to withstand the raging fire. Kaido told the young man that he was going to form a new pirate group and offered him a chance to make the not-so-fascinating world fascinating. The man accepted the offer after Kaido guaranteed that he would change the world. After making their escape, Kaido asked the man his name and he answered that it was Alber. After noting how strong Alber was, Kaido told him that he should be named King instead. Kaido promised King that he would never betray him and made him his right-hand man. Back in the present, Zoro's attack is ineffective and King counters with Imperial Flaming Wings, which sends magma-like flames onto Zoro. King then strikes Zoro using his burning sword which Zoro blocks. Refusing to lose any of his swords, Zoro releases a burst of Haki which sends the two of them flying. Zoro is unable to see King, 
suspecting that the flames on King's back are out since the Lunarian is moving at an incredible speed. Knowing that King is not invulnerable at this state, Zoro attacks using Yakadori, knocking King back. King realizes that Zoro has figured out the mechanics to his strength, and Zoro finally sees a window to King's defeat. Zoro uses his Ultoragari technique, but King blocks the attack despite having his flames on. Zoro taunts King for blocking his attack, but King retorts that Zoro is biologically incapable of defeating him. He then launches his Imperial Flaming Wings attack, which sends a multitude of magma-like streams onto Zoro. The flames try to engulf Zoro, but he cuts them down while he makes his way towards King. Zoro attacks with King of Hell, Three Sword Serpent, 103 Mercy's Dragon Damnation, and King counters with his extra-large Imperial Flaming Wings. The clash sends a shockwave throughout Onigashima. King's sword is broken and his right wing is ripped apart. As King's consciousness fades, he thinks of his captain. He had thought of Kaido as the prophesized Joy Boy. Thankful for the life Kaido gave to him, he asked his captain to remain the strongest. He also promised that he would never lose so that he can make Kaido the king of the pirates. At the same time, Zoro too recalls his vow to become the world's greatest swordsman, a vow he made to Luffy, the man who he declared will become the pirate king. King falls off Onigashima, and Zoro loses consciousness after defeating the Lunarian. A Mary announces King's loss to a CP-0 agent. The agent now assesses the situation to be dire as all of the Beast Pirates All-Stars and Tobarapo members have lost. He notes that only Big Mom and Kaido stand in the way of the Straw Hat's victory. Kaido and Luffy's battle is reaching its climax, however. If Luffy wins, Kaido will lose control over his flame clouds, which are keeping Onigashima afloat. The floating island will crash, and the explosives in the basement will cause the flower capital to explode. Momonosuke, now able to control Kaido's flame clouds, tries to pull Onigashima away to safety. Kazenbo, a flame specter, is continuing to make its way to the basement with the purpose of making Onigashima explode midair. Yamato, determined to prevent this from happening, finally reaches the door to the basement armory. With the help of Fuga, the doors are opened and Yamato rushes through. Meanwhile, Usopp finds Kinemon and Kiku, who are both incapacitated. Beast pirates come in droves to capture them, and Usopp tries to fight back. The two samurai ask him to leave them behind, but Usopp chides them for their so-called honor and tells them to hold on to life instead, even with snot dripping from their faces. A few moments later, Izu arrives to stave off the pursuers while Usopp, Kinemon, and Kiku escape on Hamlet's back. On the third floor of the Skull Dome, Fukurokuju and Raizo are in a standoff as the two cast Ninpo. Paralysis Jutsu at the same time. Neither one of them budge, even though the whole floor is being engulfed in flames. On the second floor, Komurasaki continues to play her shamisen as Orochi listens on, ecstatic that his love who he thought had died is alive and well. In his bliss, he is hopeful that all his enemies will be wiped out and he and Komurasaki will get married and spend the rest of their days in Wano. He asks Komurasaki to play his favorite piece, and Komurasaki indulges him. Meanwhile, X-Drake and Apu are defeated by the CP-0. Drake is knocked out and Apu runs away. The agents are apprised of the defeat of the All-Stars and are ordered to leave Onigashima. On the rooftop, Luffy and Kaido deal their Haoshoku hockey-coated attacks. Luffy lunges forward, but Kaido bats him away with his Hasaikai. Luffy uses his Gear 3 and attacks with his Rock Gun technique. Kaido is knocked down, and the impact of the attack also causes Luffy to fall to his back. Both are exhausted as they try to catch their breath while lying on the ground. The two stand back up with smiles on their faces. Luffy laughs as he tells Kaido that it is starting to get fun, and with a huge grin on his face, Kaido tells him that he feels the same way. While the battle between Kaido and Luffy is taking place at the rooftop of the Skull Dome, Momonosuke is desperate to steer Onigashima away from the flower capital, where its citizens are oblivious to the catastrophe that could befall them. In the flower capital, the people are drinking their fill and dancing to the music. They send lanterns to the sky, with their wishes written on them so that they may reach heaven. In hers, Toko writes that she wants to see her adoptive father again, which breaks Hitetsu's heart. Back at the rooftop, Kaido looks at the beautiful night sky and takes out a barrel full of sake and takes huge gulps of the alcohol. Luffy is angry that he is drinking while they are fighting. Kaido tells him that it is because he is having fun. Today is the fire festival, and they had planned a banquet on Onigashima, but Luffy and the others messed it all up. He offers some booze to Luffy, but the latter refuses and declares instead that he'll have a banquet of his own after he beats Kaido. Kaido releases a huge amount of hockey and tells Luffy that he hopes he can have a nice big banquet. 
Luffy is angered once more, seeing that Kaido is now drunk. Indignant at the accusation, Kaido throws the barrel of Psyche down and then weeps at his ruined banquet. He proceeds to hiccup and laugh while staggering around, barely able to keep standing upright. Incensed at the sight of a drunk Kaido, Luffy charges at him. However, Kaido easily evades him and attacks using his lightning-hammered Ragnaraku technique. Luffy receives a direct hit, and a shockwave is felt throughout the rooftop. Now in his dragon form, a drunk, weeping Kaido laments that even though he is having fun, the battle has already destroyed half of his castle, which took five years to build. Kaido continues to wail about his woes while attacking Luffy using his drunken techniques. Luffy continues to retaliate and finally lands a kick to his stomach, which causes Kaido to cough up blood. Meanwhile, in Mary Joas, the five elders complain how this year's levely is cursed. They mention that it resulted in the total abolition of the seven warlords of the sea, an incident concerning the Arabasta kingdom, and the revolutionary army's infiltration of Mary Joas. The blonde elder says that they need to set those aside for now and immediately deal with what is happening in the land of Wano. He is expectant that the CP0 have captured Nico Robin by now and that the battles involving Big Mom and Kaido will result to death. He mentions of the need to erase the existence of a certain devil fruit. Another elder rebuffs its existence, saying that the said fruit is a mere legend even to them as it has not awakened for centuries. However, the blonde elder says that the world government would not have bothered giving that devil fruit another name if they did not want to hide its name from history. At the seas just outside of Wano, a fleet of marine ships are on standby awaiting orders. A scout sees a giant shadow and uses a Denden Mushi to report this to his superior. He describes the shadow as an island. At a distance, a silhouette of a giant elephant trumpets as it arrives just behind the marine fleet. The battle within Onigashima is nearing its conclusion. On the third floor, Raizo and Fukurokuju are still at a standstill with neither one of them releasing their paralysis jutsu, despite both being caught on fire. On the second floor, Jinbei helps some samurai escape by preventing them from being crushed by fallen debris and pointing out a route to their escape. On the performance floor, Chopper returns to his normal form and is now able to move. He worries for Zoro, whom he knows will be suffering twice as bad, due to the special medicine which was administered to him in exchange for his temporary super healing. Outside, Zoro is slowly bleeding out. As his blood seeps into the ground, he wakes up in a desolate area. A dark apparition appears before him, resembling a grim reaper. With its scythe, it prepares to swing at Zoro, who is frozen in place, calling out to the reaper to stop. Meanwhile, at the right brain tower, Frankie searches for Zoro. Elsewhere, Izu is finishing off the last of the beast pirates who have been relentlessly attacking him. Weakened, he is easily stabbed in the stomach by a pirate who he shoots to death. He staggers away, using the wall to keep himself up. As he makes his way out of the castle, he hopes that Kinemon and Kiku have escaped successfully. He comes across the CP0 agents who were after Robin. The agents tell him that they should pretend not to see each other as they had no intention of going after the last remnants of the Whitebeard Pirates since their business right now is with the Straw Hats. Instead of letting them go, however, Izu tells them to stop. Yamato has finally reached the armory where the bombs are located. Kazenbo also reaches the armory preparing to set fire to the explosives therein. Yamato transforms and uses his Namuji Hyoga technique, which freezes everything inside. He then swings at the Flame Spectre, determined to stop it from fulfilling the command given to it by Kanjuro and Orochi. It proceeds to engulf Yamato in flames, with the latter screaming in pain. Back at the performance floor, Big Mom continues to wreak havoc with her lightning attacks, knocking back Law and Kid. She remembers that Kaido is on the rooftop fighting Luffy, and wonders why she still has not heard the Emperor's shout of victory. She commands Hera to take her to the rooftop, but Law stops her with K-Room, he impales her with his sword and uses Shock Willow, causing her to fall. Kid proceeds to charge at her with his Punk Corna Dio. As Kid and Law prepare to fight her once again, they vow that they will never let her go to the rooftop, even if it means their death. Eustace Kid is at the brink of death and his life flashes before his eyes. He snaps out of it when he hears Law screaming at him to do it. Outside, Momonosuke continues to pull Onigashima away from the flower capital, determined to save everyone's life at any cost. He remembers his family and vows to save the land of Wano. He's momentarily distracted when he suddenly hears someone calling out to him. At the performance floor, Big Mom wrestles with Kid's Corna Dio and is knocked down but only for a moment. She stands up with her right arm visibly shattered. She tells them that Law's shockwaves broke her ribs and acknowledges Law's strength. 
She heals her arm using her devil fruit by giving her bones life and having them repair themselves. Seeing Big Mom unleash her house Shoku Haki, Law tells Kid that he will be out of energy in the next barrage. Before he can ask Kid to coordinate their attacks, Kid demands not to tell him what to do. Big Mom calls to her homies Napoleon, Prometheus, and Hera and launches her Master Saber which cuts Kid's metallic bull in half. Kid uses a sign on Big Mom, magnetizing her and the tower behind her. She is flung towards its wall, unable to escape. Kid's metallic bull is launched towards her so she tears the wall down and uses it to shield herself from Kid's attack. She sarcastically thanks Kid for putting the wall on her back. Kid ignores this and proceeds to attack her legs, causing her to fall to her knees. Kid and Law bombard her with attacks and manage to damage her bit by bit. She is seemingly unable to keep up with the assault but finally shields herself and counters, sending the two supernovas flying. The Emperor launches her mother's visit cannon, 3,000 leagues of misery technique. Misery, Big Mom's homie, appears before Kid and immediately lunges to attack him. Her continuous onslaught kills those who are nearby, and Kid's crew can only watch as their captain takes a beating. As Big Mom commands Misery to destroy her enemies, she notices the surrounding debris floating in air. Law suddenly uses Takt and sends a nearby tower to crush Big Mom. He uses K-Room, anesthesia, and stabs her in the chest. His sword extends beyond Onigashima and even to the Earth's crust below. Big Mom tries to punch her way out of Law's grasp, but he holds on determined to extend his sword deeper into the ground. His sword finally reaches the Earth's magma pool, and Law proceeds to launch Puncture Will. Big Mom panics and cries out for him to stop. The technique creates a giant hole all the way to the ground. Law retracts his blade and moves away from Big Mom. Big Mom almost falls into the hole but manages to grab on. She commands Misery to burn Law to death, but Law shouts to Kid to do it. Kid appears ready to launch his attack. Big Mom eggs him on, saying that it will not be enough to take her down, but Law declares that her era has ended. Kid uses his damned punk technique and fires a beam at Big Mom, hoping to send the Emperor through the hole Law created. However, she holds on, unwilling to go down. Big Mom is cornered by Kid and Law, as Kid's damned punk attempts to knock her into the hole. As a last-ditch effort, she uses Soul Pocus and attempts to take 50 years from their lifespans, effectively killing them. However, as neither Kid nor Law feared her, the attack is rendered ineffective. Using his ability, Law creates an R-Room, a room which attaches to her regardless of where she moves. As a homage to his mentor, Rosinante, he uses Silent, preventing Big Mom from making any sound as long as she remains inside the room. Misery attempts to aid Big Mom by attacking Law from behind, but Law uses his sword to slice her in half. Meanwhile, Kid uses a second damned punk, sending an even stronger ray which finally sends Big Mom falling into the hole. Big Mom falls and lands in the armory. She grabs one of the frozen bombs, unaware that they were explosive. The bomb explodes, blasting a second hole in the bottom of the island, causing her to fall towards the Wano country mainland. Yamato is able to block the explosion with a frozen piece of debris, preventing the other bombs from detonating. However, the explosion considerably damaged Kazenbo, causing it to retreat towards Orochi. The explosion causes the entire island to crumble. A wounded Zoro, who was resting on the edge of the island, falls off the island as a result of the island crumbling. Big Mom is sent falling towards the ground. She notices the fire festival celebrations at the nearby flower capital, prompting her to reflect on her childhood with Carmel, her failure to defeat Luffy on Whole Cake Island, and finally her involvement in the raid. She curses Goldie Roger for starting the Golden Age of Piracy, posthumously promoting the proliferation of new, inexperienced rookie pirates. Big Mom falls into the magma chamber, causing a large eruption of lava. Witnessing the fall of one of the four emperors, Kid and Law's crewmates cheer over the captain's accomplishment as the two rest from their epic fight with Big Mom. As Momonosuke continues to move on Igashima, he senses that Zunesha had appeared near the island. He deduces that Zunesha was one of the many companions of Joy Boy eight centuries ago. The standoff between Raizo and Fukurokuju continues as Raizo is ablaze and Fukurokuju's clothing begins to catch fire. Eventually, Fukurokuju is completely set alight. Unable to withstand the heat of the flames, he collapses and screams for water. Zunesha appears at Onigashima to aid the battle, but Momonosuke is unsure of whether to continue the battle. He explains to Yamato that it may not have been Odin's intention to liberate Wano country if it endangered innocent lives. After a short battle, Izu was quickly overpowered by the agents, who both utilized Rokushiki to defeat him. However, as Maha fatally strikes Izu in the chest with a Shigan, Izu manages to shoot him down with his pistol, causing them to simultaneously take each other down. 
Guernica briefly laments Maha's downfall. He then continues his search for Nico Robin, but he receives an imperial order from the five elders. As the world government saw Luffy as an especially dangerous threat, they order Guernica to interrupt his battle with Kato and eliminate him immediately as a precaution. Guernica reluctantly obeys the order, but he is unaware he is being followed by Drake. Komurasaki accompanies Orochi in his private chamber as he awaits Fukurokuju's return. Orochi becomes impatient and frustrated, but the ceiling suddenly collapses, crushing him under the rubble. Pressing her advantage, Komurasaki inserts a sea stone nail into Orochi's body, weakening him and preventing him from using his devil fruit powers. She plays Orochi's favorite song on her shamisen and reveals that the song was also the favorite of her father, Odin. On the Skull Dome, Kaido notices that Big Mom had been defeated by Kid and Law and begins to mourn her, reflecting on how they met while serving Rock's crew. Luffy takes advantage of Kaido's emotional state and transforms into his Gear 4 Snake Man form, declaring it his final Gear 4. Luffy's punches are too fast for Kaido to predict and defend against. In the connected hallway, Fukurokuju completely catches fire and collapses to the flames. Raizo makes his final remarks to him before he succumbs to his injuries. Jinbei appears and extinguishes the flames using Fishman Karate before coming to Raizo's aid. Meanwhile, Guernica is ambushed by Drake before he could advance to the rooftop, being stabbed by Drake's sword. However, Guernica retaliates, striking down Drake with a single Shigen. He then proceeds to follow his order, proceeding to the rooftop. On the rooftop, Luffy's Gear 4 techniques initially succeed against Kaido, but falter as Kaido retaliates. Kaido transforms into his dragon form, swallows Luffy, spits him out in the air, and strikes him with a bolo breath, sending him crashing through Onigashima and falling towards the sea. Luffy is forced to transform into his bound man form to avoid falling into the sea. As Luffy's body will only sustain his Gear 4 form for a limited amount of time, he only has a limited opportunity to defeat Kaido with the last of his remaining strength. However, as he clashes with Kaido's intoxicated form, Guernica interrupts the battle, restraining Luffy to give Kaido an unfair advantage. To his own horror, Kaido strikes him down, knocking him out. Taking a critical strike from Kaido's Kanabo, Luffy is defeated, deflating out of his Gear 4 form and collapsing. Unhappy with being given an unfair advantage, Kaido directs his rage at Guernica for intervening in the battle. Guernica accepts Kaido's rage as he is struck down. Transforming into his dragon form, Kaido returns to the live floor, declares victory against Luffy, and demands the Alliance's unconditional surrender. He declares his intentions to continue the new Onigashima project, moving Onigashima to the flower capital and subjecting the remaining citizens of Wano country to forced labor. The remaining allied forces, despite being devastated by news of Luffy's alleged death, refuse to surrender, continuing the battle against the remaining beast pirates. Momonosuke, despite being demoralized after noticing Luffy's voice go silent, also decides not to end his struggle, continuing to move the island away from the capital. On the rooftop, Luffy's unconscious body suddenly regains a heartbeat. His body undergoes a mysterious transformation. Meanwhile, Zunesha likens Luffy's heartbeat the drums of liberation, a sign of Joy Boy's return. On the top of the Skull Dome, Luffy finishes his transformation, having fully awakened his Devil Fruit power. Meanwhile, the five elders at Mary Joa's discuss having sacrificed Guernica in an attempt to stop Luffy. Being particularly concerned with the potency of the Gomu Gomu no Mi, the world government had been trying for years to attain it, but to no avail, almost as if the fruit were evading them. Despite being officially classed as a Paramecia fruit, it is also a mythical zone fruit, the Hito Hito no Mi model Nika. The user, upon awakening their fruit, becomes the sun god Nika, having the power to manipulate his surroundings like rubber. Having fully recovered, Luffy emits extremely powerful Haushoku Haki, which reaches the beast pirates on the live floor below. He grabs Kaido's dragon body and drags it back above the rooftop, beating him upon the rooftop with little resistance. Kaido fires a bolo breath at Luffy, but Luffy blocks the fireball by pulling up on the ground. The fireball bounces off the wall and strikes Kaido. Despite being unable to hit Luffy, Kaido expresses relief that Luffy was alive, unhappy with defeating him thanks to Guernica's help. Meanwhile, in the treasure repository, Orochi attempts to cajole Hiyori into removing his sea stone nail and setting him free. However, following his numerous betrayals and wrongdoings against Odin and the people of Wano country during his reign, Hiyori angrily refuses. Kazenbo, who had been reduced to a small wisp by the armory explosion, appears, returning to its master. Orochi commands Kazenbo to burn Hayori alive. However, Kazenbo does not listen, 
instead setting Orochi aflame as he remains trapped under the rubble. Kaido correctly deduces that Luffy had awakened his Paramecia power, which has now become a Zoan ability. In his dragon form, he attempts to swallow Luffy whole, but Luffy beats him from his insides, inflates himself inside his belly, and forcefully launches himself out of his mouth. Kaido then attempts to strike Luffy with a bolo breath, but Luffy is completely unaffected by the attack. At this point, Yamato and Momonosuke travel to the rooftop to investigate the strange battle, discovering Luffy's awakened form. Luffy fuses himself with the sky, allowing him to grow to a gigantic size. Kaido strikes Luffy with Warai Jogo Ragnaraku, using his lightning-enhanced Hasaikai to strike Luffy, smashing his head into the rooftop and causing the alliance on the live floor below to witness Luffy's awakened form, as Nami, Tama, Chopper, even Law and Kid were shocked seeing the giant head. With Marco surprisingly curious about Luffy's appearance, Kaido and Luffy briefly collapse, both too tired to continue to battle. However, the battle quickly resumes, and Luffy transforms back into his awakened form. He strikes Kaido with a punch which deforms Kaido's face, launching him into a rock wall. Luffy declares he will become the Pirate King before resuming the battle. Kaido laments the damage his crew had taken during the raid, having lost all his top officers and having his castle destroyed by battle. He continues his battle with Luffy on the Skull Dome, and as Luffy launches himself into the air, he gets the idea of utilizing the lightning bolts in the sky. Below inside the Skull Dome, the allied forces are separated and cornered by the spreading fires. Chopper reunites with Nami and Tama but fail to locate any other allies or combat the fires. Brook, Robin, Apu, and Number Inbi are trapped in the basement. Sanji and the other women are cornered in the left brain tower. Usopp's group, Frankie and Zoro, are also trapped in the corridors. And Mink forces are trapped on the third floor. On the fourth floor, Raizo and Jinbei carry out a plan to extinguish the flames. Using his Devil Fruit ability, Raizo summons a scroll producing vast quantities of water. Then, using a Fishman Karate technique, Jinbei controls the water flow and floods all parts of the Skull Dome, extinguishing the flames and saving the allied forces below. However, outside Onigashima, Yamato pressures Momonosuke to create flame clouds to support the island. As Kaido's power is rapidly declining, the flame clouds he created are weakening and about to collapse. Momonosuke needs to create his own flame clouds before this happens, or Onigashima will fall and crash into the mainland. Yamato encourages Momonosuke to make large flame clouds, but he claims it's easier said than done. He then thinks back to the day his home was destroyed, when his mother, Kozuki Toki, told him to flee to the future. He admitted he felt he couldn't unless she and his sister accompanied him, but Kinemon reminds him that in the land of Wano, when one suffers a great failure, they forfeit their life, and therefore, he can't question the resolve of his mother. He retorts that he is just a kid, but Kinemon says that with Odin gone, he isn't just his heir anymore. With tears in his eyes too, Kinemon begged for Momonosuke to give him another chance to fight rather than die a shameful death by fire. Though he was reluctant, Momonosuke agreed to leave his mother behind with his followers. In the present, Momonosuke regains his own conviction and declares that he would never be able to face his mother if he gave up now and continues to try and stop the island. On the roof, Kaido remarks on how Luffy was able to actually grab lighting as Luffy uses a new move called Gomu Gomu no Kaminari and hurls the lightning bolt at Kaido. Kaido, however, sidesteps it and smacks him with Hasaikai, sending him flying off only for Luffy to grab another lightning bolt and swing around and back at Kaido with an inflated leg. Before he can use another move, though, Kaido dodges and strikes Luffy on the head, where he declares that in the end, a strong devil fruit power isn't enough to conquer the seas, revealing that Goldie Roger himself had no devil fruit power yet, he was still able to become the Pirate King. Luffy gets propelled down to the ground, which bounces him back up, and as he tries to defend himself, Kaido yells that to conquer the seas, the one thing that truly matters is hockey. He then hits him with Daitoku Raime Hake, which injures Luffy, but he still grabs Kaido and starts dragging him up with him to the sky, only for Kaido to try and shake him loose, while changing into his full dragon form to blast him with Tatsumaki Kaifu. Acknowledging that even with his awakened power, he's still weak to slashing attacks. While that was going on, the people of the flower capital watch their sky lanterns float up into the air with the hope that their wishes will reach the heavens as they know they will return to being slaves again. Kaido then blasts Luffy with Bolo Breath to get him to let go while demanding he gets back down. 
In the castle, while the fire continues to rage on in some parts of the island, Hyoguro is informed that the island is falling, which he says is because Kaido is at the end of his rope. He asks everyone what outcome they would prefer, Luffy defeating Kaido and causing the island to fall and potentially kill everyone, or Kaido to win and extend everyone's lives by only a little while. The samurai immediately say they're okay with dying as long as the innocent continue to live, and they cheer for Luffy to fight without worrying about them. Some beast pirates retort that they may all die, but Hyogoro doesn't mind. In the basement, Usopp and Hamlet are running for their lives from the raging fire, only to get swept up in Rezo's water, to their relief. On the treasure repository floor, Orochi has managed to get the sea stone nail out of his body, allowing him to transform while still on fire, though he is reduced to one head left. Still, he proclaims that if he dies, he will spite Oden by taking Hiyori with him. Back on the roof, Luffy tells Momonosuke to get the island out of the way as he inflates his hand to a humongous size coated in hockey to finish Kaido with. Momonosuke tells Luffy that he cannot move Onigashima out of the way, but the memory of his family compels him to try anyway. Kaido tells Luffy that he will take his attack head-on as he starts covering himself in fire, a move called Kane Daiko. While doing so, he tells Luffy that Odin died 20 years ago by burning to death. And ever since then, Wano became a lawless land filled with people desperately waiting for their savior to appear. The fire causes Luffy to let go, which Kaido says is the right call, and that he had no intention of running. Though it was because he was confident Luffy would not be able to crush him with his fist because he would vaporize it. Kaido then performs a move called Shoryu, Kain Hake, while Luffy uses Gomu Gomu no Bajran Gun all the while thinking back to when Hyogoro taught him advanced grade Buso Shoku Haki, and the two attacks clash. Inside the castle, Usopp tries to keep Kinemon and Kikunojo from drowning and the other samurai cheer for Luffy to defeat Kaido, with Kawamatsu saying that unless Kaido is defeated, then their long nightmare will not end. He thinks about when he and the rest fled the flower capital after Odin was killed, and Orochi yelled that they would most definitely head back to Kuri to protect Momonosuke, only for Kaido to say he would take care of him himself. As a result, several loyal samurai were struck down by Kaido, and the castle was burnt to the ground. Kozuki Toki was pronounced dead in Bakura Town, and no one else was found, which led to Orochi believing the Kozuki line had finally ended. After that, Orochi and Kaido confronted the remaining daimyo to see who they would side with, and they all quickly picked up arms against them, saying they refuse to recognize a shogun that is not Odin and will avenge him. Sadly, they did not stand a chance against Kaido, and because of that, none of them could depose Orochi, who continued to enjoy tormenting his people. Their actions would lead to several samurai being imprisoned and forced to work as slaves by the beast Pirates, the factories polluting the water, and eventually killing all the crops. Still, Several samurai kept believing in Toki's words. Orochi would later start feeding the people of Ebisu Town faulty smiles to make them only capable of smiling and laughing, even when they are actually sad, which he said was a fitting fate for them all. In the present, Orochi, still on fire, tries to attack Hiyori, but Denjiro arrives in time and slices Orochi's final head off, ending the psychotic shogun's reign for good. Surprisingly, one of the wishes written on the Sky Lanterns was, please make Orochi disappear, while another one is, free us from this hell, which Luffy is still working on with his clash with Kaido. During their clash, Kaido commends Luffy for making it this far, but he believes he can never change the world. Kaido then thinks back to his youth. When he was 10 years old, he was already formidable in his home of Vodka Kingdom. A few years later, however, the kingdom was revealed to be struggling to make ends meet with the heavenly tribute, resorting to going to war to seize loot to pay for their position in the world government. In order to guarantee a spot in the levelly, and because they could not handle him anymore, the king of the country offered up the young Kaido to the world government, much to his personal fury. Still, he was able to escape the marine's custody, earning himself a bounty and a rumor that he only gets captured to eat something on the prison ships. Two years later, on Hachinosu, Kaido furthered his reputation with his formidable strength, which led to Edward Newgate bringing him to rocks, news that shook the world. Eventually, the rocks pirates fell and Kaido struck out on his own. As he was forming the beast's pirates, 
he was approached by Kurozumi Higurashi, who offered him a proposition that led to his alliance with Kurozumi Orochi in Wano. Kaido accepted her terms, and much later, he declares he will teach the peace-loving nobles the hellish nature of war, and create a world where one's worth is determined by strength. Later, he confides to King that he overhiard Yamato Mentian Joy Boy, and if he is the person King is waiting for, then he knows exactly who he is. In the present, Joseph decides to flee as Yamato cheers for Momonosuke to create large flame clouds which he desperately tries to. Inside the castle, Raizo and Jimbei's water reaches the rest of the interior, swallowing up everyone and putting out all of the fire before flowing out of the island. Everyone tries to hold on for dear life, and down in the treasure repository, Denjiro commends Hiyori for enduring her suffering for so long for this moment, which brings her to tears. However, Kaido's flame clouds have completely disappeared, meaning the island will fall soon. Kaido asks Luffy what kind of world he wants to make, just as Momonosuke finally produces his own flame clouds to support the island. As for Luffy, he tells Kaido that he wants to create a world where his friends can eat as much as they like, as his fist tears through Kaido's fire dragon and punches him in the face, sending him straight and deep into the ground. Momonosuke drops Onigashima safely near the flower capital and passes out from exhaustion, as does Luffy. In the past, Kaido told King that Joy Boy is the man who will no doubt defeat him, though King confidently believed he would never appear. Kaido changes back to his human form as he continues to sink in the ground, eventually falling into a huge magma chamber underneath Wano, which is also what happened to Big Mom. As a result, several fissures start forming underneath the seas of Wano, Yamato catches Luffy as he changes back to normal and passes out, and he commends both Luffy and Momonosuke for their actions. Meanwhile, in the flower capital, the fire festival finally starts dying down. Tengiyama Hitetsu thinks back to earlier how Toko was making her sky lantern, and how she found out that Shimotsuki Yasue let himself get captured, even though he knew he would be killed for his role as a daimyo in the past. When she asks why her father did such a thing, Hitetsu answered that he did so to give Wano another chance, otherwise the Alliance wouldn't have been able to fight this day. As she thinks back to the day he ate the same smile she did, so they could forcefully smile together, Hitetsu tells her that he hoped she could live happily, and touched by this changes her lantern to instead read, Thank you daddy, rather than, I wish to see you daddy, which Hitetsu considered a huge honor. As Nekomamushi watches the sky lanterns, he declares to everyone across Onigashima, that Luffy had beaten Kaido and Momonosuke stopped Onigashima from crash landing. And though the samurai were surprised to learn Momonosuke was a devil fruit eater, everyone was thrilled to learn that the war with the beast pirates was finally over, and they were able to prevail over two of the four emperors. As everyone celebrates, Usopp brings the unconscious Kinemon and Kikunojo to Chopper to treat, as does Frankie bring Zoro to him, and Miyagi and Tristan report that several others need his attention, which he asks them for help with. Outside Wano, Momonosuke tells Zunesha that he has decided to not open Wano's borders yet, and Zunesha accepts his wishes. He thanks him as he senses what he believes is an earthquake. The beast's pirates, however, refuse to believe that Kaido has lost since they are the crew of an emperor, and still believe they have the advantage in numbers. Frankie almost continues fighting, but Brooke holds him back as Yamato steps up and tells the beast's pirates that everyone would have died if Onigashima fell like Kaido intended, and if they seriously want to keep fighting the people who saved them, he will personally take them down himself. Everyone then starts feeling the ground shake, and Babanuki is informed that unusual activity was occurring on the surface of the sea. Just then, a huge eruption occurs under the sea, and Luffy is officially declared the victor of the decisive battle. The people in the flower capital witness the explosion, and become confused by both it and Onigashima outside. As everyone starts questioning what's going on, Momonosuke appears before his people, who initially mistake him for Kaido, but he clarifies that he isn't him and that the eruption was Kaido's final send-off. He changes back to his human form as several other people appear from the smoke, among them Hiyori in her Komurasaki guise, which surprises everyone as they all thought she was dead, and then Denjiro, who everyone still thinks is Kyoshiro. Denjiro tells everyone that the story is long, but he first wants everyone to meet Wano's new shogun, the people of the flower capital start to calm down after realizing that the large pink dragon they saw was not Kaido, and following Komurasaki and Kyoshiro, 
is Kinemon, Kawamatsu, Inuarashi, Nekomamushi, Raizo, Shinobu, and Kikunojo, who the people recognize as the Nine Red Scabbards. Shocked by this unexpected turn of events, the people start clamoring for a picture Tanishi to transmit this historical development across Wano. Near Onigashima's crash site, Yamato finally meets the rest of the Straw Hats, and while some were surprised to learn he was Kaido's child, he assures them that he is not their enemy, and from here on out, he will be joining the Straw Hat Pirates. Usopp and Nami react with shock, Frankie confusion, Brooke and Sanji with glee, and Robin with amusement. Jinbei, however, says he is not convinced until Luffy gives the say-so, which Yamato accepts, though right now, Luffy and Zoro are being treated by Chopper. Yamato notices some beast pirates fleeing and he and other gifters yell for them to stay put. Usopp then asks Tama how long her devil fruit powers last, and she reveals that the tamed gifters will turn back to normal after a month. She also says that the animals get to choose what life they prefer as some stay tamed. And Speed confirms this saying she wants to remain by Tama's side, which she happily accepts, though she asks her to become her mother rather than her servant, which Speed becomes touched by. In the transmission, Momonosuke steps forward as the group bow to him, where he announces to all of Wano what has transpired. The citizens of Wano are shocked to learn he is the son of Kazuki Odin. He continues to announce that they are now free from the tyrannical reign of Kaido and Kurazumi Orochi, and they will no longer have to charge to drink clean water, that there will be no more slavery and the factories that polluted their once beautiful land will be destroyed. This causes Tama to think back to when her parents died working in the factories and how she was eventually found by Tenguyama Hitetsu, who assured her that the Kazuki family's warriors would return, which gave her the strength to keep going. In the present, she cries into Nami's arms as she remembers Luffy's promise to her. Momonosuke tells the people that on his voyage, he met a powerful and passionate friend. Together, the formed the ninja pirate Mink Samurai Alliance and invaded Onigashima. To everyone's surprise, Momonosuke announced that Kaido, Orochi, and the Beast Pirates have all been defeated. The people of Wano cheer as they are finally free of those villains. Though Momonosuke starts to grow nervous, he pushes through and announces his name, and his adult form is finally shown, where he declares himself Wano's new shogun. He asks the people of Wano to lend him their strength, and together they will return Wano to glory. Everyone is brought to tears by Momonosuke's proclamation, as Momonosuke reassures himself that he will keep his promise to his parents, after which he embraces his younger sister for a long-awaited hug. As Momonosuke and the group walk away, the narration reveals that Momonosuke will become known as Wano's greatest shogun. The five elders discuss two recent major developments in Wano country, after being informed by the remaining CP0 agent the emergence of Nika and the subsequent defeat of Big Mom and Kaido during the raid on Onigashima. An elder commented that the reveal of such information would be impossible to censor and are asking the other elders what to do. Meanwhile, the CP0 agent Joseph, who had returned to the world government fleet stationed outside Wano, reported that Zunesha has left the area. Another elder responds that the country will keep its borders closed and that an invasion will be thwarted, yet still asks the agent to capture Nico Robin. However, the agent is unable to hear the latter when their signal is being jammed, by a mysterious voice who states for them to stay in position as they will be there soon. At the Onigashima Castle, X-Drake encounters Basil Hawkins, who is barely able to stand. Hawkins learns that Drake is still a member of the Marines, but the latter refuses to confirm. Hawkins then sits leaning at a pillar and reveals to Drake that he worked for Kaido, because he would not stand a chance if he refused. However, he also acknowledges how Eustace Kid and Killer continued resisting despite certain death. He then reveals to Drake that the certain man who has a 1% of surviving the raid was himself. He then faints. Seven days have passed since the end of the raid in the Fire Festival. At a school in the Flower Capital, a new teacher has replaced Sarahibi and revises the entire history course with a lesson on the life of Kazuki Odin. The citizens also learn that Komurasaki was Kazuki Hiyori and that Kawamatsu saved her from the burning castle. They also enjoy clean drinking water and an abundance of food. They also discuss that the man who defeated Kaido was someone named Joy Boy, but thought that he is no longer in the country. Meanwhile, at the graveyard in Ringo, Kawamatsu and Kinemon discuss the building of a temple dedicated to Kozuki Odin, including his fellow Daimyo, and ending with a tribute to Ashura Doji and Izu. Onimaru returns to Kawamatsu, and Marco has also arrived at the temple. They also take into account those who are injured and prayed for their recovery. 
Yamato is seen sitting at the top of the former Orochi castle. He is then overjoyed after hearing from Hiyori that both Luffy and Zoro are awake and have fully recovered while kicking Momonosuke in the face. Luffy and Zoro also fails to acknowledge the grown Momonosuke and attempts to grab Nami to comfort him, only to be sent flying. Sanji and Brook then mock Momonosuke that they are welcoming him into the adult world and that he can no longer have the privilege of staying with Nami. Yamato also teases him by putting a plate on his head. Nami then invites Yamato to take a bath together, noting that his prayers have been answered, but the latter refuses because there are no shared baths in the castle. Sanji also learns that Hiyori cleaned Zoro while he was recovering, which turned into a brawl between the two. Amidst the commotion, Kikunojo then joins the women in Yamato's stead. Yamato then joins the men as they bathed in the castle onsen, which caused Sanji to have another nosebleed. Nami then joins the female retainers in the female end of the onsen. After the bath, the citizens decide to celebrate the return of the Kozuki family as the shogun of Wano. Meanwhile, Frankie and Usopp are joined by Minatomo in fixing the ships as well as the General Frankie at the Tokaj port in Udon. Bipo and Killer are amazed by Frankie's robot, but Kid and Law and the rest of their crews not to become too attached with the other groups. Scratchman Apu then arrives being carried by Inbi. He brought a copy of the day's newspaper, the headline being the so-called New Emperors of the Sea and their new bounties. Meanwhile, Ryokugyu is flying in the air near the Wano mainland. He is talking with Sakazuki and was told not to cause any more commotions. In Mary Juaz, Topman War Curie is yelling at a Marine telling him to reprint the newspapers and change the image of Luffy's bounty and remove the D from his name. The Marine tells him that the photo was sent in by CP0 agent Guernica. He also says that they can't contact the printing company. As the Elder tells him to cease distribution of the newspapers, Morgans is seen laughing and saying that it's up to him to spread this news around the globe. He also says that Cypher Paul's transmission from Wano country broke off right after they encountered the Big Mom pirate's ship. As a result, news of Big Mom and Kaido's defeat spread all across the world and the three responsible for it, Monkey D. Luffy, Eustace Captain Kid, and Trafalgar D. Waterlaw, were issued huge bounties as a result, Belly 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 each. This news shocks the heart and Kid Pirates as Scratchman Apu asks where Kid is going off to, and Killer suspects what he wants as he and the rest of the crew go off to celebrate, while Law calls the situation complicated. In the castle at the Flower Capital, a cook is seen making dishes for the big party. Jinbei is the only person in there and is drinking sake. Luffy, Yamato, and Chopper are having fun at the party and eating while Brooke is having a concert playing Moon Princess, the song that Kazuki Hiyori used to play on the shamisen. Meanwhile, in the castle basement, Tengu Yamahitetsu finds Robin looking around. She asks why his collection of Kokeshi dolls are in the basement, and he reveals that it was once his secret hobby room before becoming his prison, as it also has a poneglyph present. Robin questions what he means since she thought he was a swordsman, to which he admitted he had talent in smithing but found it simply as a hobby since governing was so weary for him. That is when he takes off his mask and reveals that he is actually the former Shogun Kozuki Sukiyaki. Robin is shocked and asks him if Momonosuke knows that he is still alive, to which Sukiyaki replies that he doesn't and that he has no plans to tell him out of shame for letting the country be overtaken by Orochi, although Sukiyaki suspects that his retainers have probably already deduced his identity. He says that when he got out and saw the state of Wano, he planned on committing seppuku there and then, but Robin cuts off his sentence by telling him that the poneglyph in the Arabasta kingdom revealed that the ancient weapon, Pluton, rests in Wano country. And she asks him if it truly does. Sukiyaki confirms, saying that it is in fact in Wano. At the former prison mine in Udon, Admiral Ryokugyu, whose real name is Aramaki, has subdued all of the beast's pirates imprisoned there, including king and queen. It turns out he has the ability to turn his fingers into roots, which he uses to drain all of them of their liquids and other liquids nearby. Ryokugyu picks up a transmission and notifies the marines to bring a warship to Wano, and also to not tell Sakazuki what he is doing before hanging up. Afterwards, he reveals that he finds Sakazuki's extreme methods cool and wants his approval, which he thinks he can achieve if he brings him Luffy's head. Speaking of, Luffy congratulates the Ninja Samurai Pirate Mink Samurai Alliance, Retainers, Yakuza, and all of Wano for their outstanding victory. As Momonosuke watches, he remembers Luffy telling him not to tell the people who he is because he doesn't want to be called a hero. That's when Kid arrives announcing his intent to kill Luffy, but Luffy quickly grabs him and everyone starts partying. 
After a bit, though, Kid breaks free of Luffy's grip as he tells him he cares nothing for the party and simply came to kill him, though he does tell him that the outside world has announced the names of the new emperors, which are Red-Haired Shanks, Blackbeard Teach, Luffy himself, and in a surprising twist, Jester Clown Buggy. As for Ryokugyu, he approaches the capital while hearing the festivities, but says that he isn't in the festive mood considering the state the whole world is in now. As Ryokugyu continues walking towards the flower capital, he says that having the ability to sway others isn't something one can see often. However, he gets stopped by Denjiro, Inwarashi, Nekomamushi, Shinobu, Raizo, and Kawamatsu, all of whom Ryokugyu demands step aside. Raizo and Denjiro deduce that Ryokugyu is a marine, and is therefore Luffy's enemy, but Ryokugyu attacks everyone with his devil fruit powers, as he had consumed the Logia type Mori Mori no Mi, and is therefore a forest man. While attacking, Ryokugyu tells the samurai that the world nobles are gods, and a country that has no ties to the world government, such as Wano, has no rights. He also tells them that humanity has only advanced so far because they enforce hierarchies, and non-affiliated countries have to be put in their place in order to keep the peace, because according to him, prejudice breeds stability. As the six of them try to defend themselves, Ryokugyu announces that he will kill as many citizens of Wano as it takes to capture Luffy, since killing non-affiliated people isn't a crime in his book. Yamato then arrives on the scene and angrily slams Ryokugyu's head into the ground, telling him that everything he just said makes him sick. Ryokugyu recovers, and Yamato tells him that he will not let him spoil the people of Wano's newfound freedom after two decades. Ryokugyu, however, simply asks who he is, and Yamato introduces himself as Kaido's son, which shocks the Admiral. Momonosuke then arrives in his dragon form and praises Yamato for his words, and he attempts to strike Ryokugyu by imitating Kaido's bolo breath, but nothing happens. Nevertheless, Momonosuke runs over to Ryokugyu and bites him, demanding he leave so he can continue to protect Wano from people like him. Ryokugyu, however, wraps his roots around Momonosuke to move him out of his way. Yamato tries to help, but Momonosuke demands he stay out of the fight. Meanwhile, in the seas around Wano, the red hair pirates are waiting outside of the country. Some of Shanks' officers tell him that they should go see Luffy, though Shanks is too busy reminiscing about the last time he saw Kazuki Odin and his kids. As he looks at Luffy's new wanted poster, he thinks back to when he and his crew raided the world government ship that was transporting the Gomu Gomu no Mai, and after that the time he spent in Luffy's village up to when he lost his left arm trying to save him. After he finishes reminiscing, he tells his crew that he isn't going to meet Luffy in Wano, which shocks everyone. He reminds them that Bartolomeo made a mess recently in one of their territories by burning his flag and replacing it with Luffy's, and he wants to handle that situation. He does, though, ask Ben Beckman if he thinks it's time they tried to claim the One Piece. At the Marine headquarters in the New World, Fleet Admiral Sakazuki is told the world government can't ignore the Revolutionary Army anymore, and while Sakazuki knows this, there are no Marines left to deploy. The person he is talking to, Marine Criminal Affairs Unit Chief Kuruma, real name Tensei, tells him that Sabo has become legendary, because apparently he assassinated Nefertari Cobra, the king of Arabasta, and one of the descendants of the founding 20 from 800 years ago, which he thinks is a huge boon for the Revolutionary Army. On top of that, before Cobra was killed, he attacked Mary Joaz and destroyed the symbol of the world nobles, which is practically a declaration of war. Despite Fujitora's and Ryokuyu's best efforts, Sabo and the other Revolutionary Army leaders were able to rescue Bartholomew Kuma and escape. Kuruma says that the two admirals were probably restricted from fighting in the Holy Land, but Sakazuki demands he not make excuses for them. It is also revealed that Cobra's daughter, Nefertari Vivi, disappeared too, and he is still investigating how Cobra's death and her disappearance are connected. Sakazuki surmises that Arabasta is in chaos now, while Kizaru, who was also present, asks if they can close the case on the attempted murder of St. Charlos. Kuruma, however, says that St. Miosgard excused the assailants, and in the Holy Land it falls to God's knights to mediate conflicts, but Sakazuki tells him to leave them to it. Kuruma says that most of these incidents are linked to Sabo, whose flames of rebellion are spreading all over the globe, and that eight of the rebelling kingdoms were inspired to stage their coups while the kings were away. Now people are calling Sabo a god or the flame emperor, and whose influence is said to be even greater than Monkey D. Dragons himself. Kizaru also pointed out that on top of all that, his little brother was now one of the four emperors. Sure, enough a revolutionary that was rallying the troops claimed that Sabo's influence could be felt even in the pirate world, as his younger brother just upended their status quo, 
and right now times are being forced to change. Sakazuki remarks he became fleet admiral during a very intense era, but asserts that if the revolutionary army rears its head at them, he will intend to strike back on all fronts. Momonosuke once again tells Yamato not to interfere with his fight with Ryokugyu. Yamato asks why, but Momonosuke gets smacked to the ground by the admiral. Raizo uses Ninpo, Maki Maki no Jutsu, Keiton to burn Ryokugyu, who acts like it hurts before dropping the charade and revealing that he can make himself fireproof, citing he wouldn't have become an admiral if he couldn't defend himself from such an obvious weakness. He then stabs Raizo through the chest with his roots and starts draining him to his friend's fury. Despite the scabbard's best efforts, they are unable to permanently cut Ryokugyu's roots, and soon Denjiro, Kawamatsu, and Nekomamushi get wrapped up. Meanwhile, Kazuki Sukiyaki and Nico Robin are joined by Trafalgar Law, who deduce their location based on their absence from the festival. They make their way further down from Sukiyaki's secret room as the former shogun admits that Kaido and Orochi were still able to find the Poneglyph underground because of Jack since he is a fishman. Robin inquires what he means, and Sukiyaki explains they will understand soon. Law asks how far down it goes, and he says a few hundred years, just as the two notice a dim light coming from a glass block window. The two take a look through it and are surprised by what they see. An entire city underwater. Sukiyaki explains that what they are seeing is the Wano of old, specifically from 800 years ago, though he doesn't know how it ended up in such a state. Robin says that the city looks preserved, as if the water isn't seawater, and Sukiyaki proposes his theory. Long ago, Wano was much bigger and at sea level on the land around the base of Mount Fuji. At some point, though, walls were erected all around, which enclosed the island and prevented rainwater from finding release, which caused the old city to become submerged. The land further up the mountain was established for settlers and eventually became the current Wano. The three finally arrive at their destination and discover a road poneglyph, marking it as the third one the Straw Hat Pirates need to reach Laugh Tale, leaving only one left. Sukiyaki then says that if one were to travel a little deeper, they would find Pluton, but he himself hasn't seen it before, nor can he show them. He does reveal, though, that retrieving it requires the removal of the walls surrounding the country, meaning that opening the borders is quite literal. It also means that if the walls are destroyed, Wano won't be protected anymore, and Pluton will be unleashed onto the world. Robin asks why Odin wanted to open the land's borders if that was to be the case. But Tsukiyaki says everything he told her was what was passed down to him as shogunate, and that he doesn't know what his son learned during his travels. Outside the flower capital, Ryokugyu tells the restrained samurai that he wouldn't have shown up if Kaido was still in charge, claiming that his presence, no matter how horrible it was, acted as a deterrent for potential predators. He once again demands Luffy be brought before him, promising to leave after he kills him. Yamato asks Momonosuke to call Luffy and the others to take Ryokugyu down, but he refuses to involve them. He also tells Yamato that he doesn't want to taint his send-off after being imprisoned for so long, and after relying on the straw hats for so long, he needs to prove that he and his retainers can fend for themselves once they leave. Momonosuke continues demanding that Ryokugyu leave, and he eventually manages to manifest Kaido's bolo breath, heavily damaging Ryokugyu. The scabbards and Yamato react with amazement to Momonosuke's accomplishment as Ryokugyu's tree form burns to ashes. He is able to regenerate from a sapling and regain his tree form, where he announces he will kill him if he continues to stand in his way. However, Ryokugyu senses an incredibly strong blast of Haoshoku Haki coming from Shanks, which causes him to return to normal. He reacts with surprise that the Red Hair Pirates are nearby as Shanks himself says that he thinks that going after the new generation of pirates while they have their guard down seems tasteless, asking if the New Age scares him that much. His presence convinces Ryokugyu to abandon his mission, and the samurai and Yamato celebrate their victory. While in the flower capital, while everyone else is partying, Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Jimbi, who were sitting by a hillside and noticing the fight, remark that their samurai friends were amazing and how intense Shanks' hockey was to be able to drive Ryokugyu away. They don't know that it was him, though, but Luffy has his suspicions as Shanks sails away. Inside the flower capital's castle, Raizo and Shinobu are being nursed back to health by Miyagi and Tristan, while Kinemon is forced to admit Ryokugyu had a good point when referring to Kaido's presence keeping enemies at bay. He apologizes to the patients for not being there, before Nekomamushi brushes it off and asks Kinemon how Tsurujo was doing. Kinemon explains that she is safe and sound, with only a serious burn on her face despite Okobore Town having burned down. 
He blushes while acknowledging her beauty even after all those years, while Inuarashi, Kikunojo, and Raizo express their feelings about Kinemon's sentimentality. Meanwhile, at the remains of Okabori Town, Tsurujo and Chocho talk about Kinemon's return and how Tsurujo plans to move back to the flower capital so she can continue to remain by her husband's side. Carrot is then called to the castle and is announced to be the new ruler of Makomo Dukedom, much to her shock. Inuarashi and Nekomamushi explain this decision by telling her that they chose to stay in Wano to serve Momonosuke and leave the next era in her and the other's hands due to her experience at sea. Carrot disapproves, saying there are so many people stronger than her, but the Inuarashi Musketeer Squad and Wanda back up the decision by saying it's their job to protect their country and that most importantly, she carries Pedro's will within her heart. Later, Kozuki Sukiyaki shows himself to his grandchildren and the scabbards, assuming all of the samurai knew as well, which was true except for Kinemon, who internally expresses surprise to his survival. Sukiyaki tells them he can teach them a few things but will mostly stay secluded from the public, wanting to leave the future to them. In another room, Frankie and the rest of the Straw Hats learn from Robin that Pluton is indeed in Wano, but she hasn't seen it yet. Robin asks Luffy if he desires to obtain it, and he refuses, citing he doesn't need it. But Robin is left questioning why Odin wanted to unleash it on the world. A youthful-looking woman then butts into the conversation, which is revealed to be Shinobu, having regained her youthful form following Ryokugyu's attack. She is accompanied by Tama, who has become her Kunoichi apprentice. Tama asks Luffy if she can join his crew, and he accepts following she masters ninjutsu. Caribou, who is eavesdropping nearby, is shocked by the truth about Pluton, and must let a certain person know about it. A few days later, the flower capital becomes busy again. At the castle, Momonosuke barges into a room to ask Zoro to teach him some sword techniques, only to find no one. He searches around the castle, and learns from Hiyori and Toko that they already left, having said goodbye to everyone except him and Kinemon. At Udon's Tokage port, Luffy, Law, and Kid choose their next destinations via log pose, the former two separating themselves due to their alliance having come to an end. Both Luffy and Kid pick to go east, while Law decides to go northeast, reasoning that it is the shortest route to reach an island. Luffy and Kid pick straws to decide who gets to pick the middle log, and Luffy loses while rubbing into Kid's face he is now an emperor even though he lost. While on the subject of emperors, Kid takes out a flyer and voices his strong dislike for Buggy and his new organization, Cross Guild. With former warlords Crocodile and Dracul Mihawk as his subordinates, he has become a powerful enough figure to obtain the title of emperor. Zoro voices his disbelief that Mihawk would become subordinate to anyone, and Luffy just calls Buggy an idiot. Still, Kid reveals that he's using his company to assign bounties to members of the Marines, remarking how so much changed in the outside world while they were in Wano. Law gives Kid a rubbing of Wano's road poneglyph, and the latter reveals his crew had managed to take one from Whole Cake Island some time ago. Killer states that in order to take part in the upcoming war over the One Piece, they need to find a man with a burn mark. Luffy questions him about it before Kid laughs as he tells Luffy they now have an advantage over him and his crew. Back at the castle, Momonosuke and Kinemon search for Yamato, who was on the roof the whole time. He announces his intent to join the Straw Hats and live like Kozuki Odin did. In the forest near Tokaj Port, Momonosuke in dragon form is carrying Kinemon and Yamato on his back, as Momonosuke is surprised to learn that Yamato has chosen not to set sail with the Straw Hat pirates. The two are confused by this since he made a declaration that his mind was made up, and Yamato explains that he wants to walk in Kozuki Odin's footsteps, and he explored all of Wano first before he went out to sea, so he intends to start there too. Momonosuke becomes enraged that the Straw Hats were informed of all of this by him, yet they didn't bother to say goodbye to his face directly, which causes him to accuse them of snubbing him on purpose. He thinks back to his life from when his home was destroyed by Kaido to when he met Luffy, all their interactions, and ending with Luffy's declaration that he would stop Kaido. Both Momonosuke and Kinemon angrily agree to punish Luffy for his apparent rudeness and lack of true friendship, but Yamato believes they are overreacting. They eventually reach Tokage Port, where the Straw Hats, Heart Pirates, and Kid Pirates prepare to set sail as Momonosuke transforms back into his human form and tackles Luffy to the ground, with Yamato also doing so albeit just to say goodbye to him. Kinemon tells Luffy that his leaving without saying anything has upset the Shogun, but Luffy simply says that it shouldn't matter if they are talking right now. Momonosuke then tells Luffy that he wants him to stay in Wano while breaking down into tears, 
explaining that he's scared about what the future holds without him since he helped him so much. Luffy, however, throws a flag on him, which Usopp painted the straw hat symbol on. Luffy reveals that they were waiting for him the whole time so they could give it to him, and though he looks like a man, he knows he is still a kid, but most of all, he sees him as a little brother. Luffy tells Momonosuke to look at the flag when times get tough to remember them by, and to hang it up somewhere in Wano to intimidate anyone who threatens his home. Momonosuke tearfully asks if this means he is a member of their crew, and Luffy confirms, adding that when he, Kinemon, and Yamato decide to become pirates, he will welcome them on board. The Thousand Sunny sets sail as the Straw Hats cheer Momonosuke on. Momonosuke turns to Kinemon and tells him that he will surpass his father one day, which Kinemon looks forward to. Once setting sail, Nami says they should head for the main port in Hakumai. That way they don't have to ride the waterfall like last time, much to Chopper and Brook's relief. Unfortunately, Kid taunts both Luffy and Law by saying that using such a safe method is for weaklings. This results in all three crews going down the waterfall, much to the frustration of the rest of the Straw Hats. In the flower capital, meanwhile, the tale of the raid on Onigashima is told to an audience of Wano citizens. The narrator says that the strength of the three pirate captains was enough to vanquish Kaido, who they called the Dragon King, and Big Mom, who they called the Olin the Great Yokai. The narrator also says that during the battle, Hiyori was accosted by Orochi only to be struck down for good by Denjiro. He goes on to say that Onigashima fell along with Kaido and freed the suffering country from their 20 years of hell. Suddenly, though, Orochi used the last of his life to tell Hiyori that the burning grudge of the Kurazumi family will curse Wano for eternity. But Hiyori, unfazed, approached him and told him that Kurazumi means charcoal. The Kurazumi were born to burn. The audience then roars with approval as Hiyori and Toko themselves appear to play music as the tale concludes. In the last scene, the arc concludes with Momonosuke wondering where they should put the Straw Hats flag as the curtain closes.